gifts. Yeah. But did I ever tell you about the gift? I think my father's, uh, favourite gift he ever received one Christmas. It was a- and I was so jealous of it because I was a kid and I thought this is- How old were you? Amazing. How old were you? Probably about ten. Right. And I thought this was dynamite. I was so jealous. It was a reversible jacket. What happened to them? Well, I know. I mean, they were all the rage for about twenty-five minutes and, um, and- and it was a but what was great about it is it seems to me with a reversible jacket, what you want is you want, say, checks on one side and just, say, plain blue on the other. So it- it completely looks like a completely different jacket. Yeah. Whereas this one, obviously a little bit cheaper, um, I'm not splashing out a huge amount, it was kind of- it had a beige body and yeah. white arms. Yeah. You turned it inside out, beige arms, white body. It looked almost identical. And I could never quite understand when he was ever going to utilise that. When people would think, uh, you know, when, do you know what I mean? When it, when he would, he'd walk to a party, they'd say, Well, I know, think it was having two jackets in one that was the, the buzz, not that, so he'd walk, he'd, yeah, he'd go into a party, and I'd go, alright, Ron, new jacket. He goes, yeah, yeah. Notice, notice before I go <laughs> to the toilet, <laughs> yeah. that this is a beige body with white arms. Yeah, alright, whatever, Ron. No, no, no. But when I come down, notice that when I came in, <laughs> I was wearing a jacket that had a beige body, and white arms. You got that? Yeah, all right, yeah. He comes down, I go, remember that jacket I came in wearing? <laughs> yeah, the beige body, have another look. <laughs> have another look. That's Wait what a minute, that must be a completely different it jacket. Is a completely different you jacket. must be one of the richest men in Bristol. But hold on, but you weren't carrying anything, you didn't have a bag or anything? No, 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 uh, <laughs> well okay, if you must say it's a reversible jacket, all right? <laughs> It's the best, the best. But the only idea of a reversible jacket must be so that you think people think that you've got two jackets. That's the whole point, surely. I know. I don't understand what's the, what's the appeal otherwise. One black, one white, one that furry, makes sense. one- I know. Yeah. Yeah, so reversible, that's why they died out. Yeah, clearly. Like the dinosaur. The like the dinosaur car, we didn't need them. Didn't need them. Still be here if we needed them. Well, they're bringing back a mammoth though, aren't they? So yeah, they are bringing back a mammoth. Different thing. Well yeah. listen, you know, we're chatting about presents and all that, and before my little my little thought of the day about- It was a little thought. Just, you know, cheer someone up if you can. Brilliant. Right? I mean, it's a nice sentiment, but it's- yeah, okay, go on. Well, there's a- there's an old woman, right, who lives next In a shoe? door- Who lives next door to my mum and dad, right? And this- this is what I mean about, you know, the old people, they might not have that many people cheering them up this time of year. Um, so, you know, if you can, get them a little gift and that, because what happened was, this old woman living next door to my mum and dad- How old are you? Uh, this- this was only about two years ago. Okay. Right? And, um, you know, I think her son's left home, doesn't keep in touch, you know, doesn't even phone her, I don't think, and that, right? Quite sad. <laughs> and, uh, I, I thought I'll give her a bit of my time, have a chat with her, try and cheer her up and stuff. And, uh, I said, alright, how's it going? She said, yeah, not bad, uh, I need a, a new, you know, dishwasher, right? I was going, yeah, yeah, and she was saying, but I don't get a chance to get out these days, you know, I can't get about like I did. And, uh, and all that, and I'm going, yeah, it's bad that. Anyway, I go to like, one of those big superstores where they sell all electrical stuff and that, right? I'm in there, I think, oh, I'll get her a little catalogue so she can have a look, right? Got back, gave her that, I said, there you go, whilst I was in the superstore, I'll get you a little catalogue so you can have a look at dishwashers and that. She's over the moon, she still goes on about it. It was years ago. What, that you got her a catalogue? I got her a catalogue. Oh, I thought saying, you said you were gonna catalog. buy her a dishwasher. No, no, just- just the catalogue and that. Oh, that- but the, y y your life is sort of like, just bittersweet tragedy. That's what I'm saying. It's like something from Shameless. I know, but it, it is though, cos you've got in the street and there's- there's people knocking around with, um, big heads and webbed hands and webbed feet. That- that- I mean, that must have- been Well, she- she's pretty weird, anyway, this old woman, cos she- she was- And that's me. coming from you. No, no, well, after I got her the catalogue and that, she opened up a bit and she was saying how, you know, she's- she's a bit odd anyway, cos she woke up one morning with blood for, sort of falling on her head. From a, a, a dead rabbit hanging over her. So, I mean, she's, she's a nice. What are you nice talking What are you talking about? No, that's, that's what she went on to. She sort of opened up a bit and What said, oh. street? W what street were you born in? Where is this place? Is it no, Elm no. Street that you live on? <laughs> she, just, she just said a man was a witch or something, so it was like. Oh, oh that, like normal. Like you said, <laughs> like, like, it's like, normal. It's just, just, just a bit odd, isn't it? But, you know. I mean, but, but talking about, like, where I live and all that, right? Uh, one story that I've, I've told you before and everyone's always like, that didn't happen, right? Just a couple of houses sort of down from where I lived, there was this family <laughs> who, uh, had horse in their house. <laughs> <laughs> they what? They had a, they had like a horse in their house. I, I'd been out with my dad, right, and I drove back into the, uh, my dad was driving, he, he went back into the avenue, sort of went down to the bottom to turn round to get back to our house. Sort just via the OK Corral? Just sort yeah. of did a little glance and I saw this, this horse being led in. <laughs> <laughs> had horse, had horse in there and stuff. Well, I just have you vi have you been back to visit your your uh, street? 
don't really, there's no- Why did they have a horse in the, in the house? I don't understand. I don't know, I think they, they must have nicked it or something like that. It was a council estate in Manchester and, you know, I, I've told that story- They've just been doing a bit of wrestling. Uh, yeah, they, 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 put, they uh, made the horse go in with a hoodie. And they said, don't call suspicion. Yeah. Just like, you know, we we'll just pretend it's our long lost brother. Oh, just pretend we're rehearsing a panto. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's two blokes. It's just two blokes in this horse. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. The little old lady who gave her a catalogue. That's yeah, very sweet. You see that? Then. And it's that just a little thought. That's your thought for the day, isn't it? That's what just I'm cheer someone up. So nip down to Argus. There's free ones stacked up. Go and hand them out to the elderly. Mm. They love it. The Jayhawks on Radio 2, bad, uh, bad time is it? I think it's called bad time. So we were so distracted by all the questions that come well, in These are great. There's fa thank you so much for emailing and texting. They're, they're brilliant. Um, uh, here's one uh, from Reverend Rachel Harrison. I'm also a vicar and I'm making mince pies. We know our demographic now. We've got a load of vicars listening. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, they're good at spreading the word and that, aren't they? You know, tell people about the show and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and also mincemeat, clearly. Right. So, uh, yeah, all vicars listening, spread the word. Tell them about Carl. And have a great time tomorrow, it's your special day. Uh, although Carl, doesn't Carl sort of- does, Car does Carl go against creationism or for it? I don't know. What do you mean? Would he have evolved or did something make it? All I I'll say to the- would, would God have bothered to- Is that- <laughs> Is that in God's image? <laughs> I mean, that's surely the most blasphemous no, thing you could no, say. Bod made him in his yeah, image. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I he's made of, in the image of Bod. <laughs> is, is he the one who sort of decided? Who? That, God. Are you talking about God or Bod? Uh, God and that. Okay. I, is he the one who decided that, you know, <coughs> we should move out of the water and walk on land? Did he decide that, or once once he made the little egg, did he sort of go <laughs> run free? Do, do I what don't he, know where we are. Yeah, I don't know what part of the <laughs> if. Could I just say, if uh, there are any um, vicars out there, could Carl come and do us uh, a sermon one day? I mean, we will pay. We do. We do a big donation to a, to your roof. But can Carl just talk to five minutes to a? I mean, a really sort of I'd like an upper middle class educated parish somewhere, and Carl just comes and talks for ten minutes. The only God. time that a congregation anywhere has heckled the person doing <laughs> no, it. No, Get yeah. off! Yeah, then they're chasing to the castle carrying pickaxes <laughs> and <Flaming> torches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got some right. questions for Carl. These are amazing questions. Okay. And just right. give your your immediate response to them, Carl. Don't not too much thinking time. Yeah, okay. Right. What would happen if insects were bigger than us? <laughs> Who's that from? Uh Vicky of Milton. Milton. Keynes maybe? I don't it ran out. So I don't think there is a place called Milto. It's from Vicky. What Carl, what would happen if insects were bigger than us? She's going into the uh the possible winner file there. Would um would David Attenborough still like his job? Do you know what I mean? Would would he start worrying? Because I've got a point. Just because you know insects and that, he's always messing about with them. But would he be that keen <laughs> to like eight foot? <laughs> 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 Is what I mean. If they look like me, sure. brilliant. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, th look, this is a nice one. This is uh, from uh, Jason. Can Carl do something to prove you are on live and not recorded? I'm sure that will tax his little bald head to bursting point. Um, what's his name? Jason. How can you prove that we're live on air? Come on, how could you prove that we're live on air? Happy Christmas Eve, Jason. No, we could have recorded this a week ago. Yeah, but then it wouldn't be Christmas Eve. No, but- <laughs> Happy she Christmas Eve, innit? No, but we didn't no, record Carl, it and think, think! Right, it's, uh, it's, it's nearly quarter to twelve. Yeah, but we could have, we could have started with the clock knowing that we were gonna record it as live. We could have done this last all right, Wednesday. Alright, alright, uh, it's Radio 2, it's a uh, nice day out there, sun's out. That's a guess. And, 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 do you think- oh, it is sunny, yeah, it is, it is sunny, but yeah. But generally but, it's but, but hold on, wait a minute, we're in London. Someone listening in, in Manchester, it might be raining. It probably is raining. Um, Look, he can't work out how to make sure it's live. Look at him looking up in the sky, look at him! His head is gonna burst. There's a little bit of blood coming from his <laughs> ear. How can we prove we're live? My mum's budgie died last night. <laughs> but <that's> <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh about it. It's only your mum that can confirm that. I didn't bear, uh, yeah. No one knows whether your uh, uh, budgie died or not. Was he? Was he? Was he pictured holding a copy of today's paper? Uh, what are you talking about, Carl? I can't. I can't prove anything then. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. so right. Next question. Oh, that's amazing. Oh God, Carl. Um, where would you go um, if you had a time machine? That's Bob from Manchester. Um. Where would I go? I can go to any time. Yeah. 
We I'm, I'm, I'm now long one to get there. Oh, yeah. No, no, oh. no, no, but I'm just saying, what am I doing? Am I staying in the little box and just looking out of a window? Or am I- Let's assume you can wander okay, around. Okay, we do both. Track. First of all, you're, you're wandering around. I'm just- just one- and, and I've typed in the year. Oh, <sighs> and, yes. and To be yes. honest, I'm not that good at history, so I, I don't know what happened when. So I'd be better off just sort of letting someone else have a go and asking them when they get back, just sort of- <laughs> Carl, where would you go? What do you fancy? Just think- Would you like to see dinosaurs? Would you like to see, uh, the Roman Empire? Would you like to see the 1960s? Would you like to go back and see your nan as a kid? You shouldn't really mess with time though, should you? No, you're not- It's okay. not actually gonna happen. No one's actually invented one yet. What's it, what- what period of history are you interested in? Um, uh, probably, I, I mean, I sort of like the 60s. Okay. But we still sort of, you know, we don't, we don't really- we Next don't. question. Unbelievable. Everyone's oh. got an answer to that. Everyone wants to know where they can go back in time well, except you. where do you go back in time to? I'd go back to, to religious times. I'd go back to, to the birth of Jesus, see what was going on. Really? Yeah. See how, see how the frankincense and mirror went down. <laughs> what do you think? You have to imagine, imagine there's a class of farting. Oh, uh, no. we haven't, we haven't told our kids about farting. <laughs> he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't do, do it. We haven't told them about it. We haven't. No, we don't do it in front of them. <laughs> you have to learn it, do you? No, I know, but there's a- there's a place. That's what I was always told. Go on. There's a place for that. Cornwall. <laughs> so, um, and- and the mum, that, you know, it's the same, she- she doesn't do it. Right. If she- if she goes to the toilet to, you know, do- do what you gotta do, she, uh, <laughs> she makes sure, like, she- she'll sort of say things like, Are you going out for a walk? <laughs> Are you going uh, out for a walk? Does she think- th does she know that you're broadcasting this? <laughs> Well, yeah. He's probably around at the neighbours now, listening. Yeah. Any of you gone out for a walk? <laughs> yeah, it's not the door. So she, what, she kind of, she waits until everyone's left, or? She, she doesn't like the thought that everyone, do you know like cats don't like you staring at them when they're doing it? <laughs> I've never stared at a cat while he's doing anything. <laughs> Have you ever had a pet cat? What do you mean? Yeah, go on, go on. No, it's just that cats, uh, you know, if you get on a little litter tray, yeah. I remember being told, like, no, mm. when it does use it, don't sort of go and look at it. Because <laughs> it, put, it puts it off. I was the same as a kid. I didn't, it, when I had a what nappy. Who comes and looks at you when you're on the bottom? No, no, when I was a kid and I was in a nappy, right, yeah. I used to always, um, like, th there was a corner in the kitchen that yeah. I'd always go to. And everyone would be Why like- Why did you go to the toilet? Because they had a nappy on. Oh yeah, right, how old were you? Fourteen know, about, about, <laughs> about three or something. Yeah, right. And I used to always go to this corner, and yeah. everyone, everyone said, "Right, he's he's going to the corner. Don't watch, <laughs> don't stare at him." <laughs> and the, the thing is, I can so imagine you because you've got the same head. Yeah, you look like a baby. It's just the way his head. But with that, would you? Okay, would you put a nappy on for fifty quid? Now. Yeah. Just, I'll just be just sitting, just uh, do your work, no, right? Anyway, just anyway, sit in right? the corner. <laughs> so I'm not, getting, I'm not doing that, right? Come on. So yeah, my mum's like that, and something else she's- she's good. I mean, people- go, people might know. At a dinner party, oh, Mrs. Pilkerton, just in the corner, just- don't look at her. Yeah, <laughs> don't look at Mrs. P. She's just- she's just in the corner of our kitchen, don't- just look away. <laughs> What's she doing? Just- just- she's just doing her business. <laughs> she's- there she is, there she is squatting. Are you going for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were saying, Carl. Another, uh, another trick I've learned from her, right, if, uh, if you're using, say, a friend's toilet or something, yeah. and, uh, you don't want to leave your mark. Um, just use- Go down the toilet and flush it. Use a, uh, take a box of matches with you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Set fire to the girls! Set fire to the girls' calls and it's like- Turn the place down, and have a wonderful <laughs> crap and just leave when the fire brigade get there. Oh, forget <laughs> it. Who is it? It's fine. Yeah. It's a good one. We don't go brilliant, do you? <laughs> if you're gonna talk, you do say something useful. There you go. Vines yeah. there, homesick. <laughs> Brilliant. Now come on, we should do monkey news now, because I know you want to save it, but I think you should put your best stuff first. You never know what will happen, you know what I mean? Always put your best well, stuff out there. Let me just get it out of the, uh... Okay, well while he's getting it, could we have a jingle for monkey news? Yeah. Tell oh! You what, chimpanzee that! Monkey news! <laughs> I'll tell you what, right, about putting, uh, putting your best stuff first. Yeah. Right. Do you know, uh, do you know what we were saying the other, the other week about in Chinatown? Uh, it's not know, really a town. Well, it's not, it's not a town, right? And like, <laughs> the restaurants, they have like, 
Oh, those old dead ducks and chickens just yeah. hanging in the window, yeah. An octopus and all that, just yeah. hanging there. Yeah. And that doesn't, like, make you want to go in, does it? No, sure. This morning, walking through Soho on the way in, walked past this sort of strip joint place, this woman said, do you want to come in, sir? All right, turn round, she must have been about eighty. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're equating her to a, yeah. a, a, a hangy bit of octopus. Well, <laughs> you should be telling you performing? Uh, and a chicken. I'm just saying, again, put your best stuff at the front door. <laughs> 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 yeah, good thinking. Uh, Alright, anyway, bit of monkey news, that's been, uh, been sent in. Right. Uh, Gareth, in Catford. Right, good work, Gareth. Um, basically, it's about this, uh, this monkey. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. In the jungle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's got a gig out of hairdressers. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? This guy, has got, uh, has got himself a nice little job going in hairdressers. As what? It, um, gets people sitting down, um, and what it does before the people have their hair cut, that, it sort of sits there, and it goes through people's hair, makes sure it's clean, and, uh, people are loving it. Right, people pet so, so it's a, so it's a pet monkey. It's nothing to do with it getting a gig in an hairdresser's, it's a pet monkey. It's not working at Monkey and Guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, seriously, it, it's, it's in there. Uh, I think it might have started off as a job and then- So what's it say? It says, Junior 15 pounds, Stylist 35 pounds, <laughs> Monkey 63 pounds. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't quite follow. It's in the jungle. It was wandering about. <laughs> Right. Uh, maybe, maybe it did start But it looks off. good, it's hair looks good, someone thought, hang yeah, on. Yeah, but never ever, you see, people make that mistake with hairdressers anyway. I always say, well, if the hairdresser's got a good haircut, go to where he's going. Right. Right? Because yeah. that's what I thought when I read it, about having yeah. a good haircut. How right? often do you go to the hairdressers? Well, not that much anymore, sure. but, but I used to always think that. Yeah. You uh, used to go to a bloke who told me had his shack on a railway bridge that used to shake when a train went over. Yeah. Because it was two quid. Yeah, but before that, I've, I've never had that much luck with hairdressers. Before that was a was another place, and it was run by sort of you know these sort of wannabe gangster type people. Oh yeah, but they'd uh, you know you'd go. What for do you mean by wannabe gangsters? Well, sort of just just petty crime stuff. You'd go in for a haircut, and then you'd walk out with a video recorder. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You don't uh, have to take it. <laughs> no, I know, but they'd sort of spend ages flogging you that whilst cutting your hair. It was their thing. It's like right, sit down. You're right. Yeah. Oh, you so know. Up for the weekend. What do you think though? Maybe a Sony. Yeah. yeah. So, and, so that, that's when I stopped going there, cause it was like, it's just what I haircut, I don't wanna be hassled it, Which one said that you had the hair of a Chinaman? It's a fellow who worked in a railway station haircut. <laughs> well, he should know. <laughs> I mean, he's been around a bit, clearly, if he runs a shack next to a <laughs> railway station. <laughs> so, um, Can we just go back to Monkey News yeah, for a second? So anyway, that's all, yeah. I yeah. didn't quite follow why, he, he, he's still, he's still, his, his salon is in the jungle? Or where is it? No, he he was doing his doing what he does in the jungle, right? Right. Um, <laughs> he's walking about. He wanders into the hairdressers. Yeah. Maybe they didn't have him on like as a job straight away. He was just there. Just the said, this is nice. He's sat there picking the nits. And oh, I d oh, Carl, I don't know where to start. Then it's just that it's not it's the embellishment. You don't walk in. He walks from a jungle to an hairdresser's. I mean, you're an idiot. <laughs> you really are. An idiot. I'd love to see you try and get a job in an hairdresser. If there was another <laughs> monkey up for it, you'd never get a job. So he was good at that. People said this is relaxing. Apparently, he had really nice hands, soothing, yes. right on people's heads. They said, let's put him on the payroll. So let's put him on the payroll. What do you mean? No, I'll give you that. Okay, this is the news item, is it? <sighs> Customers are queuing up to have their hair done at a salon in the jungle by a monkey. Mm -hmm. Judy, a pigtailed macaque, has a reputation as the best exterminator of head lice in Com Kane. She is so good, some customers fall asleep under her gentle touch. Regular Amporon Chakema said, Judy's hands are so soft and gentle, I really feel I can relax. But you know that is doing what it does naturally. It's looking for like salt and stuff in the hair. Yeah. And nits. It's not on the payroll. It doesn't complain about when it gets when <laughs> it gets deducted at uh, national insurance. It's not part of the union. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but a good monkey news, you know, yeah. backed up with uh, with good tabloid <laughs> with journalism. Sol yeah, with solid yeah. evidence there. So now that's I think we we should start marking the monkey news, Rick. Got it? What do you think? Giving it marks out of ten, maybe. Uh, for both interest and validity. Well, for interest, I'll give it seven. For Carl's 
Uh, Carl believing that there was something to this monkey thinking it had a job and getting yeah, paid. but it was also <laughs> doing kind of perms. Two. And colouring. Two. Yeah. Ridiculous. Again. Yeah. Ridiculous. More monkey news next week. Hopefully let's just hear that jingle again. Oh! Chimpanzee that! Monkey news! Peace train. Isn't that brilliant? Cat Stevens. Now, well, I've, I've sort of enjoyed the last sort of, you know, hour or so after, after the disappointment of the Sonys. Um, I, th I think we are gonna give up, to be honest. Um, do another week and then shoot off. Yeah, and knock on the head. Okay. We are doing it for a laugh anyway, but- If they're not gonna reward us for that, then- Do you know what I mean? It's not really worth it. But, I, I, I tell you what could- but, what about this? Carl, can you find out who was on the panel? Can you? But what difference does it make? Well, I want I want you to interview. I want you to phone them up and and I want them to tell them why, why um they didn't think our show was. Yeah, good. let them explain themselves. Just explain themselves. They've got to stand by the convictions. Find them all. Track them down. There's probably about yeah, three. What do you expect? That I want to tell the, the truth. truth. No, want... You're right. The monkey you should have you know <laughs> done the job for you. I just want people. Wrong. I don't want to be. I don't want to sit in a room and hide. I want the three people on the other panel. I'll find them out to say we didn't vote for you because we thought. It was shoddy, amateurish, annoying, there was too much swearing. I go, fair enough, well done, mate. You. We didn't vote for you because Carl's voice is an irritant, okay? Okay, well done, mate, you are alright. Uh, we didn't vote for you because, uh, Gervais, you're a, a fat, useless git who uh, understands nothing about broadcasting. And you're <laughs> mate, Steve. Do something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I go, right, I'm not so happy with that, but at least you told the truth. Mm -hmm. But. Get them on the phone. Find out. Find out from Andrew. Get I noticed none of them have mentioned me, which is good. I they know, yeah. I'm pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. They probably all love Steve. Mm. No one likes to pick on an invalid. Well, do you know what I mean? That's... I'm just... We, um, we got a player request here for, um, what's her name, who's... Don't leave it, Steve. Uh, Sonia, who's 18 today. We couldn't find William. It was really nothing worth Smith because... Um, whoever is in charge of the library, uh, I mean, they probably won an award for it, but, you know, she didn't ask for four non-blondes, so I found there is a light by the Smiths. So, a week to go. Of course, as ever, lots of questions for Carl as well, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Question from, uh, Jade. Carl, what would you change if you were in charge of what kids are taught in school? Right, you know, because I mean, your school experience was a bit iffy. You got very bored, didn't you? You got very disillusioned by school. Yeah. What I'd do, right, is, uh, instead of keep sort of teaching kids about two and two and that, which is four, right? <laughs> well done. Um, Show off. <laughs> um, I think you should be asked more questions that make them think rather than something that has just got an answer. I totally agree. I totally agree. Right? So yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, so teaching them the the the, the quest for knowledge, uh, inflaming their imagination. But just freaking them out of it as well. Just going like <laughs> See, I knew that's where it was going. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as you started talking, Rick, I was thinking you're thinking some of the big existential or philosophical questions. You yeah. Know, what it, does it mean to be human? What does it mean to interact with other exactly. humans? Exactly. To be a human. Or, or teaching them sort of like philosophy on a basic level that you know teaching them the love for learning. So yeah. you know get them back to a roots level so they want to learn and then they will learn as opposed to just teaching them facts. Whereas he, he was thinking <laughs> freak them out of it. <laughs> yeah. No, just like you know like. A read the other day um, and someone sent it in on email like how oh, there's a, a, a dishwasher that's been found on Mars. Rubbish. Whoa, what? Right? That's not true. So, so tell them that. But it's so not true. Go home and write about it. How did that happen? But it didn't Get happen. The, well it did happen. It was in a science magazine. No it didn't happen. There's not in, a dishwasher on Mars. Why not? Because that... Me, why not? Why did it... How did it get there? But we're always sending, like, rubbish out there and that. It's like... Not dishwashers. What, you think the, the council take it away and they go, where can we put it? Well, the, uh, the tip's full. We, well, where's the nearest thing we can dump this? Mars, I imagine. No, but the same way that fella who, I don't know, was it two Christmases ago when he was messing about saying I can get stuff to Mars and all that, um, he did it wrong because he did it on, like, Boxing Day and I just think nobody's concentrating. No one wants to work on that day. It's kind of like, do you know what I mean? They're going to do stuff sort of half assed aren't they, sure. on Boxing yeah. Day. So... It didn't really get there, I don't think, but it crash landed. What right? are you talking about? What was he trying to do? He was sending something up to Mars. Yeah, it that, was. Little, that little fella that wanted to get something on Mars and it, it, it got. Globe, you mean? And it didn't open properly. Yeah. It got there, didn't it? But, but the thing is, it got there, it didn't open properly. No one's been back to pick it up. And what I'm saying yeah. is, we're saying about going to Mars as our next planet, it's a tip. There's loads of stuff that's been no. flirted up there. No, it's not. <laughs> it has, it's, about... all, it's just all like that probe thing is still there, rotting away. Yeah. So, 
ipso facto, there is a dishwasher on Mars. We've yeah. settled that. Why would they have a dishwasher on Mars? Would they take the dishwasher up to the space shuttle in case they had dinner parties? What are you talking about? I just think they would have a little dishwasher in there. There's a lot of them. Tight space. You don't want to... Who's going to do that? You know, that means... Do you know how much fuel it takes to move a kilogram? Yeah. Out of the Earth's atmosphere? So they're going to take up a dishwasher, are they? Sorry, but what are they cooking up there, Carl? How many people do it take to fly a rocket? I... <laughs> how many people? Tell me how many people. Uh, well, it's either one monkey with a banana shoot that feeds it, or probably two or three humans. Right, say it's three humans. Yeah. Now, there's three humans because they need one to steer it... So one, to, one... one to stop at the petrol station no, to get what, more... Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're going to start having a sink, then whoever's they washing They haven't got up, a sink. I know, because they've got a dishwasher. <laughs> He's got you there. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that, but all I'm saying is teach kids things about... Say to them, right, when you go home tonight, there was dinosaurs knocking out ages ago. How would you have lived with them? Get on with it. See you later. Well, they didn't. I've told you this before. You, you got a lot of your information from the Flintstones and One Million Years BC with Raquel Welsh. There weren't dinosaurs knocking around where there were little fellas knocking around in furry pants. No, no, but just sort of saying to them, all right then, here's a different question. Go on then. Would it be better um, to have dinosaurs knocking about now whilst yeah. we're here? Because I, I put that in my diary the other day, that, that <laughs> when you think about it, there's a population problem. Yeah. There's too many of us. Yeah. We're saving people all the time. No one's allowed to get injured anymore. You've got to, you know, wear a helmet when you're on a bike. Yeah. There's speed bumps to slow people down. Zebra crossing. Cures for illnesses. No one's dying anymore, right? Well, I think they are. Not, not as many as they should be, because yeah, the world's think, crowded. All I'm saying I is think it's... there's still people dying. I think, I think there's still people dying. Not that many, though. Yeah, I think there's still handful, millions of people handful, dying. Apparently, a handful. Loads, yeah. loads of people are living longer. And yeah. that's that's a problem. So, so you feel that you should introduce Tyrannosaurus Rex just into wandering say around, wandering London, around. just having wandering around, just picking people off. That's what. Just just you know, just sort of random and that. Because I I don't know. I mean, I'm not wishing that anyone I know dies and that. But all I'm saying is, I don't know anyone who's died for ages. Right. Whereas if a dinosaur was knocking about, you'd go. On. Oh, yeah. Neil's gone missing. Yeah. And, and you know, Nora's been had her head bitten off by a. Whatever. I just yeah. think it, then it is survival of the fittest, which yeah. is we've lost all that now. You don't even have to be fit to survive. They just keep sticking a new lung on you. <laughs> or, <laughs> do you know what I mean? They, 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 can, they can do too much now to keep people going. They just keep sticking a new lung on you. Question from Kevin. He says, Carl, other than the famous boxing match that you've often talked about, I know that took um, up about 20 minutes of your time, have you ever been in any other kind of fight? Uh, I don't suppose a, a slanging match. I think they're talking of ever been in a physical fight. Um, once that I can remember. It was over a, over a woman. <laughs> well, a girl. I was at school. Yeah. Um, and it was because, like, it's hassle, innit? Right? Relationships when you're younger. How you're old not, were you? Um, about seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's over a woman. <laughs> <laughs> go on then. Yeah, go on. And there was this girl knocking about who, you know, she was, she was quite good looking, everybody liked. And, uh, my mate, he really liked her. And, uh, I, I didn't uh, sort of ask her out on that, but she just sort of took a shine to me and stuff, right? And, uh, didn't really go out with her properly. It's at, at that age where going out with someone is just like, sort of going, all right, in the morning, do you know what I mean? You just sort of <laughs> nod your head. Yeah. And that. Anyway, there was some sort of school disco, <laughs> and, um, they were playing Spin the Bottle or something, right? And, uh, I sort of wandered over to see what was going on, and I stood on this girl's dress and put a hole in it, and she started crying. I was like, oh, I can't be dealing with this, right? You know, what's up with you? It's like, oh, what's up with you? And everyone's going, Carl, what are you doing? That's meant to be your girlfriend and that. You should be sort of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and giving her a hug and all that, and saying, it'll be all right, we'll sort the dress out. I said, oh, I can't be dealing with this. No. Right? So she's crying her eyes out, I said, it's over, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's over, you saying, right? In the morning, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No yeah. more of that. Yeah, there's no more. Right. In the morning. So I go to the toilet, right? And uh, this lad who fancies her comes in and goes, you're out of order, you know. And I say, what are you on about? So you're, there's two seven-year-olds. Seven yeah. You're out of order. Keep out. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. Show her a bit of bloody respect. <laughs> but sorry, were you wearing trilbies? Yeah. <laughs> he put his cigarette out in the sink and he just said, leave it. Ah, get out of my face. <laughs> So oh. I just thought, I said, look, why are you getting involved and all that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why are you getting involved? <laughs> and, oh, uh, and, it, and it was obviously, like, because, you know, he, he fancied her and that. We yeah. had a bit of a fight in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I, I accidentally, you know, sort of chipped his tooth on a sink. Oh, wow, is it like a proper... Sorry! This is like someone from Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. What are you talking about? Two seven-year-olds in a toilet. I just, uh, so you put, you put a hole in her dress. I don't know how that... What were you wearing? Football boots? I just boots? stood on it. Just... <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, how did you make a hole in her dress? I don't know. It was like that, that sort of material. You were like, wearing winkle pickers. Like <laughs> crepe. You know what I mean? It was like a crepe dress or something. Yeah. Right. And that so got a hole in it. But so, so you're having a, and when you say you're having a fight, I mean, are you wrestling with it? You got head, sort of arm locks a, a and headlocks. A little bit of wrestling and sho shoving about and that. And it was an accident. I didn't sort of go right. I'm going to break your teeth or anything. It's just yeah. that I happened to push his head down, and and his tooth hit the sink, mm. right? And it chipped and yeah. what have you. After that, like I, I sort of left there and stuff, and we had to go into assembly, uh, and there was a copper in there doing some presentation, saying, "Listen, kids, you know, don't get into trouble, because we're out there and we'll get you." Right, so sort of try to teach the kids young, not to get into any trouble and stuff. So I'm sat in the assembly room, thinking, "Oh God, there's a copper here talking," and it, like my mate's going to come in in a minute, like with a chipped tooth and everything. And, and questions are going to get asked. That's what kind of happened. I mean, the, the coppers didn't get involved. Yeah. But did you turn your back on violence after that? Then? Yeah. Uh, well, well, he, he said you'll never take me alive, copper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah that, that was the sort of last fight. Brilliant. Some of the questions coming in now, Rick, are just I don't know what they're intending. What, what response they're hoping for, really. This is one from Rob. He just says, I was just wondering, what are Carl's views on the human appendix? What do you think, Carl? What do you think of the human appendix? Never worried about it. What? Well, no, I think Rob's point is that it's sort of pretty uh, redundant now. So, th this is kind of what we've talked about before, where... He always says that. He always says something like, oh, we've talked about this before. And, and the thing that we've talked about is nothing like it. What I mean is, we've, we've obviously interfered somewhere along the way. And well, we, we have interfered, yeah. yeah. we shouldn't have done, because... It's, it's the same way, like, uh, if we, you know, if we didn't have planes and that, would we have wings now? If we'd have no. needed to get about, <laughs> no. would we have had wings? No, is the answer's no. <laughs> Next. No, but but you say that, but look at the way... Because he's right, is it? Because he's right. No, but all I'm saying is you see that little picture of, like, an ape to man. Yeah. At first, they're crawling about on all fours because probably yeah. you're looking for food, so you want to be down there. So right. if, you, if you're on both legs, yeah. you're missing stuff that's on the floor. What sort of time period do you think this... Because, I mean, we started, uh, you know, dabbling with a plane maybe 100 years ago. So what sort of time period do you think this little thing who's scrabbling around looking for food I stood up and I walked? don't know. I, I sort of don't worry about time. Sort right. Of behind, well, I'll tell you now, we wouldn't have wings now. If the Wright brothers had said, oh, forget it, we wouldn't have wings now. There, there, you know, there now, was... Rick, am I right in saying that Carl himself made the news this year? Because wasn't it right that um, a friend of your girlfriend's had read about him? Apparently, you were slagging oh, off yeah. Cornwall. Oh yeah, yeah. My uh, my uh, girlfriend's used to live in Cornwall, and you were the front uh, sort of story on um, something like the Western something or other edition, slagging off Cornwall. What are you on about? What have you no, been up to? What have you said? What have you said about Cornwall? I haven't said anything. I like Cornwall. Yeah, but well, you must have said something, or they wouldn't have a. They mentioned Carl Pilkington. You've been slagging off, apparently. I love Cornwall. I love going there. Um, what have you have you ever said anything about it? Negative? What was that yeah. thing? Oh, didn't you slag someone off in uh, Mevagissi? You went into a pub in Mevagissi. Yeah, and he was airy. That was that. That's that one fella. There was a, <laughs> a sort of. I, w I went in there and they're really friendly and everything in Cornwall. Yeah, if you're listening. Like Don't that. creep. No, but I like it. I'd, if I yeah. wanted to retire on that early, that's where I'd go and live. I wouldn't now. But I went there, right, in this little place called Me Mevagissi, and went into a pub, and the woman behind the bar was all friendly and going, it was around Christmas time, and she said, oh, what we normally do is, like, have a uh, fancy dress and stuff. She said, yeah, I'll show you some pictures, right? And she was going through, and there was a picture of someone there, and I said, God, what, you know, what's he come as? Look at him, he's well airy. And she said, oh, he, he just works behind the bar, he wasn't dressed as anything. <laughs> and he came out round the corner, airy fella. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's no way that made the paper. <laughs> Have you said anything else negative about it? When was the last time you were in Cornwall? It was... We, we, we took someone for a wedding present, we took someone on holiday there. Yeah. Week. Um, there was a fella on the beach who, um, he worked in one of them huts, you know, how they sell deck chairs and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think that's a pretty nice job, especially in the summer, innit? The sun's out, you sat there, all you've got to do is talk to people, say, what do you want, two deck chairs, there you go, no problem, see you later. But this fella, right, I kept, uh, I, I went in there, uh, got the chairs, took them back, he was being really moody, he said, uh, oh, so you got a lot of sand on him. <laughs> I said, well, there's loads of it out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a surprise that he's stuck on, uh, and he had a bit of a moan at me. And I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned that sort of. Well, maybe openly. he recognised you. But but uh, that isn't a diss. That's that's one person, isn't it? If you're yeah. from Cornwall and you've got any reason to but dislike Carl, but there's not many people live in Cornwall. It's a very small community. I mean, no wonder they don't want to be part of us with people like you slagging them off. I love Cornwall. Got so do I. I think it's, Cornwall's beautiful. 
Mm. You're an idiot. Mm -hmm. Don't, 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 anyone in Cornwall, do not judge the rest of the nation by Carl Pilkington, it's not fair. I sometimes wonder if, imagine if he's the one that archaeologists dig up in a million years time. Yeah. And find some of his notes, and they, they, <laughs> they <laughs> measure the head and everything, and then some of the ramblings that he did. Do you know or what if I mean? an alien comes down, it would just be him that they'd bump into. That would be uh, just our luck, wouldn't I'll it? I'll tell you what though, talking of like, education and that, Go I know on. I'm not, I know I'm sort of not the bright, brightest bloke knocking about on that, right? But I treat myself the other day to a new, um, mobile, right? right? And, uh, you know, going through it, getting used to it, getting used to how to send text and all that. And do you know the predictive text? Yeah. So if you send a text, you yeah. type it in, yeah. and that sort of guesses what you're gonna write yeah. out, yeah. Yeah. right? And it's new, so it doesn't really know me yet, <laughs> right? And I was sending a text to someone to say something like, I ain't got a clue or something, right? Row ain't, right, A-I-N-T, looked up to, at the screen to make sure that he'd written it right, that had written up biotechnology. <laughs> what? What? That, that had predicted that I was going to use the word biotechnology. <laughs> I am never going to use that word. <laughs> ever. <laughs> what? Well, well, I ain't got a clue. No, ain't. A I N T. Yeah. I wrote that just A I N T on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I love the fact that you've got a cleverer phone than you. Something others. People have been wondering whether the show is live or if it's pre-recorded. Well, if it weren't live, then how could Grace uh, email in telling us how much she hates the show? Brilliant. She, she says, uh, she, well, she says, dear Ricky, I think you are a prat. She's got my attention already. She opens with that, comes <laughs> in straight away. That's her opening gambit. But she, doesn't, gonna... she doesn't just leave it there, she qualifies it. She says, all you do is slag people off on your show and think it's funny. I dis I disagree. I don't, we've slagged off Carl. Yeah. But he's pretty much the only one. But Carl, all I've said is you are, you are stupid. And, I mean, by your own admission, you must know you're stupid, don't you? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll get by on that, but yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's a fair comment, isn't it? And the yeah, other people we slagged no. off are people who'd like to see foxes ripped to pieces, so which I stand by. Yeah. Okay, what else? Uh, I'm sick of listening to you be rude about the world and certain people. Rude about the world? Are we being rude about the world? Well, anyway, I have to turn off the radio. I'm surprised anyone listens to you. Please try growing up. Oh, she missed her dedication. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. What, uh, what annoys me with Grace is that, um... Nothing annoys me about Grace. Careful, what are you doing? Well, all I'm I'm no, all I say is I think she's... No, I'm saying she's... And? I'm saying, Rick, she should have criticised us for the obvious problems. We're incompetent. We're not very we're good not at all. We're entertaining. We yes. drone on too much. Yeah, but don't, we we're don't slag amusing, off the world. We, we love the world. the world. We love the world and Carl. In fact, I've, the, the thing is about uh, the world and Carl is that he's the same shape as the world, and that's why I like him, because that's all you need there, a little round... I cannot but think the, uh, pot calling the kettle black there, Rick. What? <laughs> <laughs> my body's round. My head <laughs> is sort of fat and square. <laughs> so how dare you? Uh, just quickly before we uh, move on to the final bit of uh, the sermon, we um, just thinking back to some of the other highlights of the year. One of mine, Rick, I'm sure one of yours, Live Eight. Live Eight was great. Fun. Not only was it a great day, but obviously uh, you know, it raised its, it made its message uh, very much uh, clear and open to the world. So Did you enjoy uh, Live Eight, Carl? Uh, yeah, it was all right. It's you know quite a good good thing. I mean, mm. has it has it sorted the problems out or? Well, it's more about raising awareness, isn't it, and bringing that to the world's attention. I'm aware of it, so, yeah, it's <laughs> sort of done the job on that. <laughs> yes. well, I, I read something about, um... Unbelievable. Do you know, um, but, you know, because Live 8 was all about money and stuff, on it, giving money and No, it wasn't really. Well... It was about awareness, but it was about, um, the, the, the G8... Dropping um, the debt. ...cancelling the debt to the, I think, the 20th poorest nations or something, which I think... Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, then, then I was reading up on that, and there was something about, do you know Bill Gates? Yeah. Who did, uh, the computer stuff, didn't he? Yeah. I yeah. think he's the uh, wealthiest, Microsoft. Yeah. wealthiest man in the world or something. Absolutely, the first, I think the first hundred billionaire. Wow. Was he? That is a lot of money. Because they, they worked out, um, uh, they put to him that, um, with his labour, what, what his labour's worth, he would have to drop over six thousand dollars to be bothered to pick it up. Wow. And they asked him, and he said, well, of course I pick it up, you know, because yeah. it doesn't work like that. But yes, he's, he's that rich. Well, he could just pay someone to do it as well, can he? Okay, get on with it, Carl. You do, again, you've missed the point. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you, no, again, you've missed the point. But, but all I'm saying- Sorry, right? Gracie, in wherever you are, Carl's an idiot and I stand by it. Uh, Bill Gates- And don't rip foxes to pieces. He's got that much money, right? He's saying that he could give everyone in the world, right, six quid, mm -hmm. everybody, right, Am I, but just what I was thinking and what I were to say to you is to see, see what you think, right? Do you think it's fair that everybody gets six quid? Right, why? What's your point? What do you mean? You should mean the poor should get more? Well, well, no, not really. What I mean is, say like if you live in Africa, right? Yeah. You can get a lot more for, say, a quid there than you can in London. 
<laughs> so what I'm saying is rather than six quid each, yeah, maybe give people in London a tenner each, in Africa or whatever, give them about three quid, three fifty. So you're saying give the poorest people less so they can get as much for their money in their Argos? Yeah, basically. You're, you're saying if you were to redistribute wealth, you'd give the poor people slightly less than the rich people because they've got a higher standard of living. <laughs> Gracie, once again, can I come back to you on this? Do you know now why I call her dear? Oh, you know what I like about Gracie? She told the truth and she put her name. It's Grace, yeah. actually. She put her name down. Some people, I mean, just say you're a prat and they leave each other. you across the street. <laughs> yeah, that, man? Yeah. You're not funny. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, was, I mean, I rest my case. Carl, you're an idiot. All right. Robert Post and a song called Got None, one of my favourites of the year. Uh, Almost the end of this, uh, Radio 2, Richard Javais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's been a pleasure doing these two specials. Uh, if we're invited again, um, keep your emails coming. Not Grace. <laughs> keep your emails to yourself. <laughs> yeah. No, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Please send them in and, uh, um, it, it, it's, uh, we learnt something, haven't we, Carl? Um... No, he hasn't. Well, okay, good. Uh, uh, it was a long shot. Yeah. <laughs> it was, you know what I mean? Chances were slim. Yeah, I know. But we've been doing a sermon because, um, uh, one, uh, uh, we've got a lot of vicars listening for some reason. Um, I think of that. We're, you know, we're hardly their pin-up, are we? Yeah. You know what I mean? The vicar's going, oh, I must listen to that show. It, it's so cool. Um, and there was a thing in the, uh, um, I think the Mirror this week about, um, vicars are now, um, podcasting. Um, they're, uh, doing their sermon, uh, as a podcast and download for busy people who can't get to church all the time. And they had the chart of the pod- What's the number one podcast in the world? Well, I think it's, uh, Ricky Gervais podcast. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> number one in the world. Yes, it is. Um, but, um, so that's why we're doing this. We do- In fact, we should, um, you should do a full version of this and put oh. it on- um, Yeah, let's do it. No, no, For that. people who can't- because this is- this is valuable, um, time and Grace doesn't want to hear it, so just do the final, uh, uh um, I suppose, uh, what would you call this? Um, summing up with the Bible, then we do a, a longer one. Well, no, it's not- it's not sort of summed up. Because, uh, to be honest, after the Noah bit and stuff, I was a bit like, oh, this I'll just do it. Just do it. it. Okay, this is, this is the final, on. this is the final episode of the Bible. Well, the greatest the, story ever told. No, no, but it's not the final chapter. This is just another bit in it that I thought you I can relate to. Get to the you end. didn't, you couldn't even read a children's Bible. They had to go to Waterstones and ask two people for and they put it in a brown yeah, paper it was, bag. It's 200 and odd pages and that. Oh. So, the one that I picked up on, right, that I could relate to. Okay. Do you know, um, Samson Delilah? Yeah, of course. Do you know what happened in that? Yes. Right, well, just in case you haven't heard the story of Samson and Delilah, what it is, um, so some, I think God had a word with, uh, <laughs> some bloke, I can't remember his name, I think it's Manoa or something his name was. Right. He said, listen, I'm still having problems, uh, Adam and Eve let me down. Um, he didn't say that, by the way. Anyone listening, at no point has God ever said, Adam and Eve let me down. No, anyway. but, and then he had a word with Noah, he, he did the, the boat thing, so he said, I can't ask for two favours, right? Sure. So he, he asked this other bloke, <laughs> Manoa. <laughs> he was he happy told, with Noah, though, was he? Yeah, 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 he, he let him go on, though. It's like jury service, once you've done it, you're left alone for a bit, aren't you? <laughs> so anyway, did he, right, so he didn't bother getting the fish on the boat, did he? I, c I, I don't know. They were happy, weren't they? Surely. But anyway, yeah. Although, was it salt water everywhere? Why didn't the- why didn't the freshwater fish die out? Rick, I'm just gonna stop you there because we've still gotta get Monkey News in before one, uh, one o'clock. So, so he, he had a okay. word with this- this fella and he said, uh, he said, look, what I'm gonna do, you're gonna have a kid soon, it's gonna be a little boy, right, and when he grows up he's gonna sort out me problems. So it was like a, a long-term plan that sure. he had sorted, <laughs> right? So anyway, they have the kid, right, they're happy. We've got a little baby boy, they go, right, what we'll do to show our respect to God, we'll never cut his hair, right, because <laughs> he'll like that, right? We're still so, in the Old Testament, aren't we? I don't think Jesus is gonna make appearance, oh, so so, they called him Samson, yep. right? And, uh, he grew up, right, never cut his hair, yep. um, his hair made him strong, right? He was going about, he was helping people out, he was stopping wars and that, because he was so strong, his hair made him strong and that, apparently. Yeah. Anyway, nobody knew that, nobody knew it was his hair that did the job. So, uh, this is right so far, isn't it? I don't know, I don't know the ins and outs. So anyway, what happened is, women are loving him all of a sudden, he's got nice long hair and that, he looks the part, <laughs> he's stopping problems, women are going, he's a good fella, isn't he, this Samson bloke. Like Stringfellow. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's, it, that's his, the power of pulling, is in <laughs> Stringfellow's hair. Yeah. That's why he never cuts it. <laughs> exactly. Whatever, whatever the decade. <laughs> yeah. A piece of string fellow <laughs> never cuts his hair because that's where the power lies. <laughs> anyway, he didn't realise he had this power until so one day he got up, right, did his hair and that, went out, uh, a lion jumped out. Oh. He, 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 he killed it with yeah. his hands, with his bare hands. Why? Right? So again, Noah was a bit annoyed because that's one of the ones that he, that he <laughs> saved. saved. <laughs> but anyway, right, so he goes, I can't believe this power I've got, right? <clears throat> I'm gonna like sort out the world. Didn't the lion have long hair though as well? Oh. Well, no, we'll just. 
Just what? No, but I, uh, you're always picking on the. the uh, to be honest, though, that's that's as far as I got. Anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> that's it. That's it. So if you if you were t if you were interested by those, you can buy the Bible in all good bookshops and read the rest. Is that what you're saying? Or any yeah. religious book? Yes. We, we don't remember we the Torah, the Quran. Somewhere only we know by Keen on uh, BBC Radio Two. Right, it's that time again. It's what the nation's been waiting for. Yeah. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right, this is something that I do know about, alright? <laughs> monkeys have been up to anything in the world. This is this is what I'm on. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, what, you're I'm on top, on of, top this. of this. Uh this one it's uh, pretty recent. Um Monkey was knocking about New York. Oh uh, yeah. Uh he got he got locked up for like uh nicking stuff and all the rest of it, right? <laughs> Anyway, that's the point. I don't know. I don't know where I'd say point this. Point this. Well, hang on, Steve. If Steve, I, does that? But you know like what I mean. If that's the opening gambit, uh, uh, if I don't come in there, when do I come in? Right, you know I mean, if I don't pick him up on that, when do I come in? Steve, I can show you the original nicking yeah. stuff. Anyway, so so he worked on a plan to escape. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shut up! Right, and he'd, he'd worked it all out. He, he saw the like the the. the bloke with the keys and that. How do we right. know this? How do we know there. this? This isn't even the main bit of the story, I wouldn't even worry about it. Because you've- you, 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 No, because he's embellished and he's- it, it, it's- So oh. anyway- I've said this before, I'm gonna say it now, you do not interrupt the news, it's the news. So anyway, right, so the monkey gets out, he's uh, he's roaming about free, word gets out that he's escaped and that, right? The copper, I think his name's PC Wilcox of NYPD, right? <laughs> Police Constable Wilcox of, right. uh, the New York Police. Police Constable Wilcox. Leave oh, it. Leave yeah, it. yeah. We've, Dixon, only got, we've only got a few minutes left, please. Dixon of Queens. So, he got a call to, uh, to sort of assist, uh, you know, this, this monkey robot. PC out. Wilcox of the L, uh, of New York please, PD. Ricky! Because they were having problems catching it. Right? So he was so, so he was out on his motorbike looking what's going on. Anyway, mm. cut a long story short, he manages to catch up with the, with the monkey. Right. Why, did the monkey out. have a car? He got it, he got it in like a little alleyway. Why did the monkey steal a car, Carl? Anyway, so he had him, yeah. he, he gave him the rights and everything, you know, everything he used to say and all that business. Yep. He said, well, no, oh, whoa, 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 Steve. whoa, whoa, monkeys don't talk. So Carl, Steve. Carl, monkey, he didn't need to say anything you say, he might be taking down. So anyway, Carl, Steve, look at me right? as well. No, Carl, just, look- I'm just telling Steve because he's listening. But if, Carl, think of what you're saying. stuff down. So anyway, cop, you know, the monkey's like, fair cop, right? He's on the back of the motorbike being taken back to the station. Yeah. Anyway, Wilcox gets a call on, PC on, Wilcox, on, yeah. the, uh, on the radio sure. saying, you know, uh, listen, there's been another problem. Oh no. Right? Were you- There was a diversion, there was a gang. There was a- there was a gang. Right? Oh. oh. So he said, can you go and sort it out? And he's like, well, I've, I've got a monkey on my back. He said, well, take it with you. Was he on right? drugs? So anyway- <laughs> Isn't that what junkies say? <laughs> so he goes down to the scene where it's all kicking off, monkey's just sat on the motorbike thinking, I'm not gonna try and get away, it'll just make the matter worse, right? He's not <laughs> The gang- Hold on, was he wearing a crash helmet? The gang, uh, sort of, you know, he saw all that going off. Copper goes up- Sorry, was this a gang of humans? So, so anyway, so, the, it's kicking off, right? There's a gang, and they're all having a fight and what have you. Uh, anyway, it gets out of hand, cause Wilcox, even though he, he sort of helps out the person who was being beaten up, the, he walks off, the gang starts picking on the copper. Oh no. So, the monkey thinks, best help out here. Oh! He goes up, oh, right? No. Anyway, cut a long story short. Yeah. He, they let the monkey off. He got keys to the city. Steve, how did you, he help out the policeman? Have a look at that. Have a look. There's, there's the facts. There's We're the not. Facts. It's not facts. It never happened. That's the fact. I mean, everything about it's wrong. Everything about it is nonsense. Steve. Well, there's a, all I say is there's a picture here of a monkey brandishing a gun. If that's not truth, if that's not fact, have a look. Then there it is, right there. What is it? Uh, so we have some real news. Wow. Well, what is I'm, that? I just, I'm dumbfounded by that monkey news. But it's all there, Steve. Okay, well I'll, 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 I'm gonna give it a full assessment. Let's see if, th there's the news coming up, see if there's any stories like that in this. Right, on 88 to 91 FM, this is Radio 2 from the BBC. Thanks for There was, uh, I, there was this, um, uh, thing started, um, uh, 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 I saw it in the paper about 15 years ago, a guy put an advert in a local paper, I think it was in Sheffield, saying, um, I, I've been re reincarnated, I was a cow, at the birth of Jesus. Is anyone else out there that was reincarnated? It was the birth of Jesus. Fella got in touch, said I was a cow too, and they started a society called Cattle for Christ. <laughs> Just the two of them. I don't know where they held their uh, annual general meetings. Uh, I mean, I wonder think if that's that. still going. I, I don't know. 
But imagine if you were at the birth of Christ and they're going, oh, do you remember it? He goes, yeah, but I couldn't quite see. There was just a bit of wood in it. I didn't, yeah, yeah. I didn't really see that. I remember the, the men, they were arguing I, over spending. All I could see was your backside. I know, yeah. So, uh, think of that, Carl. Okay, final question. Right, okay. Carl, if you could, uh, travel back in time to ancient Rome yeah. and take one modern invention with you to set yourself up as a, as a god king, what would it be? What would you take back? That's from Amy. Sorry, Arvey. RV in London. Going back to Roman times. Yeah, so what would you take back to make sure that you were king? You, that, you know, w would it be a weapon? Would it be, you know? Uh, yeah, a, a weapon. It's pretty violent times, wasn't it? Yeah, I'll have, I'll have a weapon if, if that's- For what though? Uh, gun. Have a, have a gun, take that. And what would you do with it once you were there? Well, there's- I'd probably- I mean, I, I, I don't like killing animals and that, but, but those- they used to use tigers a lot, so shoot one of them in the head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, because it, there's no explanation yeah. why. No just explanation do it. for it. Just do I it. just, I love him. Okay, look, we've got to give this. Who, um, I think the um, can Carl do something to prove your lie? Yeah, you completely uh, foxed him. There was uh, nothing he could think of in his tiny little brain to prove that this is live. So, um, I think little Jason wins the uh, the cold pay collectibles and uh, some other stuff. So well done. It's, he still can't prove it. He still can't prove it. Play tune, then we'll have some. Uh, you could just news. said you could have just picked up today's paper and read the headline. Think! Hmm? Carl, we have just had, uh, a communique from Gillian Oliver, who's the communications, uh, director for the Church of England, yeah. okay? She wants to take you up on your offer. Um, she would like to take, uh, you, uh, to Manchester and let you give a sermon. About what? Well, th th don't think that's a ma- she's- she's the- th in charge of the press and communications for the Church of England, and she wants- oh, you've got to do this, Carl, for my sake. I- I- I'll, I'll go to church if uh, you do this. I've- I've been, I didn't really like it, I had to go once to what church. Um, it was years ago when I was a kid and I swore, right, my mate Jamie said, right, if you don't come with me to church, cos he was Catholic, he had to go, right? <laughs> So if you don't- if you don't come with me now, I'm gonna tell your mum that you swore, and like- <laughs> That's like, like oh. to get people to church. <laughs> so I went, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't enjoy it. Got any- I sort of got kicked out in the end because I was bouncing my tennis ball in the- in the <laughs> aisle and it rolled down. I- well I better tell uh, Gillian Oliver that that may happen again. Yes. That's the- if you don't take your yo-yo or your Nintendo, you've got to do it. I'm gonna make sure- oh, we want a campaign. Please, uh, email us if you want, uh, uh Carl mm -hmm. to do a sermon. And I- I mean, I'm sure we can film this and put it on the web for you to see. I'll please do a right, religious come on, sermon. Are we, anyway, uh, listen, we've- we've barely got any time now for Monkey News. Now a lot of people are probably, uh, unfamiliar with Monkey News because it's the first time we've been on Radio 2. Uh, Rick, how would you Summarise monkey news. I mean, obviously, Carl is fascinated by monkeys. Carl believes everything he reads. He goes on uh, um, uh, websites with that, that don't get uh, verified at all. Um, it's mostly nonsense, but he believes it because there's about monkeys doing incredible things. And and uh, Carl thinks that uh, you know monkeys can one day talk. He wants to live in the planet of the apes. Yeah, basically. that's his dream. He, he thinks the Flintstones is a documentary. And uh, and uh, Carl, uh, right. let's do monkey news. Right, do the jingle. Do the jingle live. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey. News. Right, well, I thought we'd go for sort of a, a Christmas feel, <sighs> right? So, uh, this one, it's, uh, it, it happened in Stockholm, right, a couple of years ago, around mm. the Christmas time. Mm. There's this little grotto, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Everything wow. he says is funny, yeah, isn't it? A, li a little grotto was set up and stuff, right? And, uh, it was getting busier and busier, right? This little grotto, there was only one in Stockholm, right? Q was massive and stuff. Well, that's not true. And this, uh... That's not true, there's no, not one... fine, just listen... But that's not, but that's not true. A couple of years ago, if you just said a thousand years ago... Yeah, it was, it was busy in that. And there was this bloke, there was this bloke who had a kid and the kid was saying, Dad, you know, um, can I go and see, you know, Father Christmas in the grotto? Yeah. And he was like, ah, oh, I don't want to join that queue, it's too big, right? <laughs> and, and loads <laughs> of the Father Christmases who was in the booth, they kept jacking it in because the queue was that big. What do you mean stressful. loads of Father Christmas in the booth? What Because booth? They, they got through loads in the, on, in the grotto, the Father Christmas and that, right? They couldn't act, act the, the pressure of the queues, the queues were massive for this grotto. This is rubbish! Right, so they come kept, on, come so on, they get, yeah. getting through like loads of Father Christmases. They just like, get walking People, they kept saying, I can't handle this, you'll have to get a new one in, right? Right, okay. Anyway, so this fella, right, the kid kept asking every day, can we go in there? He said, no, look, the queue's big. Anyway, one day, the queue was suddenly a lot shorter. Right, because they got a new little Father Christmas fella. I can't, I mean, I no, can't. right, in the right, grotto. Carl, 
if this Father Christmas turns out to be about so, three foot six and hairy. So anyway, right? So he's, he's going, come on then, we'll join the queue, right? So he joins the queue and he's, he's, you know, the queue's going down really fast. People are going in and out really quick. And he's going, how's, how's he managing to do this, right? And he sort of looks through the curtain, he can just see a little <laughs> slight thing. And he can see the bloke who's like dressed oh. up as Father Christmas. He's handing him out with his hands and his feet and that, <laughs> right? So, so they're going, ah, no, I'm look, if die. you don't. I'm going to die! You, so, oh God. anyway, so <laughs> please don't interrupt the news, Rick. Oh I want to hear the news. Just, just, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so he's queuing up, right? And he's going, oh, he's good, good on him. You know, he's got a new method of handing out the presents and that. <laughs> Whilst he's queuing there, his little fella selling uh, <gasps> chestnuts. So he thinks, oh, I'll buy some of them and, uh, you know, some it to munch on whilst I'm in the queue and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, so anyway, he's queuing up, he's eating the chestnuts. Comes to his turn, yeah. right? It's he absolute goes, rubbish. What, what are you on about? It's absolute rubbish. This, this, so, this, so, 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 cut a long story short. You reckon that they hired a chimp to hand out presents, for Christmas? And so he brought the chestnuts in, and so the monkey attacked him. Well, and he, he went off, right? And he's going, why is why is it all going mad? And you're absolutely talking fella, rubbish. There's a little fella that sat there with, uh, with like a little beard on and that. Yeah, yeah, and you're uh, talking rubbish. It, you're talking you're rubbish. Well, no, no, it's, it's not, not, it's not worth me carrying on then. No, no, it's, it's not, not worth me carrying on it. because again, it's absolutely well, rubbish. That didn't happen. There's no way they'd hire a chimp, well, and there's no way people would go. It. They, they noticed. They'd see well, it was a chimp. It, forget they'd it. say it was uh, absolute forget rubbish. Um, if you want to um, find out more about Carl, uh, what's the website address? Carl. BBC.co.uk. And we've drawn. A I've drawn a little picture that you can win of Carl, and it really sums him up. All right. See you later. All right. Next week, innit? Yeah. <laughs> Badly drawn boy on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Jones with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I'll tell you what, the stone is then. Oh, ho, ho. this Thursday, this Thursday at the Grosvenor House Hotel. Yeah. Everyone in radio, anyone has uh, entered their show in different categories, saying, "Oh, you know, they get, they get it down to." You know, winners uh, this year included the brilliant Dominic Mohan, former uh, showbiz editor of the Sun. Uh, lots of lot lots of people won. Lots of people won. Lots of people won gold. Lots of people won silver. Lots of people won bronze. We didn't get a sausage. <laughs> Nothing. This show was deemed not not worthy of anything. I mean, not not a look in. The panel looked at it and said, "Well, no, definitely this is not. not radio. Didn't get a, didn't get a vote. See, that and that annoys me on so many levels. Let me let me tell you one. Right, I've never complained about losing an award. Okay, ever. Yeah, in, mainly in TV. I know we've won a lot, but. We've been beaten a couple of, beaten by Peter Kay. Good luck to him. He's brilliant. Um, uh, beaten by Phoenix Knights in sitcom. A lot of people like that more than the Oscars, uh, and vice versa, right? Uh, n no qualms. But the shoddy shite that I heard that night beating us, I was furious. I don't understand. There's, there's people, regional, it sounds like hospital radio, right? They, I mean, I shouldn't even be on XFM. I thought, I, you know, it, it, it's beneath me. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, give them a hand, right? Let's show them. And I want to know who the panel was as well. I, I do not believe it. Uh, how can they di- um, I was looking back over the, some of the shows, right, before I go to Carl, and I've just done a little excerpt of, you know, a trailer of what we, what we do, what we're about, and I don't know how the panel could overlook- play a bit, Carl, please. Shaking her muff, minge, <laughs> and tits around does not make her a hoe, then what does? These kids at school with big heads. Carl, what are you talking about? Shut- Oh, well, my name is Holy Fuck. Right, there's yeah. this monkey that, uh, was on a train station. Right. What, you, what if you mean cock to mean penis? <laughs> but it was my Down Syndrome son. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> so we've still got monkey news coming up. <laughs> You're an idiot! You know what I mean? That's, to me, quality broadcasting. I don't know how they can say that isn't worthy. That's what we sent in <laughs> to the Sony people. <laughs> they listened to that. How they didn't think that was dynamite <laughs> stuff. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about this since Thursday, because I've been a little bit uh, down in the dumps. Yeah. What I think it is, is that with the radio, with the TV show, the TV stuff we've done, Rick, we put a lot of work into that. Yeah. We, we get the script, we got the script, yeah, we, yeah. we spend a lot of time on it. What this show is about, it's very much about spontaneity, it's about our personalities, and I don't think we're ever gonna win an award for our personalities. <laughs> I think that's where we're going Do you know on. what I think? I think that when we're together, we're with the auteurs of The Office and, you know, and, uh, we're strong on it, and we're just two, and we write it, we direct it, yeah. we, you know, we, we cast it, we, 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 we even worry about the font and stuff on the, you know, we do everything. <laughs> There's a weak link in our midst, I well, think. On the radio show? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah, well, yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to think what the common factor is, because on the um, award-winning TV show, well, it's just you and I. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll say, well, can we play a record, and uh, let me think about this, because there must be some, there must be something. There's got to be a factor. That isn't in the office that's in this, that means that the office 
is award winning and this is a pile of shite. Brown Sugar by uh, the Rolling Stones on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with Steve Merchant. And with us, um, Carl, Carl Pilkington, the third, third member of this, um, team. Mm. Team. We and, me and you do the office. Award winning. Yeah, and me, us three do this, do this show. No awards. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Carl, what, what are your thoughts? What do you think's wrong with the show? Why do you think the panel listened to our show and said that is awful, it's not actually a radio show? Well, what? can I just point out, so many people may not realise that last year we won a bronze, so we've actually gone down, we've actually slid off the list all yeah. entirely. I know, but I mean, that, that, yeah, but Carl wasn't really as involved last well, year. Well, I remember last, last year, you, it was very much, you yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, 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 I mean, we just, we just started out bronze. on it, yeah, so I mean, so you can't really, you can't really compare. Hold on, though. Well, well, well interesting, interesting. What do you think, Carl? What, what do you think the reason thoughts, is? Thoughts, Carl? Any thoughts? I see what you're getting at, right? But you're not stupid. But when I put the compilation together, yeah. I made sure that it was mainly you two. Mm. Mm. So don't don't be uh, don't be doing that. Don't be playing that game. So you, oh, so you put the compilation together? Yeah. Right again. Ah, right. Interesting because we were we, involved with we that. We usually do the office, edit the office, and everything. We have the final cut on the office. So you, oh, I see. So yeah, you. But, Oh, so right, no, 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 so you're the you had your fingers all over it. Interesting. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. So, oh, well, um, uh, that, so the tape was the smoking gun, and whose fingerprints were on it? Carl Pilkington's, interesting. Yeah. That's interesting, we didn't get a sausage. Mm. But, you know, uh, do you know what, uh, seriously though, you know, you- Well, I don't, I mean, seriously, it is his fault. <laughs> I know, but I mean, we, we, it's our fault as well, because we should have known better, right? But- Than to employ him, yeah. But, um, I actually think it's a slap in the face. I mm. want to know the panel was. A lot of Sony are thinking, just and it out to the same old people. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? Every clip they played was a funny phone call. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And so I'm Did actually. Did we send any of our funny phone calls in? So if anyone, if anyone, <laughs> if anyone cares, I think well, I, th I, th I think we should knock it on the head as a oh, protest yeah. against Sony. And I say, I've never complained before about legal, but I mean this one. <laughs> Don't know what they, don't know what they think. I want, I w or I want someone on the panel, it was entertainment, I want someone on the panel to phone up and say why they think this show is rubbish. Well, I'll, I'll apologise. Well, I'll not apologise. If they stand by the, if they tell me why, you know, because, you know, listening to that, that clip there, I can't see anything wrong with that as, no, sure. as sort of, you know, daytime radio. It's interesting, I mean, I, I don't think, um, our number one fan, Dickie Anderson, Richard Anders, was, uh, on the, on the panel, although he here has emailed in. He's got a couple of thoughts as to maybe why we What win. is Dickers doing, man? Uh, Dickers says, commiserations on not winning a Sony. I can't believe you didn't win, naturally. Oh. I mean, apart from your show's obvious lack of quality and effort, having a monkey for a producer, offering the biggest load of tat as competition prizes, <laughs> saying hairy Chinese kid 48 times every show, <laughs> rockbusters, not bothering to turn up for weeks on end, only having three listeners, introducing the comedy characters Camp David Har Harry Fook, which I think he spelt wrong there, yeah. Stephen Merchant, I'm not a character. <laughs> Apart from insulting every race, religion, and sexual orientation, bickering like schoolgirls, we and haven't done everyone history. yet. We have not insulted everyone yet. We, there's loads to go. Despite the fact you generally bring misery into the lives of anyone who listens, I thought you were surefire winners. Better luck next year. Wow. I mean, a couple of constructive, you know, criticisms there, but generally, I no. still can't nail it. Was he on the panel? Well, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, he's a fan, so. Yeah. Well, no, he, he's clearly a fan. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he, love, he obviously loves the show. He's because he's. I mean, he has hit the nail on the head. Oh. Which. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. what should we do? Sh should we give up or should we try harder? That, that's always my dilemma in sure. life. Sure, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've always gone for the first one. Give up? Yeah, yeah why, yeah, why yeah, bother? Yeah. yeah. If they, if they can't see, just give, just give us the award. And yeah. then worry about it later and we won't let them down. Yeah. Now they've got, they've got blood on their hands. Mm. We're gonna, yeah. what should we do? To give a month, couple of months notice? I think so. Okay, well, there you yeah, go. I mean, seriously, I mean, I, because oh, I'm, I think- Oh, well, Andy's here, I'm not being wacky now, um, we haven't told Andrew, but- uh, I I'll, think I'll, we've won our course with this show. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's, okay, we'll give it a month, and it's because the Sonys yeah. didn't give us anything. Play a record. Yeah. There you well, go. Well, you gotta do a bit longer than that. No, we haven't. Got to give a month's notice. No, you gotta work till about September, if you're gonna- No, we haven't. No. No, we can give a month's notice. We, you know, whatever, they give the money back or something. We, we, Why we, well, well, you give your money back. Yeah, I know. What are you, what are you gonna spend your 80 quid on? <laughs> True. By the way, Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. So, a few more shows. And I, I, I have Sony are happy. Mm. They should encourage, you know, we've only been radio, you know, a couple of years. Exactly. Trying. They should encourage young, ta you encourage young talent yeah. like you. Yeah. Instead of giving it to Radio 1 and Radio 2 mm. and... 
the old war horses. We just had a quick email, I wonder if you could answer this, it's James from NWL. He says, Ricky, is Carl gonna be on this week's show? Please let me know, as I may listen if he's not. <laughs> Um, sadly, oh, he is here. I mean, dear. people are already turning against you, Carl, because they've seen what's happened. Yeah. I think they've probably realised that we've I think we gave him too much. Up. I think, exactly, I think we've got a spoiled sort of kid in our hands. It's sort of like, you know, we, we knew, we knew how bad he was, but we were trying to sort of bring him out of his shell a little bit. Yeah. Encourage, you've got to encourage sort of, um, children like Carl. Well, yeah, exactly. To exactly. sort of yeah. fend for themselves. Mm. Um, but, uh, I like the fact that Dickie Anderson had that wonderful, Rant. It, I mean, it was an articulate email. It was quite long, and he must have typed it immediately. I'm thinking because he's a fan of the show and he, he thinks I'm a you know a genius. We need a PA, sure, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon he'd come and work for us? Um, well, he can't be any worse than what we've already got. <laughs> I don't um, know. You know. So there you go. Then we're giving up. We're giving up radio. We're going to concentrate on television. Carl's going to probably go back to what your little. Just doing your well, sound. The thing I won a silver for at the Sony's. Funny that, mm. isn't it? Oh, you won a silver, did you? I got a silver, yeah. Oh, for yeah. Doing, what was that for, for doing the proper job that I do here in the week? Well, oh, no, yeah. it's two of you for a start. Yeah. Well, it's three of us. Can I even get a bronze? Now, who's the weak link? <laughs> right? <laughs> well. A bit weird, isn't it? Let's get, let's look, let's get, let's not argue. We haven't got many shows to do. I do, I, uh, I, oh, alright. I was shopping with Carl. Uh, don't give anything away that I bought, right? Because it, you know, but, I've got to tell you something. Um, I, uh, we went into this one shop. I didn't get anything from it, so I can talk about this, uh, for, for looking for, for a present for my girlfriend, Jane. And that was a beautiful shop in St. James's. They're all beautiful around there. And, uh, it was uh, this shop of, uh, sort of, a uh, kind of classic sort of antiquities, and it was, uh, things that, uh, this guy, you had to ring a bell for the bloke to come down. Carl was, b was just so confused about that. He's used to someone standing there going, can I help you? Yeah. What size do you want? Right, and he came down and he, he, he loved his stuff. He absolutely loved uh, his stuff. And what sort of stuff was it? Uh, it was sort of stuff that he'd, um, you know, uh, got from it's sort of like churches. It, it wasn't was old It was stuff carvings. Too. It was from the 16th and 17th yeah. century old. of saints, right? And I, and I said, this is beautiful. And I was talking to him. I said, what's this news going on? Oh, that's so and so. I was going, oh, that's wonderful. Look at that, right? And I overheard Carl trying to make conversation. He said to this guy, who's so proud of this stuff, and it's, it's, you know, ah, oh, at 16th century, 17th century, he went, what's the newest thing you've got in here? Brilliant. And the bloke went, um, oh, we've got a, a statue, I think. For, from the, from the 60s of then, and he went, all right. He went, when was the last time you got something in? Bloke went, uh, we get something in every day. And afterwards I said, why were you asking those questions? He was going, well, I just, it always confused me with antiques. What happens when they sell that out? They're not making any more. <laughs> I just thought it was a, a sort of good bu business to get into, that's all. Do you know what I mean? Why? Like, they'll always be well, antiques, Well, not. you said it yourself, the place wasn't buzzing, was it? <laughs> <laughs> He had to pop down. He couldn't even be bothered sort of sat in the shop waiting for a customer because probably days go by <laughs> when nothing's happening. <laughs> Doesn't it? For you to ring the bell to wake him up to say, oh, I'll come and look at this old stuff. Forget it. You know what I mean? So you've got all your Christmas shopping then, Carl. You, you, you're bang up today. You don't. Uh, yeah, I've sorted, sorted, you know, most stuff out. But here's one for you, right? Here's a little question. Go on. Right, I've, I've finished a job, right, where I've been working somewhere for like about ten years. You can yeah. say it. No, no, I know. XFM, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been where we met. It's yeah, it was, yeah, it was a good little place to work yeah. and everything, but I've had enough. Yeah. You know I mean, after ten years. You're, mo you're moving on. We've, yeah, we've got, got another world. We've got to move on, haven't you? You've got to, you know, try We're on radio out, too. Right? Yeah, no, it's good. Right, so yeah. you're moving on, yeah. Right. And, uh, so, th so they gave me a present, right? They sort of said to me, what do you want? Yeah. You've done ten years. Tell us what gift you want and we'll sort you out. Right? Yeah. So I said, oh, brilliant, yeah. So, I knew Suzanne, my girlfriend, wanted a camera. No. Right? What? Okay. So, they got me a camera, they wrapped it up and they, you know, they, 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 like my leading dude, they said open it and I go, no, I don't want to open it, no, what, what's going on? So well, I'm gonna give it to Suzanne for Christmas. No. That's- Now, what- why That's is a disgrace. It, but why is it though? You can't, you, because it's- It doesn't matter, because I could have had a gift for myself and I didn't, I decided- You can't- No, 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 no! That's- that's second hand. That's- It's, it's not second hand, it, it hasn't been used, I haven't even opened it. But surely no. the point about g buying a gift for your girlfriend is that you've gone in the shop and done it. It's, there's a sentimental it's attachment. It's not about that. It's it about is though. It is, no, it is about that. It's no, it is about. Uh, it's about. It it's about them getting what so they want. So if you're walking down the street and you saw a camera and it was brand new and you went, "Oh yeah, Suzanne, happy Christmas," 
Uh, so are you going to tell her it was a gift? Well, no, you? she's at work today, so she doesn't need to know. So you're not even going to tell her. No. Point. So you've got deceit as well as meanness. It doesn't matter, does it? She's got what That's she wanted. She's like, well, okay. I want to get the people on the text. Do you think that Carl's in the right? Eighty-eight two ninety-one. Eighty-eight two ninety-one. It should Carl be giving a gift to his girlfriend, which he's passing she's off? She's getting as anyway. his own present. You, oh, wait a minute, wait. It doesn't uh, matter what the. You cannot. The thing is, it would be okay if you were giving it to a mate or something. But I'd still tell them. I'd even say, look, I didn't, I didn't pay for this, but I know you wanted a camera. Mm. But you're not going to tell her, so she's gonna think you spent 700 quid or something. Well, on a, 250. On <laughs> he's, not even, he's not even a 700 pound free camera. <laughs> <laughs> she, 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 he won't, he won't, she'll, she'll never think that uh, I spent 700 quid on her. That is brilliant. Well, it's an improvement on last year. Do you remember what you got in last year? I'd rather he told us. Come on. What did you get, what did you get your partner, your life partner- Your last lover. Year, your last year for Christmas. How long have you been with her at first? Um, 11 years. 11 years. What did you get her last year for Christmas? Some condoms. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's unbelievable. Bang up two packets. Yeah, no, no, you bought her a big bumper packet of condoms from Boots or something, and you got one mm. packet free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're all, they're all been used. <laughs> Walk out to Winter, as Tech Camera, before that The Pretenders, uh, it's Ricky Gervais's show, but I'm here, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington's here. Mm -hmm. Christmas Eve, Radio 2, Merry Christmas. Producer just came in and said, oh, can you give out the, uh, the web address, um, bbc.co.uk forward slash radio 2. I went, yeah, why? He said, uh, well, just in case people want to listen to this show again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's got a sense of humour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as if. So, Carl, we've had loads and loads of emails. We should just, if, in case you just tuned in, uh, Carl received a leaving gift of a digital camera, uh, when he was leaving a job, and he's not even unwrapped it, he's giving it straight to his girlfriend for tomorrow, which, I think Ricky and I Andy's not going to tell her it was free. Andy thinks there's it nothing wasn't free. It wasn't free. It was ten years of my life. I've had to, had to do that. Yeah, and you've been eleven with us. Think what she's gone through. She's had eleven years right. of her life. Right. Wow. You know, it was yeah. Uh, Carl would have been okay if he'd have kept quiet. Idiot. Dave in Salford. Cheers. He's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's right. It's a disgrace. He has dishonoured his former employer and his girlfriend from Graham and Lena. That's a good point. It's an insult to the people that were there. They got you something they thought they really liked. They really went out and thought about it. They wrapped it up. You didn't yeah. even unwrap it in front. Because you couldn't be bothered to wrap it again even. You could have unwrapped it. Do you know, do you know what, um, uh, I, I, I really hope's happened? That before they gave it to you, they took pictures of their genitals in the toilet <laughs> as a little, little way. So your girlfriend's gonna get that and get lo loads and loads and loads of pictures of offal from people who work at XFM. That what? would be the the best Christmas gift for me. What if there's a note or something inside that they've all write, written and signed to Carl? Look, he's thinking about that. Look, that is the first time he's ever <laughs> thought of that. Look at his head. Look at his Christian head. Christian Hull says, I think Carl's heart is in the right place. Don't know about his brain, though. Good point. A fair point. Uh, there's one here. Um, I once got a frozen box of fish my husband found whilst working in a chip shop. Carl's <laughs> girlfriend should be grateful. Yeah, I suppose so. But it, I mean, it, it's, it's staggering. It's one from Jane. It says, better his girlfriend has the camera as it looks like he hasn't got opposable thumbs. <laughs> and that's people having a dig. They don't even know you. But you know, you know why I'm not a sort of big fan of sort of Christmas and buying presents and that anyway? Because it's, I've had bad experiences in the past. When like you know, buying buying stuff for people. Go on. Um, you know, like when when I was a kid and that, right? Yeah. And you know, you you put a lot of thought into buying presents, don't you, when you're a kid? Because you know you haven't got that much money to. How old are we talking? Um, about eight. Right. Okay. Yeah. About eight. Right. So you, so you look like you did, but you had hair, I assume. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> so eight years old, and that I'm putting a bit of planning into it, thinking, oh, you know, what does, what, what will my man want? Yeah. Right? Now, my mum's a big fan of, uh, gnomes. <laughs> right, right, obviously. Like, like gnomes. Gnomes. <laughs> she must and, be pleased how you turned out. And fairies and stuff like that, right? Little elves and all that stuff, right? Sure. So I thought, right, I'll look for something that's, that's a bit gnomish. Right. <laughs> and there was you a shop- You got a Noel Edmonds. There was this, there was this, <laughs> there was this shop, sort of, down the road that, um, sort of sold a lot of tat, right? Oh, yeah. good. Um, <laughs> sort of every- you know, one of them shops where it, everything's quite cheap, it's, sort of, they sell things individually that shouldn't be, like toilet rolls and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that sort of thing. They used to put everything's a pound. Now they're selling that everything's 99p. Yeah. Because a pound wasn't cheap enough. They're undercutting the pound yeah, job. Yeah. Right. yeah. Go on. So anyway, so I had a look in there thinking, right, let's have a look, see if they've got any gnomes and that. And the closest thing they had, right, was, uh, this, this figure that's called, uh, a Victoria Plum. <laughs> right. Victoria Plum, right? Yeah, it's like a little- No, woman. Victoria Plum. Right, it's, get it right. It's like, uh, it's like a woman gnome. 
right? Okay. So I thought I should love that, right? So uh, save that. I think it was about two quid, right? Yeah. yeah. Invest in one of them, take it home and well yeah. shuffle with myself and that, wrapping it up, pop it under the tree, think I can't wait to see her face light up when she sees this. Uh. Yeah. Anyway, do you know like when you're a kid, I, I bought that like two weeks before Christmas. Sure. Right? And do you know when you're sort of excited and you want to give someone a present earlier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I sort of took my mum into this shop, right, and we're just walking about and the Victoria Plum was sort of there on the shelf and I said to her, uh, I said, oh, so look at that up there, do you like that? She said, no, it's bloody horrible, right? Uh, uh, Oh. oh, so this is too late. It's too late to go back. You spent it's, it's all your wrapped. money. It's, money spent. It's wrapped. It's under the tree, right? <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, I can't believe it. So I said, no, that you know, made sure she's looking at the right thing. So no, that that little no woman. Yeah, it's horrible. Oh no. Yeah. Right. Oh god. Christmas Day comes. Right. I yeah. open my stuff. Right. <laughs> she's this about is to really open hers. Sad. Her, this is like Dickens. She opened. <laughs> <laughs> she opened hers and that, and she went, "Oh, that's that's lovely." That I said, "No, uh, no don't, don't give don't give me that." Do you know what I mean? You said she, you said it was she horrible. She, you was, said a, it, you she was a liar. Yeah, for pretending for not wanting to hurt your feelings. She was a liar, and that's you know that's that's why, you know. So but things have moved on. What are you on about? Yeah, but you don't forget, do you? Don't I don't- I still don't know how this justifies you not buying your girlfriend of eleven years an actual gift. Although that was quite touching. Yeah. Play a Christmas song, I'm, I'm welling up. <laughs> to be fair though, this- this show is, is- I think it's more to do with the fact that you talk on this show that has brought us down. Right, I haven't said anything hardly today. No, well this is an award-winning show, potentially. <laughs> we'll add this one in for yeah. next year. <laughs> oh. If you could just keep shtum, we might have a chance. Alright. Well, coming up, right. Carl. Let's put it behind us. Okay. Let's draw a line under it. Um. We had a meeting yesterday. We thought we better, you know, for the last few shows, plan it a little bit. Mm. And me and Steve came up with a great idea. We're going to offer Carl money to do stuff. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's the quality of the ideas on this. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, I've brought some money in. There's a lot of little stuff because we had him. We had him showering with our mate Johnny for a thousand pounds yesterday. Yeah. We, we just got into a discussion, and then one of us suggested that how much would it cost us <laughs> to pay you, Carl, to have a shower with another man? Not. And there's nothing going, going on. No. No. There's nothing going on. You just. You're just in a shower, normal shower. You're just washing each washing each other. Having. Uh, no, not each other. Just yeah. yourselves. You're just, you're just having a chat. Yeah. Right, washing yourselves. Yeah. Having a shower. Yeah. But and it's a we, regular shower in a, in a regular yeah. house. It's not a shower in a swimming pool. And he went fine. He got we got he got a thousand pounds out of it. He wouldn't do nine hundred. A thousand pounds. But then we said, and we'll have to watch to make sure you do it. Yeah. And he went, no, that's went weird. So, but wh why? What's the, was, but this is what annoys me though, right? The whole idea of oh, what would you do, right? So I bet you missed out there when what? we started this chat saying, oh, I wonder what you do for money. It did start off with, would you rub Dale Winton's neck? <laughs> would you give Dale Winton a massage for twenty what? quid? No, we, but we, yeah, but it's you have to say no. Five hundred. You could, you got. We're trying to find out what your price is. What price, Carl? Is the name of the show. So, so you would you give um uh, uh Dale Winton just? A, he's got a knot. He's got a bit of a knot. He's stressed. He's been doing supermarket sweep and he's furious. One of the contestants was answering back, calling him names, and he's got he's got all knots in his neck. You just put your th just give him a little bit of a. You know, five minutes. <laughs> a little neck massage. How much would you do that for? He's naked and it's just a little neck massage. Nothing, there's nothing going on. It's like so today you're oh, naked as well. Naked. But it's I'm just the two of you naked, that giving him a little massage. No, no, seriously. Uh, would you, would you give him? Um, okay. Would you, would you give me a foot massage? For how much? Well, that, well, that's, that's, that's what's your price. Much. And what are the rules, though? Can I wear gloves? No, no, no. Just, just, just uh, you know. Let's start off simple. Would you take off my shoes and socks? Uh, for, for, I'd do it for, like, fifty quid. There's, you've got- Okay, that's okay, no, right, twenty quid to take off one shoe and one sock, but like you mean it. You just take the shoe off, you go, uh, and as you're putting down my sock, you pull the sock down slowly, you look me in the eyes and go, what lovely ankles. <laughs> Seriously, how much? Uh, what price? Uh, twenty quid a foot. Twenty quid a foot. That's got so, to be worth it. So twenty quid, you will take off my. Um, we'll put on some soft music, <laughs> right? <laughs> do, 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 no, that I, don't, I don't need it today. That's that's what I was saying to you yesterday. You always do. You know it. what I mean? No, you, you don't. At the Everyone moment, I'm quite happy. Give it to a homeless person. Give it to a charity. Well, Donate get it to in there. Well, wait, wait, are you still going to shower with Johnny for a thousand pounds? Not now, because you said, and me and Steve are just going to stand in the corner and, and watch. Well, we've got to make sure you do it. You might go in there and just like wet your hair and come out, pay Johnny five hundred quid, and go. Yeah, we had a shower. How will we know? Sorry, I'm quite interested about the shoe and sock. <laughs> I'm, I'm back to the. I'm back to the shower. 
You just have to wash yourselves. Now, we have to inspect that it's really clean because we want you to wash certain parts really. Right, well, wh why have you both got to be in there then? Well, no, just one of us. Can we just take? I mean, we, yeah. Or, or can, can Steve film it? <laughs> <laughs> as, as evidence, just as evidence. Or we leave, I tell you what, we leave a TV camera in there. We know the rest of being in there. Then we can just watch the video. Are you a couple of enders? Are you a couple of enders? No. No. <laughs> can we can we discuss further the uh, taking of the shoe and the sock? Because uh, I think there's twenty pounds. In, I, I'm willing to pay twenty pounds to see that. See, a little surprise for you there. That's uh, uh Coldplay here. They're live through there. Thanks. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, uh. Yeah, brilliant. Do you wanna- do you wanna say a few words? Do you wanna yeah, say Yeah, no, something? I'll have a quick word with Chris. Uh, lead singer Chris. Chris, good to have you here. Hello. <laughs> and, um, um, how's it going with Gwyneth Paltrow? Brilliant, yes. yes. She's uh, a lovely lady. Yeah, no, I thought so, yeah. I saw her in Shakespeare in Love. She's good she in good. that, yeah, isn't she? If you would pass that on to her, just yeah, say well, I'm yeah. Um, um, it's going alright. You gonna get married to her? Yeah, so I'm- I marry either her or that Julia Roberts good. woman. Yeah, either one is good. Yeah. Um, um, but I know- I've, I know I've, interest- I know you're on holiday at the moment in yeah. Hawaii. I read in the no, paper today. No, no. You're actually here. I'm actually here. <laughs> okay. Um, got to uh, go now, got to go. Alright, just a couple of quick- See you later, Chris. Yes, see you, Ricky. So that's the sort of guests. That's the caliber of guests. We're just trying to up Just things. like Jonathan Ross. We've got guests like Jonathan Ross. That's Coldplay just popped in. Just popped so, in. So if you're the Sony people listening, you brilliant. Wanna... And we've still got Carl to take off my sock for 20 quid, okay? Let's do it now. Let's just get it over with and do it now. Come on, Carl. Let's get our cash out then, Nick. There's 10 pounds right no, there. No, 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 you don't owe him because he owes you 10, so I just have to pay him 10. Okay. Yeah. So go on then. Just not, take. Not whilst Coldplay are here. <laughs> <laughs> They- they've had to shoot off. <laughs> Come well, on. I don't wanna do it. Let's why not? Tell me what- Because we've been on now for half an hour. Okay, well, okay, well, at the end of this, why won't you do it? It's ridiculous. You won't have a shower, you won't take my shoes and socks off, you won't do anything. You won't uh, give Dale wouldn't rub down. What will you do, for Christ's sake? I don't wanna- I don't wanna do it. Secondly, my mum and dad are, are like- I've heard about how well I'm doing in London. Yeah. Right? They've heard about, you know, the Sony Awards and that. They're yeah. talking to the mates, they're saying Carl's doing well for himself. Yeah. Let's have a listen to him on Sky. Yeah. They're tuning in, I'm taking off socks for money. <laughs> That'll be the first time that anyone in your family has actually made, you know, money without stealing, thieving, yeah. or it's an honest, some kind of it's well, Let's just do it quick then, because it's, it's money. getting on my nerves. <laughs> it's actually annoying. Excellent. Excellent, alright. Yeah, well, give me the money, Steve. No, well, he's just taking a tenner off me. Right, okay. Okay. Let's go like that. You've got to do it properly, you really don't say that. You've got to do it properly. No, you've got to do it properly. Right, just gently, I can't see what's happening. Just pretend I'm working on the shop, there's nothing normal. Come on, just get it done. What's that? What's whistling? What's a whistling? <laughs> right. Okay, now do it properly, gently. Yes. <laughs> it's a sweaty trainer, which just makes right, it all the more. Just right. gently caress it, caress it. <laughs> Someone watching in the office. Caress it there. Don't just <laughs> gently ease the shop. Off, just right. off. Just right. like working on shoe shop. There's nothing. <laughs> Nothing weird about it. Just gently yeah, ease it on. Right. I'm the best. I'm the best. Alright, now it's just, right, no, just come on, stop. gently do it. Just Don't just, just rip it off. Yeah. Yeah. Slowly, slowly well, tease it. <laughs> tease it. Oh my god! I don't like this! I just wanted to tell her that wasn't enjoyable. Now, now wait a minute, you've got to say. <laughs> so, you've got to say about my ankle. So you've got lovely toes and I love your ankle. You've got nice toes and that. <laughs> Say it properly. I don't like it anymore. Do it. And you've got right. to say. You've got to. You've got to say for the tenor. Otherwise, oh, you're taking it back. You've got. got to say what lovely ankles you've got, but in a sweet, seductive voice. Right. Oh. Right. You got nice ankles. <laughs> that is not how you would seduce a woman. Like you that. would not seduce a woman like that, Carl. Oh, Susan. I don't. Know. <laughs> Susan. I don't. Know. Imagine that. I don't know. I don't feel good about Leave it. Leave it off, because I want to see if we can get him to massage your toes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know what's worse. I, d I mean, I didn't like the feeling much. That wasn't very nice because it was all it was all rough. And I, I you know, and he's a, he's a skinhead and he's playing on the feet. And then I thought, oh, I've degraded him. So I don't know what I feel worse about. I'll g you can keep the tenor that you owe me if you massage his toes. No, I'm not doing that. No, Why no, not? no we paid him. He's done it. Yeah, the, the shoes are back on. We're with some else next week. Some else next week. Okay. If you'd like to Carl to humiliate himself for money, email in. Well, Suzanne was surprised that I was like, last night I told her about it. And I said, oh, why did you do that? I don't feel, I don't know what I feel now. I, that's not good. I don't know, that's not good, is it? And she just said, well, you know, uh, you don't like <laughs> chucking money away and that. And it was funny because we got talking about, uh, when, when we bought our first flat in Manchester, right? Uh, I bought a, <laughs> I bought a bed, right, I didn't have much money, and uh, what annoyed me is, I bought the bed and it turned up, and I said, where's the mattress? 
And they said, well, you don't get, you don't get a mattress with a bed, you gotta buy that separately. And I was like, well, that's not a bed then, <laughs> right? So I didn't have any more money. <laughs> Suzanne's at work, so I thought, well, I don't want to stress her out at work and that, because mm. I know we haven't got a mattress for the bed. I had a word with my dad, right? He knew a mate who had one in the back of a van, right? He said, I'll have a word with him, he'll let you have it. Got the van, brought it round, stunk a diesel and that, but I thought, <laughs> well, it's, it's free, <laughs> it'll do. Yeah. <laughs> they brought it up, they stuck it in the spare room, <laughs> Suzanne got home, she looked at the bed, she said, that looks alright, she wears the mattress, so it's in the next, next room, but I thought I won't tell her because sure. she won't like the idea. She went in, just the room stunk of like petrol fumes <laughs> and that, yeah. she said, what, what's going on? <laughs> I said, well, it's, a mattress didn't come with a bed, so I've sorted you one out, I've got this off my dad, <laughs> and we didn't have one night on it. She said, get rid of it. Yeah. I had to go and ditch it. I don't know what she was thinking. One of your father's friends is driving around in a van with a mattress in the back. <laughs> yeah. Was he a serial killer? <laughs> I mean... And she didn't want to sleep on it. Let's have some silence of the lamb. What kind of a cheapskate is she? What kind of a woman is she? That she won't sleep on a mattress that has been in the back of a transit van. Oh, yeah, covered, like in, covered in petrol, diesel, probably urine, and Christ <laughs> knows what else. Yeah. Oh. So, you know, would you swap pants with Steve for 50 quid now? You don't have to look at him, you go in the toilet, he, ta he takes his pants off in the toilet, leaves them there, you go in, <laughs> right, you come out with your trousers on, you go in, right, take your pants off, put his pants on and leave your pants in the toilet, come out, you got his pants on, he goes in there, you come out and you swap pants, at the end of the show you put it back. How much? When you say pants, what do you mean? Just Jeans. underpants, underpants. No, I'm not doing underpants. Why? Why not? Seriously, these were fresh on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, but, but for I the mean, bastards, for the uh, what's the service? Do you know what I mean? But I mean, it's the the price. It's gonna be more than twenty quid. It's gonna be more than twenty quid. It's gonna be it's gonna be like eighty quid upwards, I think. No, clean on today. They yeah. were clean on today in their boxes. It's as bad for him as you. Don't, don't remember that. Thanks for that. Fifty quid. Really? Play record. No, hang on. You just said you'll give me fifty quid. If you go and swap pants. I don't know what's in it for me, I don't know why I'm doing this. It started off as torturing Carl, but not only am I out of pocket, I don't actually want you two to swap pants or touch my ankles. Well, Steve isn't I don't know what no. I've done. This is, I, 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 I'm the victim here. I've paid out and I don't even like it. Play a record, I want to think about this. What would happen? Right, here's, here's another question. This is one that I chuck out to kids as well. We were talking about education, teaching kids stuff. Sure. What would happen, right? Uh, we ruin this world, right? goes wrong and that, right, they shut it down. They go, we're moving. We go to another planet. It's as simple as that yeah. in his world. It's as simple as that. We can't go to, uh, Mars because it's full of stuff that used to be in Dixon's. It's like a tip. Yeah. It's a nightmare. <laughs> so we can't go there, we go somewhere else. Something that I've always wondered about, if we do that, do we start New Year's or do we carry on, what, do you know what I mean, do we say, oh, it's still 2006, or do we go, oh, it's world, it's world new, whatever, yeah. new world. That is definitely the first priority. It's know. year one. Right, we've sorted that out. Right, now- Well, it depends, doesn't it? Once Cause you- Because right. a year might not be the same on this planet. D we'd sort that out, right? We'd sort out what, what year it is and that. Well, no, no, um, no, no, what I'm saying is, we, we'd have to start again anyway because the planet might not take one year as we know it to, to go around the sun. It might not take a day to turn. A day is, is a day because that's how long it takes Yeah, for but we'd have to carry on, as we know, because we don't want to start doing longer days and that, otherwise it'll just kick off and say, this is rubbish, this new world, what are you doing? No! I'm we doing wouldn't a 20 have a choice. hour day. We wouldn't have a choice. A day is how long it takes no, the planet to, to, a day to is, turn, a day and is, a year is how long it takes that planet to go around no, but, the sun But once. a day is man-made, really. There's places in the world where they're working in the dark, isn't they, in Iceland and that. But they don't go, well, it's dark all the time, so I'll stay in bed. Well, no, but there's still a day. It's still 24 hours in a day in Iceland. Yeah, but that's, we only work by that clock because that's what people use at the moment when they go, what time is it? You go, oh, it's 20 past No, no, no. We use that, that, because that's how long it takes the planet we're on to, 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 I, to I've turn. never worried about it like that. I've just always Well, no, I'm telling you, well, that's because you weren't asked to get involved when they came up with the idea. I'm telling you, that's what a day is. It's yeah. how long it takes your planet to, to, yeah. what would you mean? The way that, what? No, I'm, I'm just saying that's fine and everything, but if when I was born people said there's 26 hours in a day, I'd go, fair enough. I'm not going to argue. I'm well, not yeah, gonna, we could have I'm made that by long an hour is, yeah, we could have made hours shorter and get 26 Well, in. they're saying they're going to do that. Because, well, no, because, they're not. No, they are, because no, there's so not. many people in the world. Yeah. This is what I was talking about before. They've got to create more jobs. The only way to have more jobs, keep shops open, take on more people, 
Everyone's happy. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> right. Say if there's 28 hours in a day. Yeah, it'd still be 24 hours long as we used to know it. No, you'd have, you'd have like, oh, what time is it? Oh, it's, it's like 20 past, uh, 25 or whatever. <laughs> well, you're, you're not making any sense at all. No, I'm just saying- The Earth would still take 24 hours as we know it now. It, forget it. <laughs> Hang on a minute, I want, uh, there's more interesting territory here. Don't forget, our sleep patterns have evolved on a day. The reason we sort of like go to sleep at night and have about eight, ten hours sleep is because that's our evolution. No, but that's only, yeah, that's just because what that's what we've got used to, isn't it? Yeah. You look at a sloth, that's asleep all the time. It's doing yeah, what it wants. Yeah, but it evolved differently, didn't it? Right, you can't <laughs> get away. You're not getting away with this anymore. <laughs> if you want to live now, join in with us. Well, it's that time again. Uh, it's the feature that the world is saying could rival Monkey News one day. Ready? Oh, what's he written today? What, well, Carl's diary? You didn't yeah. explain what it was. Sunday, got up. Sunny day, so I went for a walk in the park. There was a bloke walking down the street who was whistling. Uh, some kind of annoying tune. He seemed quite happy with himself. Do people only whistle when they're happy? I don't whistle very much. It's a good point. I, I'm whistling is so inane to me, but yeah, but, but, it's all like going. I'm 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 content. I'm. Uh, it it really is that thing that if they go, uh, you go. Well, um, Mr. Meadows, I'm afraid uh, I've got some bad news. Not only has your wife died, but you've lost the house. Thanks, Doctor. Won't happen. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't like whistle it, when yeah. you're sad. The other place you hear, it, of course, is uh, changing rooms, and that's men going. I'm whistling, so I'm not looking at your cock. <laughs> How could I be? I'm concentrating on whistling. <laughs> the lake was frozen over where I was walking. The ducks looked worried. <laughs> they were sat on the edge of the lake waiting for it to melt. Where are they, Carl? Yeah, we're just sat there looking, sort of going, oh, what's going on? <laughs> I don't know. How, how long is a duck's memory? Because I wondered whether they're going, this doesn't seem right, but I don't know why. I asked Suzanne why ducks don't use their wings much. They seem to walk and swim more and don't bother using their wings. Suzanne said she had to call her mum and dad, so I never got an answer. <laughs> the old excuse! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suzanne, oh, I can't talk now, Carl. Um, Gonna I've... phone my mum. <laughs> there was a marathon-type run going on in the park. It reminded me of the time when we were moving flat. It was the day of the London Marathon. Me and Suzanne were walking down the middle of the road, taking some stuff to our new flat. I was carrying a lamp and a kitchen bin. People were clapping me, thinking I was doing some kind of fun run. Uh... <laughs> Why were you walking on the same route? Because I, it was when we lived on the Docklands. Oh, and, uh, brilliant. There was, there was no other route. The flat was just about 100 oh. yards down the road. They're going, look at the bloke with the bald wig. <laughs> He's carrying a lamp and a bin. Took a bag of old clothes to Oxfam. It was just old t-shirts and a couple of jumpers with holes in it. I don't think anyone will buy them. But the Oxfam is closer to the flat than the wheelie bin is. <laughs> <laughs> on the tube on the way back home, saw an advert for a book about a woman who works in a funeral home. She went into work one day, uh, she goes to work on a body, she takes the sheet off of one of the bodies, and it looks exactly like her. This is called a doppelganger. The What's thing, a doppelganger to you? It's the thing I read about in ages ago where um, someone was... Uh, Walking down the street. Yeah. And he sees someone who looked a bit like him. And no, this was weirder than that. Go um, on. Um, he, he, he remembers, like, going down that street as a kid on his bike, whistling. Yeah. And then he sort of, he's walking down the street, going out to get some milk or whatever from the shop. Little bike comes whizzing past. He hears the whistling, he goes, that's weird. Looks at it, it was him when he was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so Don't it's like a time. <laughs> shit. What do you mean, it was him as a kid? This, this is like a different form of doppelganger. It's just, uh um, well, It's impossible, it's rubbish. Some sort of time thing, isn't it? No, no, it's, it's not even that's impossible, so don't <laughs> worry about some it. some kind of time thing, Rick. No, 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 yeah, it's just something you read thing. again on the internet, or it was a short story, or something someone told you. Mm. On my walk back from the tube, I saw a jogger who was pushing a pram at the same time. The kid looked terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Got my science book out. It said that the static you get on the telly when a channel isn't tuned in properly is radiation that is still knocking about from when the Big Bang happened. I thought about the Big Bang and wondered if it was really a Big Bang or did it just sound louder as there was no other noise to drown it out. <laughs> Good point, though, isn't it? Carl's diary, Rick, never ceases to amaze. Oh, well, it's that time now. Yeah? It's the big one. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> right, there was this uh, monkey, this fella, right, who uh, he had a problem with his eyes. Right? Yeah. So uh, he goes to the doctors and he goes, uh, oh, I've got a problem with my eyes. And he goes, yeah, they're bad then. Right? <laughs> he goes, uh, it was in America, you know, like how you have to pay for, for medical stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, oh, if, if I fix them, it's going to be like 10 grand. Right? Mm -hmm. He's like, but I haven't got the money, doctor. He goes, well, I can't help you then. You know, there's a lot of people with bad eyes like them. Can't do anything for you. Mm -hmm. So he goes, oh, it's getting worse. Can't do anything. Oh, so okay. anyway, so he goes home. Is that the price of human eyes, is it? So he goes home, he's looking in the paper, right, and he, he sort of sees in the adverts at the back, and uh, there's a little advert there saying, cheap doctors, right? <laughs> no, <bollocks. laughs> Oh, no. no. So he's thinking, oh, maybe that's, maybe that's what I, uh, maybe that's what I need, right? So he calls them up, woman's there, she's like, wait, what can I do? He goes, I've got bad eyes and that. She says, oh, come in tomorrow, we'll sort them out. She's like, brilliant, I'll see you then. Right? So he goes down there, and uh, he says, right, you know, I, c I can hardly see, my eyes have got in really bad state and what have you. Right. Need to have them sorted out. I don't know what you do. Whatever you do, right. I need now, doing. His eyes are so bad. Can he see the doctors? He can... Um, not really. Can't sort really of squinting. squinting and that. But you know, so, uh, so he's like, uh, do I need to see the doctor to you know have a word and tell them what problems? She's like, no, I don't. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about just, it. No, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be comfortable if it's a just, a just you know, just let me inject you and uh, we'll knock mm. you out and we'll we'll get on with it. Yeah, it's we'll like, well, it's, it's, can I just tell you something about um, chimps as well? Just before you continue, you know, they don't have opposable thumbs. Now, why are opposable thumbs useful? Really? Well, to, to grip something, to do anything like, you know, even simple uh, stuff like writing, let alone surgery. So without an but opposable thumb... can I just thumb, check now? So if I was a doctor and I was doing any form of difficult surgery, would I need opposable thumbs? You'd need opposable thumbs. To be a doctor. And without opposable... You couldn't do anything. You could Thanks it, for clearing that because up. Because um, uh, the, the opposable thumb allowed something in our evolution called the precision grip. Right. So without that, you couldn't do anything. I'm just glad they've got that cleared up, thanks. So anyway, so he's had the injection, he's nodding off and what have you, right? his eyes are sort of closing and that, he hears the door open, he, he sort of just sees this little fella come in and he's like, hello doctor, and he's trying to like, make a chat with it, sure. but like, he, he's just it. nodding off. Uh, no, just, oh, he's never called it doctor. These, these people have done seven years medical Deeply training. respected people. How could you say, call it it? So anyway, he thought, oh, it's weird he didn't answer, but you know, doctors can be quite moody, you know, they're highly intelligent, they don't need... Especially idle, little airy ones. Well, just idle chit-chat. There's no room for that, do you know what I mean? Yeah, just, it's just, it's just, oh, yeah, but you know, if, I, if I'm going in to have my eyes done, I want a little bit of idle chimp-chat. So anyway, time passes, right? Yeah. Uh, he sort of wakes up and uh, he opens his eyes, right? And uh, it's brilliant, he can't believe it. Oh, he's a perfect. He's had, he's had, he's had the op. He, he can't believe the sight. He's like nurse, right? And the nurse comes in because I can't believe it. This is brilliant. I've never had this such good sight. Do you know what I mean? Even when I was a baby, yeah. And my eyes were new. Yeah. I didn't see this good. Great. So she's like, well, you know, that's. that's you realise like, the nurse is a panda. That's that's what we do, right? So uh, he said, right. So can I just see the doctor and just say thanks and that? She's like, well, to be honest, you know, he's he's specialising what he does. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of what work. a load of bollocks this is getting. <laughs> Please, Listen, where did you get this from? No, come on, let's hear the end of the news. There's well. a lot of there's a lot of like operations he's got to do. Yeah. Um, so you know, leave him to it. He's just having a kip. You know, I'll, I'll let him know that you were grateful. Yeah. Uh, you know, pays the check. Off you go. Go and enjoy looking at stuff. Yeah. So uh, he says. Uh, he said, no, just just what's wrong with that? I just want to see that. Just, no, like, no fine. leave it. Just leave. Yeah, exactly. Like, leave it. And he's like, it's he's like, check. yeah, but I can't. You know, I, I want to thank him. So he's done such a good thing for me. So they're getting into a bit of an argument and what have you, and the voices are raising, right? Mm. Uh, door gonna opens. They're going to wake the doctor up. Well, mm. that's what they did, they woke it up, right? They so, will get uh, it! So the door opens, right? <laughs> Little monkey comes out. Oh. And, and he's like, what's, what's, what's going on here? It's hospital, why is he, why is he a, a monkey knocking about? Yeah. So the woman, woman said, well, what, what do you mean? He, he's the doctor, <laughs> right? So, sh so he's like, you are having a laugh, aren't you? She goes, look, don't complain, you, your eyes are sorted, yeah. you know? The doctor's done it, what, what, what's the problem? He said, well, if I'd have known that, I wouldn't have come here. She said, well, what do you mean you didn't know that? She said, the advert in the paper you read, it's uh, like, chimp doctors. That is the biggest load of shit I've ever heard. That really is the worst. It's what, and he, so he, because his eyes were so bad, he thought it said cheap doctors? He saw the advert and, and it said, it said chimp doctors, but because his eyes were bad, he just saw it. What as, journal is this in? It was, it was years ago, because it sort of says how the monkey sort of carried on working for a few years. Uh, he couldn't do anything then about just it, he had to leave to play golf. It's absolute bollocks. It's there's no to... way, there's the worst, I mean, it's not even worth talking about. So. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's the most ridiculous monkey news you've ever heard, and that's saying something. Chimp, chimp doctors. Cheap. It's easy mistake. But are you comfortable being nude and that? We've done this. Well, I don't know what this is. We did this last week about are you comfortable being nude? No, I, think I know. I you're probably that. most comfortable being nude. It's just probably not in public. Hmm. 
Well, Ricky's only really comfortable nude when he's eating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's nothing to get, you know. Yeah, you can just wipe spill yourself down. Yeah, you just sit in the bath, yeah. No, but I've talked about that and then when I went, when I went home, I was talking to Suzanne about it and she said, what's all that about? You're not, you don't like being nude, right? <laughs> and I said, well, it's, it's not. It's like I'm part of an Alan Bennett play. It's just, I love the way you talk. Remember once, right, so I don't know if you should talk about this, really, but. Well, that means you should, so go on. Go on. Uh, oh yeah. Right, we went to, um, went to Tenerife, right, one year, oh, and I was still living in Manchester. I'm scared now. Yeah, I don't said that. I'm actually no, I'm scared. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking about Suzanne, but she's, she's well, working. Well, I, do, I don't right. want to know anything about Suzanne, Come to be honest. No, but if it's, it go involves on. me more. Go on, the story. go on. I'm just explaining to you that I don't like being nude. Mm. Yes. Go on. So you're in Tenerife? In Tenerife, right, didn't have much money, stayed in this apartment that wasn't, wasn't that nice, right? I had the cockroaches in it and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, didn't have much money to go out at night. Uh, so we're in this sort of death trap of a- of an apartment, right? Uh -huh. Anyway, so when I was younger, right, I had a bit more energy, so- <laughs> so like he's 30. 80, I know. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. start having it away a bit. <laughs> Beautiful. It's so, good, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a word. I love it. Go on. Right. So, you know, doing what I do, right? Yeah. <laughs> Someone starts banging on the door. So Susan Everyone's says, at it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you mean knocking on the door, right, okay. Yeah. Knocking on the door, right. <laughs> so Suzanne says, you better get it. So I said, oh, I can't get it now, I can I? I'll have to wait a bit. Right. <laughs> I can't, I can't go to the door. <laughs> go on. So the banging's getting louder. Yeah. Someone at the door. Yeah. And she's like, oh no, but it must be important. I'm like, in a minute. Just, so anyway. <laughs> in a minute. I, I don't want to know anymore. I stick, <laughs> Keep going. No, no, come on, finish the story. Open the door. It's a fireman. So I just stick my head round and he's going, you'll have to get out. The, the building's on fire. Right? So I'm like, in a minute. Sorry, you weren't still having sex at this point? No, no, but, you know, right. still sort of got to wait a minute or I can't get my pants on. <laughs> oh, Carl, I wish I'd- I'm so sorry. Right, go on. So the, 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 now, now so the, the place is burning down. So it could be a serious big fire going on. Yeah. I'm sort of waiting. You can hear people sort of screaming and that, panicking. Yeah. Is that because the door's <laughs> open and you're nude? Fire- the fireman's saying, will you get out, will you get out? I'm saying, hey, in a minute. Right. <laughs> and Suzanne was saying, you know, think of something that's not sexy. Sure. So I was thinking of people, you know, thinking maybe dying in a fire might sort of calm you down. Yeah. <laughs> then the fireman said, we need a big pole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sure, go on. go on. But what I'm saying is, that, to me, I, I wouldn't have wanted to go out and be safe over, do you know what I mean, over being naked. I don't like walking about when out on. So what I'm saying is, even <laughs> I that fire- I- Love the idea of everyone huddled in there with the fireman. It just the cameras fans long and it's Carl. Yeah, a typical news report. Naked, with still. But would standing you? Would, proud. would you have gone out? We're now on. But why do I have to go out with now on? I just grab a pair of jeans. All right, but you just you know. What? There's a fire, Carl. Yeah, well, see, no, not you... everyone looks at men's packets. That's only you remember. Most of the other firemen wouldn't be going, oh, look at him. But he's what I'm interested in is how long- to see us. Carl, how long did it take and did the thought of dying in a fire help? After a bit, but the fireman sort of had a go at me. Sure. What do you mean? Well, like, he wasn't happy that I was dawdling. Well, to be fair- But what can you do? Answers on a postcard. <laughs> <laughs> to the usual address. XFM, care of <laughs> Leicester Square. Well, let's just get these right. No, 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 let's play a record, let's have Rockbusters and oh, Monkey News. We don't uh, have time afterwards. for Monkey News. We'll squeeze them in. Wow. <laughs> Life on Mars by David Bowie on XFM. Right, come on, we're running out of time. Blockbusters, the results in. Sorry. Oh, what a giveaway. <laughs> oh, no, embarrassing. I've given it away. <laughs> Straight into monkey news. Go on So, uh, yeah, Rockbusters, what were the clues? Uh, the clues were, uh, the first one was, uh, they're, they're running out of rice, so they've got problems. That was CC. That was China crisis. Right? Okay, yeah, if they ran out of rice in China it would be a crisis, fair enough. Second one, the, uh, 
the Geordie fella doesn't know what he's being charged for, right? That was Bill Wyman. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And the, uh, the third one, I had two bricks to throw at two women, and <laughs> I didn't hit either of them, that was Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. <laughs> I let him up, those were all right though. That's extraordinary. The winner, uh, Gina. I think Gina Ferry. Well done, Gina. And uh, the reason I gave it to Gina is because she's included, and this is a wonderful segue, some monkey fact uh, information of her, of her own. She says, apparently, that the group Chumbawamba got their name from one of those monkeys in a room with the typewriter experiments. Someone did it as a joke, and Chumbawamba was a word that was typed out, and that's the group, that's where the group got their name. And apparently. their lyrics. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Which, so, is, um, which is good. So let's have official monkey news. Play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that, monkey news. Alright, we've got to be quick. Go but, on. Uh, this is something that was sent in to me ages ago, and I don't know why I haven't done it yet, because it's brilliant. <laughs> uh, we were talking about monkeys typing, mm -hmm. um, the Shakespeare theory and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, this is about a uh, little monkey called Marty, right? Basically, uh, it's in some science lab, right? It's in there. Uh, it was wandering about out of its cage, right? The lab fella was busy on the phone or something. Yeah. Right? And, um... Mm. Typical. It's wandering about, it goes up to a, a PC, that's in the corner, a little computer, types down, my name is Marty. Right? Mm. So, the fella got off the phone, saw this on the screen with the monkey sat there, says to his mate, have you done this? Right, hold on, Carl. Right. Let him finish. Oh. Before you question, always let him finish. I don't know what to do. Time's against us, come I on. He said, uh, he said, have you done this? He says, done what? He said this on, on the screen here, saying, my name's Marty. Right? He goes, what are you talking about? As he's having an argument with his mate, saying, you're lying, you did it. Monkey's sat there, typing, this isn't a practical joke, my name is Marty. Right, and that's the end of the story? I, um, I'm not coming in next week. Uh. I think, we, I, think I, I think we need a week off. I actually think we need a week off. It's doing a, uh, a web chat or something. Uh, you can go online and have a chat, chat with it. The monkey's doing a web chat? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Has right, he got his own website yet? His uh, favourite Buffy the Vampire stuff here? I've looked at that, I've looked at that. Right. Do you believe that, Carl? It's all there. No, but do you believe it? Do you believe that monkey could type that and then say this is not a practical joke when he's all arguing? Weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. What do you reckon, Steve? Yeah, well, it's obviously a, a wind-up. It's a joke. It's not even- you haven't even got some of the facts wrong. It's just a wind-up. Have you noticed the date? Is it April the 1st? It is April the 1st. You are joking. That it was sent. You're an idiot, Carl. It was sent on April the 1st, Carl. So you're saying the monkey knows it's April the 1st, but you and don't believe- it's doing a wind-up, yes. Yeah, I think the, I think the monkey it has thought, I'll do it on April the 1st so that people think that it's a wind-up, but in actual fact I am a monkey that can type and read. It's a shame you never went into investigative journalism. You could have brought down, you know, oh, the Watergate Carl. scandal. Poor Carl. Well, I was thinking of a song that sums us three up, yeah? What are we? What are we? What do you think, how would you sum us up? Um, tricky. Well, Young, Gifted and Black. True enough. Apart from, apart from a couple of them. Yeah, well, we're not gifted. No. And um, we're not very young. No, I'm certainly not. Should we take a week off? Yeah. Should we maybe just knock it on the head altogether? We'll take a week off and see what happens. Okay. See you next- no, not- let's not see you next see week. See you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Cheers then, Carl. What would you do, right? <laughs> That's the most disgusting thing. What could it be? Um, right, what, what would you do, right, if you were suddenly a fly, right, and you were knocking around with the flies, right, and you had to land on some, uh, excrement? Yeah. What would you do? Yeah, but I don't have to. What do you mean? You're a fly. You're yeah, but I it. wouldn't, no, I wouldn't be loving it, no, would I? <laughs> Why? Because I'm me in that fly's head. <laughs> so I'd, I'd just, I don't think other flies would be going, come on, join in. I'd just be like, no, I'll, I'll wait what? here, what, wait, watch and that. Because they don't, I don't see why they have to do that. What would you do, right, if you had to go back and you were in a, um, you were, had to go and put your mind in like the, um, an un, uh, hatched egg of something. Like maybe one of those, e like, like, uh, that a wasp was injected in a spider. So you know you're in an egg, right, which is really uncomfortable, in a spider. How would you feel about that, Carl? 
You're a baby wasp in the abdomen of a spider. And I know everything that I know now. I'm, I'm sat in there. Yeah. And now I'm now I'm in a spider as a ba as an unborn wasp. What the fuck am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I'll do there. Uh will they try and sleep? <laughs> There's nothing else to do though, is there? I just pray to God it never happens. And I believe that he's written it down! The Well, that's the jingle that signals it's time for more extracts from Carl's diary, and uh, we'll lunge straight into it. Wandered down Carnaby Street. There was a happy homeless fella. I gave him one pound fifty. I thought of a tongue twister after giving him the money. It goes, "If you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat?" It's good, that. All Say right. it fast. If you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? Yeah, good, isn't it? Good, that. Yeah. You've got too much time on your hands, Carl. <laughs> Learn some famous quotes to see if they are as good as my sayings. Number one, treat every day as if it's your last. Very famous saying. Now, is that something you do, Carl? Um, but you know, me, me problem with that one is that if it was your last, you wouldn't want to be doing much. That's, that's the only problem I've got with that. I wouldn't want to, you know, go to a fairground or whatever because you're going, oh, it's my last day, what am I going to do? And I think you'd spend so much time worrying about what you're going to do that you'd end up staying in. I think you're right. Um, you've taken some of the poetry out of it. I think it means live life to the fullest. Right? I like the fact that you were musing on the idea that if it was your last day, you'd go to the fair. <laughs> 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 it's getting such a 19th century way of spending your final day. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the, the other thing is that, um, the only thing that people get depressed about in terms of sort of like, um, you know, life and death is, uh, not the knowledge that they're gonna die, but more the knowledge that they know they're gonna die when they're dying. If someone told you, um, no one ever knows when they're gonna die, no one ever gets an illness, no one ever gets hit by a truck, everyone passes away peacefully in their sleep, dreaming they're riding a big marshmallow, right? Then you wouldn't care about anything. It wouldn't matter when, it wouldn't matter if you died tomorrow or in 30 years time. You'd just live life to the full. You'd come, you'd, you'd have it, every day would be great. You'd go out, you'd come back, you'd fall asleep. That would be amazing. There'd be no stress. There'd be no, there'd be no angsty, oh, we're all gonna die stress. Cause it wouldn't matter. Cause it would just be your life. Wouldn't it be amazing if someone guaranteed you, Carl, you're gonna die in your sleep. I'm not gonna tell you when. Yeah, but you'd... some people do, don't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, but I we never know we're going to, cause we, we stress. What if we get a dreadful illness? What if we, you know. But, but we're almost not letting people die naturally anymore, are we? Because we're always bodging stuff up. What do you mean? Well, someone who might naturally die in the sleep aren't allowed to naturally die in the sleep because they wake them up with those electric things and get them going again and pop in a new lung or whatever whilst they're at it. That's what I'm saying. They don't just... Na you, you never hear it anymore, do you? Frank peacefully died in his sleep. No, he died on the operating table whilst we're putting in a new lung. They never, they don't die naturally anymore. <laughs> Frank died peacefully with 40,000 volts going through them and a couple of people going, clear, <laughs> clear. <laughs> Rushing about today, got to get a lot done as I'm flying to Malaga tomorrow to see my mum and dad. Don't like flying, I'd be happy if they give you a parachute instead of a life jacket. They say Da Vinci invented the parachute as well as the helicopter. He never got round to making them though because he only drew them on some paper. Got up at 5am as I had to get to Heathrow to get on the plane to see mum and dad in Malaga. Went out for a drink with a cousin who lives in Spain. Ain't seen her for 27 years. Oh, that must have been tricky, making conversation. I didn't really bother. Because <laughs> where do you start? I might no, as well so... go up to anyone in the street and start having a chat. <laughs> yeah, you have to get further back then. Uh, did you want Chantal to win Big Brother? Yeah. Me dad and me talked about history. I said we shouldn't go on about things that happened ages ago because I bet something similar has happened more recently. Brilliant. <laughs> Read about an island in the Indian Ocean where there are tribesmen still living like they're cavemen. A helicopter tried to land and the tribesmen chucked spears at them. This is what I meant about not having to talk about things that happened ages ago. We have got new cavemen now, so why do we talk about the old ones? People could have lived before, but computers and all that blew up and books got burnt, so all they had left was what these tribesmen have got left. 
Ramblings <laughs> of, <laughs> that's a the ramblings mad man. of a maniac. That I mean, that's a... just a few hours before you go crazy with a gun in there. No, but what, what I mean there is, right, mm. say if all this has happened before, mm. something happens. Again, a lot of your information from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> World ends, mm. right, we come back again somehow. Yeah. <laughs> it's the detail you leave out that makes yeah. you intriguing. Just like the watch that you can wear that uh, tells you when you're going to die. How does it work? Pop it on your wrist. That's yeah. all the detail you need. So the world happened. No. We came back. We. Um, yeah. Have you seen the pictures? <laughs> Forget it then if you don't get it. It's interesting that you had all those profound thoughts uh, about this this period in the past uh, when they all lived, but you still f you still found it uh, appropriate to include at the end of that. It says the tribesmen wave their knobs about when they've had enough of having visitors. That's what's what it said in the paper. That's what happens. They're quite happy. What paper is this that you're reading? It was it was in it was in like a paper a couple of days ago. It said um, they don't mind having visitors if they're bringing them coconuts and stuff that they can eat. Once they've got everything they need, you start waving the tackle about, and that means, like, right, leave now. Which you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah! At a dinner party. Uh, my grandfather used to do that. <laughs> oh, did that see that, Monkey News? Ah, <laughs> uh, that jingle is getting more annoyed by the week. Well, this is the final Monkey News, right? I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. Right? Because we've, we've covered it all. All the Monkey News has been covered? It has. It has. We've done, we've done loads of them. I think all the news that needs to be sort of known has been told, right? Um, that is the end of the news. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? Get on with it. Right, do you know, um, oh. we, uh, chatted about the monkey that went into space and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. This was the one that was fed by bananas that came out of a little chute on the spacecraft. Yeah, it went, it went up there, he came back, he could never get that. The high, high exactly, again. yeah. You know mm. what I mean? He tried other things. I think he tried to get a band together and that. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. so anyway, there was, there was loads of monkeys that were signed up to this NASA program. And it was 1961 when this little monkey called Ham, that was his name, as well as him, there was one called Enos. So anyway, what I've found out about it since then, um, Ham went up there with the left-right business with the bananas. Enos, um, they didn't put as much work into the trip when, when he went up there and something went wrong with the machinery and do you know how you get a banana for the left button and all that? Mm. It's official it's, now. <laughs> yeah. There's two buttons in this spaceship, banana dispenser and everything else. The right <laughs> button is everything else. But, but it worked the other way, the machinery went weird. Oh no, really? So, so it meant that the right button would give him a banana. Right. The left button did everything else. Oh no! How does so that, what, how so that what you've been though? taught? How, what, oh, this is the problem with with electronics, isn't it? Well, no. It was, I don't think that this. <laughs> Apparently, this is the problem. But the good. Th I mean, honestly, look it up if you want. This is all online. By the so way. what happened when it all went haywire? What what occurred? Well, luckily, Carl, Carl, this is online and it's bollocks. Luckily, um, Enos, because he'd, he'd, he'd done a few trips. <laughs> right, he's so he was like, well, I know this isn't right. <laughs> As much as I love bananas, <laughs> this isn't right. <laughs> so, was his thinking, of course it was. So anyway, so he came back, they, they were all like over the moon with him. He said, I, I can't work with these conditions. Good mission and everything, well done and working it out. He sorted all that out. Um, it moved on a few years. Armstrong's gone up there, Buzz and that other fella. They've been up there, the, the monkeys aren't needed anymore. Mm. But they were like, we've got all these monkeys who have done NASA training. Mm. <laughs> what are we going to do with them all? Mm. <laughs> And they mm. had to raise fourteen million pounds mm. to make him like a, a like an old sort of chimp home for retired <laughs> As for retired NASA trained monkeys. Chimpanots. Chimpanots. Something they've got in there is like a little museum, right, of all the missions and that that they've been on. So they can sort of even though they're not gonna be going into space again, they can almost relive it and reminisce mm -hmm. of the times that they've had. And they're reminiscing with each other, are they? Just, just sort of going, oh, like remember that time when it all went wrong, the button became the left when it should have yeah. been the right and all the rest of yeah. it. They're just, you know, sort talking of about old times, talking yeah. about old times and what have you, like old people like to do. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, and yeah, that's it, so if you want- Perhaps we should retire Monkey News to that same space. That's what I mean, so, you know, I hope you've enjoyed the Monkey News and that, that was the, the last one. Look after the monkeys, uh, do your bit, because they've done their bit, uh, that's it, yeah. But just because I'm not giving the news, look it up, do you know what I mean? It's all out there.
Don't be ignorant. <laughs> Wise words. Band of Gold by the artist who featured in uh, uh, a recent Rockbuster uh, clue, which was, I think, uh, uh, the Jamaican fella needs an aspirin for his head, and that goes, of course, to free the pain. <laughs> Brilliant. Rockbuster's coming up, isn't it, Carl? We uh, we start up now. Get it, get it going. No, let's 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 no. Let's I thought we it. weren't doing this anymore. I know. I don't know what happened. I, I don't, don't know. know. I, I mean, oh. but I mean, it's, I mean, we're shooting off in a couple of weeks, so yeah. What difference yeah. does it make? Well, we might, we might as well. Now you've mentioned it, it's a good time. Go on then. Right. Uh, three cryptic, cryptic clues like the one you just heard there. Mm. Uh, first one. Cryptic. <laughs> that is cryptic um, a word. First one, my younger brother spotted you the other day. Right, that's the cryptic clue. My younger brother spotted you the other day. The initials JS. JS for the band. Second one, uh, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. <laughs> <laughs> the way he looks up, like, it's Oscar Wilde. Yeah. It's, oh. That champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. The initials are AM. And the third one, uh, the vibrators, and the initial B. What? Right? The vibrators, and the initial is B. So the first one, my younger brother spotted you the other day. Oh, I know that one, that's ridiculous. J.S. The phone's going. Second one, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid, yeah. A.M. And the third one, the vibrators, the initial B. So, email in, and you win, you can say the prizes later, can't you? Well, I tell you what, this is terrible. I mean, we, we didn't even say the prizes, we weren't going to do this. The phone's going. Look at the phones, are going mental. Right, Jesus, so we've done those answers then. Are we doing them now, Steve? Yeah. Right. Uh, first one, my younger brother spotted you the other day. Yeah. The initials there, JS, that was Junior Senior. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you that. Second one, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. That was AM. That was Alison's Moye. Alison's Moye. <laughs> Alison Moye. Sorry, just one. give us the clue again. That champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. So, Muhammad Ali's son. Yeah. Right. Uh, Alison, uh, Alison's no. Moye. Yeah. Brilliant. And then third one, always a, an easy one in there for everyone to set part. Uh, the vibrators and the initials B. That's Buzzcocks. <gasps> Carl, did you ever do paintings and drawings at school and then bring them home and your mum put them on the fridge? Uh. No, not really. I never brought them on. What, did you just screw them up and throw them in the bin? I just left them at school. Yeah. I've never had a bag. Alright. <laughs> 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 there, there, on XFM 104.9. You see, no, wait, what, uh, this is giving me an idea because, um, I think what the best thing about this show is what happens when the records are playing. Because mm. we, uh, we sort of, we, uh, that's an example, in articulate. Yeah? Didn't have anything planned. Well, I started my mouth moving, but I didn't have anything planned. Yeah. Like, Why was that? Why Why didn't you have anything planned there? What? what? Why didn't you know what you were going to say then? Because... What were you doing when Radiohead was on? <laughs> I, well, I made Carl a new uniform that he has to wear in the second hour. What did I do? You got tissue paper. Yeah. Toilet roll, yeah. Ripped a bit off. Yeah. Made a little tie for me. Yeah. <laughs> And put some in the ears. <laughs> yeah, so he had earplugs and matching tie. <laughs> yeah. And he looked good, didn't he? Yeah. He had earplugs and matching tie and I and, uh, yeah. squeezed it in there and he went, I can't, it'll irritate me. Mm. So, mm. I'm thinking of things all the time to make this more fun for me. <laughs> yes. And it, he's just like that. Can but, I, sorry, a quick question. Um, just want to raise, Steve, just want to raise a little point. Go on. Um, you say that you're spending most of your time thinking about how you can make this more entertaining for yourself. Yeah. I, is it worth ever considering the listeners? Well, I think that if if, if you're I, happy, they're happy. Yeah. I'm not sure that's true. I, I've been monitoring a lot of the feedback on the email and stuff. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't appear to be the case. But that's because Carl won't go along with stuff. Sure. I mean, they could see on the webcam his little uh, matching matching earplugs and tie that I made. Mm. I just did a cartoon that went for three hundred and fifty pounds, right? On yeah. the in on the website, right? Mm. So mm. that's that's one now. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna make it really good. We're gonna give them lots of stuff and sign DVDs and everything. So that's great. Three hundred fifty quid. Who was it? Uh, I think her name was Joanne. It's not definite yet because we haven't got the money off her. Well, so she's, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, you got to trust them, don't you? Um, and so I, I think people would love to have had a matching. You know, I'd have signed it and everything. Little matching earplugs and necktie made out of toilet roll. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, and he w and he doesn't don't want to wear it. But I had a great idea for a show, right? We filmed the behind the scenes, right, of each show. Mm -hmm. So you know, you get a the, you know the, a CD of what went out, but you saw what happened behind the scenes, right? And it follows us through a week, right? And it's called X Men Three. Ah, uh, I see, because of XFM. Yeah. Right. And then we can film all Carl, what Carl looks like when I'm squeezing his head, what, what he's like when we're trying to make him touch us, mm. all that sort of stuff, when he's getting all stressed out in the day and we just pop up, right, the, what he looks like, his little head, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And would this be broadcast on TV? Or? I think so. I right. think Choice. It's all right, BBC okay. Three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I... <sighs> Again, you know. look, because I, I, I mean, I'm very much in the, the center of the storm. I'm very much the eye of the storm. Yeah. And I know that I myself would not want to watch that. Really? No, because it's any I mean, negative, Carl. He was like this when you came up with cheapest chimps. Uh, he didn't. He wanted to drop rockbusters. What was the other thing he didn't like? Um, uh, that other TV idea I had. Yeah. What? Putting a baby in a room, setting it on fire, and see if he can make his way out. Setting the room on fire. Let's yeah. not get silly. Yeah. No, no, no. But yeah. he didn't like that, did he? No. I mean, I don't. I don't want to sort of. I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but it does seem to me that my criticism of those things is probably justified. I mean, cheap as chimps. Yeah. Where is it now? Well, wow. Donald McIntyre took it. <laughs> not really, Carl. Not really. It is, but um, a, a pitiful <laughs> memory. Yeah. Um, you had both your game show ideas terrible. This TV show idea, I think, again, it's only interesting to you, Rick. This is what you fail to realise. You've got no sense of the greater public. They don't. They, to be honest, I'm I'm just taking this from what people are emailing in. They're not interested. See, in Carl. I don't read the emails. They're not interested in Carl. I, I don't read the emails. They're not interested in Carl. They're not interested in Carl. But if we did a documentary about him, like they did about Oliver, the 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 human Z, or no, that's a different case. Or that the girl that was older than her mum, or you know, all those other sort of things. I think yeah. if we actually did a definitive documentary and got in doctors to talk about him mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. showed him- That psychiatrist from Big Brother. Yeah, and just talked about it and then showed him in his environment. I think it would be- I think it would be brilliant. I think it would be a brilliant show. But I think that's interesting. I think you're right. As some kind of anthropological study of Carl, fascinating, you making a little negative well, for uh, him, I'm not so convinced. But that would all be part of it. Play record, let's think about this, because I think this is an idea. If any broadcasters are listening, like Greg Dyke or, um, you know, we'd even go to Channel 5 with this, I think. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, alternatively, if you'd like to, uh, incorporate Carl into some kind of Blue Peter appeal. Let's do some, like, let's just get Carl, look at his face. How could you not? See, a lot of people still don't know what you look like, Carl. Play record. Turing Breaks, Painkiller on XFM 104.9. A couple of emails, Rick, that I ought to notify you about. Um, Holly is emailed in. She wants us to wish her good luck. She says that she's one of 15,000 women who will be walking uh, 26 miles around London, starting at midnight tonight, in their bras to raise money for breast cancer research. Prostitutes? Uh, no, 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 just regular ladies, I think. Oh, right. Um, but I, d I was at a loose end, so that's something for me to do. <laughs> 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 I'll, uh, no, I'll, I'll pop that and, and, and support them. <laughs> Um, um, also, we got uh, we got to say hello to uh, Sonia, who's uh, it's her eighteenth birthday, and we're going to play a little Smiths track for her later. So uh, it's like we're trying we're trying to be interactive. Yeah, um, I've seen how other DJs do it. They have phones. They go and uh, what are you, how are you celebrating tonight? Oh, we're just going out, Foxy. Uh, have a good time. Here we go. This is you know what I mean. Yeah. We've got to be. I've guessed we had we had Chris Martin in from Coldplay. Which going to be a lot. Well, Chris is still here. Hello. Uh, Chris, how did you come up with the ideas for your songs? Just make them up in my head with the guitar. And, um, how old are you now? Twenty-eight. Thanks very much for that. More from Chris Martin later, I imagine. Cheers. And we've also um, had, uh, cheers. Email... <laughs> Thanks, Chris. We've also had an email from Jim. <laughs> it's as easy as that. <laughs> we've had an email from Jim. He says, uh, on the subject of the postcards, his brother once met the bloke who posed for the photo on those biros that when you tip them up, the black ink so it kind of sinks away and right. it shows him nude. And he was apparently an aspiring model and he got paid $75 for it in Hong Kong in the 70s. Carl, would you have done that? Would you pose mo nude for a pen for $75? I mean, inflation, gone kind of, up. Let's, let's double it every ten years, say. So, yeah, uh, so 150, uh, 300. I'll give you 600 quid to post news for, for biros that we give away for XFM. An XFM biro, where your clothes sink away when you turn it upside down. And what sort of shape was this fella in? Did He's in pretty good shape, yeah, I think. Uh, 600 quid. Yeah. I'll make it back on selling the pens. No, I won't do that. No. I always remember being at school, uh, when I, the first time I ever encountered one of those pens. There was a kid at school, Jason, and he had a, I had a pen, one of those pens, and he turned it upside down, and it was where the woman's clothes 
sink away and she's naked. Yeah. And I remember sort of seeing it and him showing it to everyone, all the young lads, and them thinking, this is amazing. And, um, and I always remember thinking it was like the idea that it was sort of a way to cheat teachers. Oh, no, Jason, you just got a pen there with a picture of a woman yeah. wearing some clothes. That's fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. If he brings a porn mag in, I'll have him. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, but I can't- But no. I've always imagined- can you imag imagine how embarrassing would it be to be- to be caught masturbating over one of those pens? <laughs> Business man. Yeah. <laughs> He's like- his wife catches him. <laughs> no, you're gonna- no, just a second. Um, I'm gonna- oh, oh, sorry. So, what are you doing? Just- I'm just doing some writing with this- this regular pen. Right, what? Well, no, don't- don't, don't, don't turn it upside down. Ah. Can I just come round where you're sitting? Just <laughs> why are you naked? The only thing I think more embarrassing would be to ca be caught masturbating looking into a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you maybe, for me and Carl, you're right. <laughs> um, uh, should we should give the Rockbusters clues again one for final time before we um, we give out the answers? And I should right. mention the prizes as well. <laughs> if you still want to enter, uh, we've got some various things: a couple of CDs, a soft <laughs> CD. <laughs> right, looking into a mirror. Uh, let's move on from that. Club Anthems 2003, Strange and Beautiful. Being nude. Eh? I hate being nude anyway. Why? What do you mean you hate being nude? Uh, it's not normal if you walk about. Do you walk about the house without on? No, because we've got windows. Yeah, but, alright, with the blinds shut or whatever. Well, I have a bath. No, no, but say shutting. like, say like with, you know, with, with Jane and that. I, are you happy walking about? No, I just think, no, I, I, I walk around in my pants or a towel. I won't, I won't purposely walk around nude for the sake of it, no. <laughs> No, I know, so, but, but, but I, in the morning I don't mind, when I get up, yeah. so I go for a shower, but I don't sort of flaunt it about, I just wondered if that's normal, or... Well, no, I, what do you mean, is it normal? If, if, if there's no one can see you, then... No, like, but, but your girlfriend's in and that. But what I mean well, is... Yeah. It's like... You, you can put a pair of pants on, can't you? Do you know, all I'm saying is- Well, if you put Steve's on if you want. <laughs> yeah, for 30 quid. What do you want? Do, what do you want? Do you want to put a pair of pants on now? <laughs> no, it's just like you're asking me to do it for a pen. What would you do, right? What would you do, right, if, um, you did that thing with Steve and you put left your pants in there and you went and you put his on, but there's, it was sort of like, it was damp. Right, so rock busters then, we'll get yeah. this out of the way, right? Uh, so the one. prizes, Carl, uh, mentioned there's a number of CDs, we've also got Wild Weather, um, a fascinating, uh, it looks like two VHS set about weather, <laughs> about various weather conditions around the world. That must be selling like hotcakes. A uh, Sean Lloyd could be in that now. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. And um, also signed by Norman. It's Fat Boy Slim's Big Beach Boutique. That must have been troublesome for um, the station that <laughs> that has uh, you know close ties with Norman to get hold of. But well done. And uh, that's Fat Boy Slim Big Beach Boutique. So yeah, there's a number of not bad prizes to give away there. And the clues were Carl. Uh, first one was, uh, my younger brother spotted you the other day, the initials JS. We had, um, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. That was AM. And, uh, third one, the vibrators. That's the, rubbish, that one. And the initial B. We'll Is give away the, uh, the prizes and the answers next. Um, yeah. what we got play a record or do, what we got coming up? We got Monkey News. Yeah, we got that. We got, uh, We've got loads, too numerous to mention at the moment. We got the average. Got some of them. Oh, brilliant. Cram them in later. Excellent. Look forward to them. Joe Jackson. Good, good track. Good tune. Well, it's on. <laughs> <laughs> Different for girls. Joe Jackson on XFM 104.9. A retro cut. Um, bit of monkey news would be good, Carl, if you got that. Well, we're, I... well we're, we're struggling here. We're struggling, Steve. Wait I'll, a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll... Really say that, but wait a minute. The answers for Rockbusters are coming up right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you thought people were turning off? Oh, up. we've got to, oh, what have we done? We've done, take my shoes off for money. Take my shoes off for money. <laughs> we've done that. We've done, um, oh, look at these funny postcard breasts. <laughs> and, uh, we've done, we didn't win a Sony. Um, coming up, regular monkey, features. Um, oh, jeez. Got nothing, have we? Come on. Sometimes it's good. Come on, Carl, save us. You've got to save so us. We've done those answers, then. Are we doing them now, Steve? Yeah. Now? Right. Uh, first one, my younger brother spotted you the other day. Yeah. The initials there, JS, that was junior senior. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you that. Second one, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. That was AM. That was Alison's Moye. Alison's Moye. <laughs> Alison Moye. Sorry, just one. give us the clue again. That champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. So, Muhammad Ali's son. Yeah. Right, and Alison's, Alison's yeah. Moye. Yeah. Brilliant. And then third one, always a, an easy one in there for everyone to look and set part. Uh, the vibrators and the initials, B, that's Buzzcox. <gasps> you can't say Cox. 
That's why we need to win more. more. That's why you can't say Cox. Have we got a winner? We have indeed. <laughs> um, I chose him because his name amused me. Um, which is a bit hard. It's not Mr. Tits. <laughs> no, no, no. Gerald Preston. <laughs> Sorry, Gerald. I don't know why that tickled me. It's so uh, unfair. It only tickled me because it's not funny. <laughs> it's There's so nothing unfair. funny with Gerald Preston. There is nothing <laughs> funny. I think well, it was because it sounded like it was a man of a different generation. I think that was why Gerald kind of, Preston. It sounded <laughs> like. <laughs> That's terrible. I know. Right, Gerald. There's nothing funny about that name. There's nothing funny about the name. Gerald. Just Steve just made me laugh. <laughs> he did. I don't know why <laughs> that made us funny. It made us laugh, but. It tickle me, oh. but, but <laughs> Daryl, whatever you think of your name, don't worry because these points are including funny Fat Boy Slim. Gerald Preston. I oh, don't know, <laughs> Gerald, if you're a fan of wild weather, <laughs> but you've got a 2 VH set <laughs> coming to your way, <laughs> so you certainly will be interested in the extreme weather conditions by the end of that, I would have thought, plus oh, some arbitrary CDs, oh. so, um, good luck, Jerry. Oh, dear. Excellent. Um, right, brilliant. Good. That's that sorted. Right, let's have another tune and then maybe some monkey news. Yeah. Well, actually, now you've sort of mentioned a bit of monkey news, that I found something in the week, right, that we've talked about in the past, right, that oh, I've got some other monkey stuff, but this is just, oh, forget it. Come on! What? <sighs> Come on! What's the matter with you? Right, do you know that thing we did ages ago? What? When, uh, we were out one day and we were talking about monkeys in, in a room with a, with a PC. And if you leave them in there long enough. Yeah, eventually a, 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 an infinite amount of monkeys, or one monkey in an infinite amount of time will eventually type the complete word of Shakespeare, yeah. Right, we talked about that ages ago. Yeah. I said it wouldn't happen. No, it, it doesn't make sense. You can't say it wouldn't happen, it doesn't make sense. It's a, a mathematical conundrum. It doesn't anyway, make sense. Go on. Anyway, right, they got a couple of monkeys. Right, so not an infinite amount then. <laughs> okay, so, alright, but never mind. Yeah. Uh, got a couple of monkeys, put it in a room. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was a, if it was one PC or they got, got a job lot or whatever. Not an infinite amount then. <laughs> and, uh, left them in there for a month. Oh, not an infinite amount of time then, either. <laughs> okay. So two monkeys a month. Okay, go on. Yeah, I see the experiment's no, working so about far. About eight monkeys. Oh, eight <laughs> monkeys. Oh, let me just work that out as a, as a fraction of infinity. <laughs> it's one, oh, right, infinity, <laughs> eight into infinity. Oh, God, uh, um, a month. And what happened then, Carl? Did, did they type the, did they type the complete watch of Shakespeare? I'm assuming they no, did. No, they, 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 uh, no, they only did a proportion of it. <laughs> okay, what they, they just did Macbeth. <laughs> <laughs> what happened then, Carl? Please they, tell us. They didn't have anything, they didn't come up with anything. You're an idiot, Carl. <laughs> you really are an idiot. Play a record. That's ridiculous. Well, what did you expect? What did you expect? You a bit, a bit, a bit of Keats. And no, pastry no. of the Radio Times by one of them, the cleverest one. No, but what they did say is they didn't even get, they didn't even write one word out. One, no, you don't, no, infinity or nothing, that's the point. There's a big leap between any number you could think of and infinity. In fact, an infinite leap. Do you understand the concept of infinity? Don't rub your eyes. I, I, I lost him on Do You. Yeah. Didn't I? Right, play a did record. Did they type any- did they type nothing from like any of the book- any of the Tarzan no, books? Nothing. <laughs> 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 but they must have read them. I mean that would be their favourite, surely. <laughs> I'm stunned. I can't believe they didn't even do like a transcript of Every Which Way But Loose. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. They must have chosen some really thick monkeys. They didn't type any of Charlton Heston's speeches from, <laughs> um, <laughs> from Planet of the Apes. I can't believe it. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You'd have thought six monks is in a month would have done something. Yeah. At least a script for BJ and the Bear. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing, of course, with BJ and the Bear that it was a monkey, not a bear. Really? Stuck in a moment. You can't get out of it by you two. I know how they feel. Oh, just a quick thought. I just had a sudden thought. Um, just a little update on something we talked about ages ago on the show. You might remember I said once that, um, if I ever met Dido, I thought yeah. I had a good chance with her. Yeah, because yeah. Because she looks like the sort of woman that would work in, say, a photocopying shop. Yeah. And yeah. she'd probably be quite charmed by or me. Or a secretary so. that sort of like wrote a couple of songs. Exactly. And the boss said, put, I entered her in something. Yeah. And it, and it won. She did them at the Christmas party, everyone clapped. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well yeah. anyway, just an update on that. So far nothing's happened. <laughs> You haven't, you haven't, you haven't, I haven't met her. Nothing's going no, on, so okay. I'll keep you posted on that, Rick. I know you're but interested. I, I, I imagine it's a foregone conclusion when you do, though. It's That's the beauty of it, is, we know, when, when I hear you met her, you don't need to say any more. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just, just say, you, I'll let just you know. wink and say, I met Dido last night, and I'll yeah, go say no more. Exactly. You, don't, you don't need... <laughs> I'll just look a little bleary-eyed. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and, uh, probably still from wearing the, the same clothes. From the mace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, right. Anyway, I just thought I'd keep me abreast of that. Yeah. All the breasts from London, Carl. Come on, Carl, cheer up. You had, you've had a good Carl. week. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to do a month's notice? <laughs>
<laughs> little bit of friction, little bit of friction between Steve and Carl. I think they're, uh, you know, they get into each other, which is, which well, is tr he's underpants are pinching. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Carl, cheer up. You're lucky. You know how many people uh, would would pay good money to Carl? You had a good night out this week. You went to the the Sony. You had a free meal. Yeah, that, that annoyed me. I don't. You know, we came away empty-handed, but yeah, it was a good night, wasn't it? You enjoyed that. Do you enjoy that? I ate it, but go on. I'm just finding more and more things are, are annoying me. Really? Like even like at, the, at that Sony's night, right? You've got a lot of uh, respectable people going to that thing. You know, people yeah. who are high up at the BBC and that. Yeah. And just the way you know, it's it's a posh night. There's people there with dinner jackets on and stuff. Mm. And then I, I went to the toilet for a wee. Old fella in there. I thought he looks he looks like he's been in the you know, the radio game for years, probably done loads of award winning Sony stuff. Yeah. You know, all the BBC documentaries to do, in depth stuff, and I thought, you know, I wonder if I'll be like him when I'm when I'm older, I wonder if I'm as good as him. Thinking all that, he's having a wee in the next urinal. Farts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. He just farts. <laughs> 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 old fella in a dinner jacket, probably hired. And I but it's not even it's that, like they, they that. try to, they think, well, I better do it in here, and it's sort of like a trumpet, and uh, everyone, everyone just goes, yeah, it's fine, what's up with that? You know, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Is it, it's just the arrogance of doing he, it. He just did it. Uh, it was, it sounded like a, a lost whale. <laughs> 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 and, and he didn't sort of go and try and clinch it. It went, it carried on, and then he went, oh, that was a good one. Really? Old fella, must have been about seventy. Oh dear. And what? Better out than in. Yeah. But it's not though. I wasn't. I was. I wasn't brought up like that. You see. Right. Because I did it. I mean, I never really did it that much as a kid. <laughs> sure. And then I was at my mum and dad's. You never. Sorry, you never did it that much as a kid. What farted? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not not just like, you know, as a joke and that. We are taping this for next year's Sony Award, aren't we? We're taping this, what we're talking about now, aren't we? Mm. To hand in. Because this is, go on. But I was at, at my mum and dad's, right? And, uh, Suzanne was sat on the floor in front of me and she was like, oh, rub me neck, it's hurting. So I thought, oh, and I hate doing that, it really d it bores me. Well, right? she's your girlfriend, for goodness sake. I know, yeah. Dad went and different, you're getting paid for that, go on. So I thought, the only way to shift her is I'll let one go, right? So I did that. <laughs> I love that! It's such a loving relationship. <laughs> That's great! Ah, uh, so like so doing the washing up badly. Yeah. She won't ask me again. What have you done? I've smashed the cups up <laughs> and I've written, <laughs> written in excrement across the wall. <laughs> well, that's no good, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I won't do it again then. Give me the marigolds, I'll do it. I've nailed the cat to the fridge. What's <laughs> up with that? Yeah. Go on. But yeah, so, so I did that and it worked. She sort of got up and said, oh. And my dad said, what what do you do that for? Yeah. <gasps> what was he thinking? So I said, oh, I, I, hate, I hate rubbing a neck. Doesn't he head in? So he says, you know, I've never trumped in front of your mother <laughs> for forty years. Sorry, where was this? Chigley? Why is this family talking like this? <laughs> yeah. um, I've young Carl, I've never trumped in front of your mother in the thirty-five years. <laughs> why you'd why, what I don't know what No, it's just it's just that he said, you know, we we've done a lot of things in the family. Like Hold on, what what did he say that for? What he's never he's never trumped in front of your mother. He just offered that information up. Well, he, he just was surprised that I did it. He said, where have you got that from? Yeah. Well, you, you, you lower intestines, I thought. We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. I mean, it's Fred Egan from Winchester says, uh, of course, it was recently Valentine's Day. What's the most romantic thing that you've done for Suzanne, Carl, that you can think of? Uh, I, I don't really do all that. So, uh, the Valentine's Day stuff. It's just, the problem is, if you do it once, they expect it every year. Yeah. That's, sure. that's the problem with Christmas and stuff, innit? It's like, it's become, that's what you do now, every yeah. year. Every day, yeah, yeah. So I prefer to just sort of wait, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, if I think of an idea or I know of something that she wants, I might get her something, but I might not do it on Valentine's Day, it's that thing. It's like how I've, I've said about Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> Make it Pancake Wednesday. Have it when you want. Why yeah. am I waiting? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me when I can have a pancake? I'll have it today if I want one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? As Pancake Tuesday, no, I won't bother. I'll have trifle. So, <laughs> so it's the same, same with this, you know, with Suzanne. Um, luckily, right, I mean, Valentine's Day and what have you, she was, uh, she was ill. Luckily. So, we didn't, we didn't have to go out. So, I'd say, is he asking for advice? Well, I suppose, yeah, certainly he may as well give it. Treat them when they deserve it. 
all right. I remember uh, once when Suzanne was ill, she had a fever, but there was no food in the house. What did you suggest to her? She was too ill. Well, to it cook. was it was when we were still living in Manchester and that, and uh, you know uh, we needed to get some food in for tea and stuff. And uh, I said, "Come on, come to the supermarket." She was like, "No, I'm ill. You go." And I hate buying food. I just sort of get a bit blank when I'm looking at it. There's too much, isn't there? That's the problem. You go down all these aisles and it's just too much. So anyway, I said, no, come on, come with me. She was like, oh, but I've got this fever, I'm hot and everything. So I said, well, come to the supermarket, you go on the frozen aisle, cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> and she did, and she said, you know, it made it worse, she was ill for another three days. How would you uh, go about chatting up a woman in a bar? What, what tips could you give? Um, I've, I've never, I've never worked like that. It's always been like a friend of a friend and all that, and just happened to meet them. And then, you know, you have a chat, and then... How did you meet Suzanne? Uh, that was when, uh, I was working with her. And, uh, she gave me 20p for, uh, the hot chocolate machine. She never asked for it back. I thought, she's all right. <laughs> um, been there sort of 11 years, so it works. Has she ever given you that, uh, she ever, have you, have never you ever, you've never given that 20p back? She never asked for it back. And uh, did you return the favour, perhaps on the next date? Uh... Did you buy her a Kit Kat or something? No, I don't think I did. I think I think word got out that um, <laughs> she liked me and that. And um, what did I do? I think I did some work for her. Did some editing for her to sort of show off my skills and that. <laughs> sure. And she was like, "Oh, you're good at this, aren't you?" I was like, "Yeah." And I think she got us another drink because I was I was doing that editing for her in my own time. So you're up. You're up on the deal, aren't you? Because I, I know now, I know for a fact, you've not spent any money on her in 11 years, so you are, you're 40p up. <laughs> At least. Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. Even if he's English. Yeah, if he, <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier, he's speaking English words and using uh, all the correct uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world, his frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about, because you'd have so little in common, even if he used real words. No, but he's talking English. Yeah, no, but his reference points would be just so far removed. You know, they're removed slightly when, uh, uh, if you saw two people talking about Kierkegaard, you'd, un you'd, you'd... I hear wouldn't understand that. Exactly. So remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo... Yeah. He'll, he'll be saying, oh, I'm fed up with being stuck in here. I'll go, yeah. It's like that. It depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion, does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even. Yeah, but I'd I'd pick something smaller yeah. or right. or something you know a worm without a mouth. I'd go definitely not. <laughs> what? Definitely, Definitely not, not what? what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just, I just think that a worm that's, that's underground, yeah. what's it got to offer me? <laughs> it's, it's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not gonna be a good day out with it, is what I'm saying. It's not gonna have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? <laughs> even if it's English! And how can you tell if a worm is English? Is it wear a very tiny bowler hat? <laughs> oh, Christ. But do you understand... What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where you, you can you can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them because to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish sort of have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because when when whoever made the world, right, yeah. say you know we're just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was was to have a go at him, yeah, I'd say you added too much water. <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right. So, <laughs> you, how would you have changed that? Just, just more land. Fair enough. Now, why, why, are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because, was why I was because, because there's loads of them, and when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right? There's, there's loads of that. You only have to like, like you know, I was in Malaga the other week, right? And you know, you look in the sea. There's loads of different fish, uh, and that's just in like eight foot water. 
if you go miles out, there's like all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with like lights on them and everything. So, and they're just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now, <laughs> but why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think, what, you know, rights come in in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, oh, he's an idiot, shut up, whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, best listen to him, see what they've got to say. Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. So... But they're not really making their voices heard, though, are they, Carl? Yeah. I know, because they're underwater. <laughs> but what But what I mean is, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, right, what, what do you think it's like being a crab. If you if you could go now, your mind, into a crab, what would you see? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking? What would you think of all the other things, the crabs you'd see, the the, the squids you'd see? What, what What's it like, do you think? I want you to, it's like creative writing, just think, just let yourself go. Come on. Uh, it's gotta be a crab. What do you think of a slug? What do you think to be a slug? What would you do if you were, if you were transported now into a slug, what would you do? And you, and Suzanne, you're suddenly in the kitchen, but you're a slug, and Suzanne's sort of like there, just making tea and that. How do you let her know I, it's I, you? It's impossible. I just chuck myself into the salt pot or <laughs> No, because what, what do you do? I'd, I'd hate that. I'd hate, that would be horrible, that. <laughs> oh, God. Have you ever read, uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis? Not in which a man so. wakes up and he's turned into a giant beetle? And that's the, yeah, that's the whole story. Uh... I think it might be of interest to you. So what happened to him with the beetle? Well, I don't want to ruin it for you in case you no, read it. No, I but won't it's... be reading it, don't worry. He joined a pop group with three other people. He was brilliant. No, it's a really wonderful book. It's a kind of almost heartbreaking because, of course, he, uh, he does, like Ricky's saying, he finds it very hard then to relate to other people, even though he still has the consciousness of a human. You know, his parents, his rest of his family, they don't know how to deal with him, you know, because he, he's a giant beetle. He becomes a freak, he becomes an outsider. It's terrible, you but, know. But hang on, though. Is he a giant beetle? Or yeah. is he... Well, yeah, well, that's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> That's, that course people aren't gonna like you. But if it's a normal sized one, then you just get in with the other beetles, don't you? <laughs> Whereas if you're but a giant- sort of How would you do that? How would you ingratiate yourself? Right, so you're suddenly a beetle, you're Carl Pilkington, right? There's other people, they're doing their business, they're scuttling around, and you go, you go in there and you go, and they go, they look at you as a new beetle. What, what's your first, what do you do? How do you ingratiate yourself? Well, for a bit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of barge in into their house and that. I'd, I'd wait until they're out and about. And I'd, I'd, like, like in life, right, um, sort of help them out. I don't know what beetles do all day. I've never seen one doing anything. They just seem to be going from one place to another. Right. I've never seen them carrying anything. I don't know what they eat. I don't know what they do. <laughs> I don't know why we've got them, right? But what I mean is, I'd watch them and I'd sort of help them out. And, I mean, you know, it's like going on a date or meeting a woman, isn't it? But what if you, there is Whoa, a Whoa, hang on, what do you mean? What, what, how is it like going on a date with a woman? Well, it's like I said about Suzanne with her hot chocolate. She bought me that and I've gone, she's all right. 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 She gets me another one before I know it, she's living with me. <laughs> so, it's, you So you're, 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 all these beetles, they're scrubbing around, right, you're sort of like watching them and there's, and then you realise that you want to mate with this female beetle. What do you do? What's your first move? Yeah, but I don't know what beetles do, do I? So I don't know how, how what you do. I don't know if you go up and go, all right. What do they do? How do they get on? Whoa! It's a different world. I, I don't know yet, do I? Because I haven't done it. Would you feel bad, because having your own mind in this beetle, right? Would you feel bad shagging a beetle? Would you feel that that was, that was a bit sick, because you've got a human mind? Well, no, because you just close your eyes and that, wouldn't you? Think of something else. So, get round it that way. There's no point getting down about it, because I'm stuck now as a beetle. So you've got to <laughs> get on with it. <laughs> but if you're a slug, you said you'd throw yourself in the salt pot. What would you do if you were a beetle if you got depressed? And you see all the other humans. No, you see your mates, right? They got they're listening to the iPod. What would you do? Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Though beetles are different because they mm -hmm. do tend to hang about with each other. A slug's always on its own. <laughs> it's a lonely insect, isn't it? It's, it's not an insect. All right, what is it? A mollusk. Right, they're lonely. I've never seen a load of snails all together or slugs <laughs> wandering about. Those beetles <laughs> seem to knock about in crowds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh God! Okay, right, another one. So they're sociable creatures, and it wouldn't bother you that you're that you've got the mind of Carl Pilkington in there. 
Because you um, can't communicate with these people, because they don't speak English, they don't, they don't have any communication with you. Yeah, but if it's happened to me, there'll be another one in there. Okay then. Right, okay. Mainly. Well, can I just, I noticed someone's emailed here a link for, can you believe you luck, Carl? Monkeys for sale. Now, I don't endorse this in any way, but here you are, here's a monkey for sale here. Oh, that's terrible. Two thousand five hundred dollars. Um, it says, male, very smart little guy, yeah. loves to play and gives kisses, yeah. wears diapers and clothes, yeah. has been around lots of people and loves them, healthy and loves to eat. It's dead, Sounds right? like Ricky. <laughs> How much is that? Well, it wasn't Carl, it says it loves to be around people. Yeah. There's a gibbon there, a gibbon it's for- It's pricey uh, though, it's like that, uh, Donald McIntyre program he did, that Cheapest Chimps program. He didn't do Cheapest Chimps, he oh. didn't do a program mm. called Cheapest Chimps. He's saying that, but- Well he didn't! Mm. There's that no point, did Donald McIntyre do a program called Ch Play a record a minute. Play a record. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, Carl, um, we're talking about having kids and stuff. I've always been quite thankful that Ricky's never wanted to have kids, because, um, I just think he would set the worst example for a child that he possibly <laughs> could do. Um, just in conversation the other day, just happened to mention that he's taken to eating in the bath. Yeah, well, let me explain to him. Let me explain to him. Right. Um, I've got busy schedules. Yeah. <laughs> I get up, I, I meet Steve at a certain time, and I go, oh, I've got to go at 3.30 today, Steve. I'm working out at 4. I work out at 4 till 5. I have to have something to eat before I go out, and I often meet Johnny for a beer at 6 or something, or something like that. So, I thought, oh, God. Um, if I go around and have a bath straight after, then I have something to eat, I go, well, I've got, uh, sometimes there's chicken legs, right, and they're greasy. So one day I thought, hold on, I'll go to the bath with the chicken legs, I'll eat them in the bath, and it's brilliant, so I'm sitting in the bath, I eat the chicken egg, it's really greasy, right, I just throw it in the bin, go under the water, come up, I'm clean. <laughs> I've eaten, I'm clean, I get dressed, I go, I'll meet Johnny. I've lined my stomach. And the good thing about that is that when I come home, I threw beers, and uh, I've eaten the chicken, I go, oh, there's the only bread left, I just wipe it round the bath, I've got a lovely bread and dripping sandwich, that's not true, that bit. But I do, I do, I do eat in the bath. I mean, I, I, the second week of doing it, I was just eating in the bath, I was eating, I think I was in chicken legs again, I'm eating in the bath. Jane walked past, just looked in at me, and she went, Christ, Caligula. Well, just me, a fat Roman emperor eating. <laughs> Caligula, to be honest, is just too cool and impressive. Not Caligula, old man Steptoe. Have you seen the one where he's in the bath eating the pickled onions? No. He sat in the bath, he literally sat in the bath <laughs> eating some pickled onions. Some of them slip under the water, he fishes them out, put them back in the jar. I'd never do that. No, you, well, you'd eat them. <laughs> you would never lie. You, you, you wouldn't let food no. go by like that. But it's so. Uh, but it's the fat. It's chicken. It's big, greasy slabs of chicken. Yeah. You're throwing the bones on the floor. No, I'm <laughs> for, for the wolves to scavenge. <laughs> I'm fighting them in the bit. Stop biting your nails, Carl. Not only can you hear it, it's really rude. I don't know. I, what? Yeah, you're criticising him. Yeah, criticising him for biting his nails. Yeah, you don't know where they've been. You eat chicken in the bath and then <laughs> go under the water and come up clean, whilst sat in some water swimming with grease <laughs> and fat. <laughs> And chicken yeah. bones. Yeah, <laughs> And breadcrumbs. <laughs> well, I like to bath. I like to bath like I, I, two I, or three I, times I a day. Like, but do you not see why that's not cool and impressive? It's not like we're all gonna go, why haven't we all thought of that? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest though, Steve, that is the only time I eat oranges. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, that is, that, that's, I, I've always thought that, an orange, I go, oh god, this is too annoying, and I don't bother. I don't bother eating oranges, unless I they're tangerines, you can peel them in one and put them in in one. It, I do not, I don't have big jaffas, that's just not, it's not worth it. What is wrong with you? you w firstly, have you ever thought about cutting an orange into four quarters with a knife? Waste. What do you mean, a waste? More washing up. <laughs> Yeah, right, so, so this is what you got this is why you can't sleep at night. Because you think, I've got to run a bath and have an orange. I haven't got time. I'd love an orange now, I need the vitamin C, but I've got to run a bath for it. At least have a shower. I'm not gonna be in there with another man. Oh, oh dear. It's like, you, the two of you are just, you, you are like children. You're infants. Your mentality <laughs> is ludicrous. And you're embarrassing us in front of our special guests. Oh yeah. I uh, can't believe it. Now, of course, last week we've had, to it. we've had a number of letters, Rick. I'm just reading them now. Saying, okay. last week, loved your interview with Chris Martin from Coldplay. Yeah. Genius. Another one here. Great insight into the man who wrote Yellow and <laughs> Clocks. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, yeah. Steve Merchant's interview with uh, Chris Martin was amazing. He showed his own TV show. Yeah, Just yeah. some of the letters we've received for it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this week, we're very lucky to have with us uh, Russian pop act Tattoo. Round of applause Hi. for them. Hello. Lovely to have them here. Uh, Tattoo. Now then, of course, it's been much contra- 
be much controversy that your kind of lesbian shtick is mm. just something to try and whip up some um, press attention. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is that we, are, <laughs> we, are, we are proper lesbians. We uh, we love Fanny more than cock. <laughs> okay, brilliant. And uh, tattoo, lovely to have you. Yeah, um, yeah, for coming. Yeah. Um, now then, uh, you've got uh, you've got some live gigs. I understand plan. Yeah, duh. Okay. I can't help but notice that you sound, dare I say it, Tata, you don't sound so much Russian as German. No, yeah, we cannot do the accent properly. From okay. <laughs> and, uh, Tata, it's a joy to have you. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, um, no, yeah. and finally, yeah, you. uh, your lesbians could, would, for instance, either myself or Carl be able to convert you yeah, from yeah, the lesbian yeah, yeah. ways? We, we like the muff so much that the knob is no good for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks very much, Tattoo. Yeah, thanks, Tattoo. Thanks very much. Cheers. Yeah. Um, extraordinary. Ne so next week, share. Brilliant. So if you've got any guests, <laughs> special guests you love us to interview, uh, then let us know. Wiki. <laughs> Carl's face. <laughs> Carl's face. And we'll try and get there. Oh, in. dear. Play with Carl. Rockbusters answers next. I was going to say, well, do you want to do that? No, let's do it next. All after right. the, after the record. I was just going to say something. <laughs> what were you going to say? <laughs> About gays and that. What? In a bit. What were you going to say? Oh, we'll look forward to that. <laughs> Martina Topley Bird. Need one on XFM 104.9. Right, there goes the girls from Tattoo. See you later. Well Thanks, done. Thanks, girls. Cheers. I'll right, a couple of Carl, there. um, what were you saying before we cut you off? Um, yeah, it's just like, you, you know, you had the girls in and that, and it reminded me, I was talking to <laughs> Steve in the week. Yeah. Um, I, th I think, I think it's, uh, when people were talking about going to string fellas and that. Yeah. I was talking about seeing Naked people. Ah, no, yes, I asked him, I said, when he used to watch, uh, say, if he accidentally flipped onto BBC Two and some ballet was on, would his eye ever been drawn to maybe the gentleman's lower regions <laughs> rather the than the ladies? The gentleman's package? Yeah, would, would your eyes ever be accidentally drawn to that and you couldn't resist it? And Did you your... said, and you said, yes. Yeah, because, right, oh, I don't dear. think I'm a... Uh... Oh dear. Well, go on, I mean, fair enough. No, all right. I'm I always went... looking at the beautiful ladies, but, but fair enough. Yeah. No, go on. But... Right. Have I you ever looked at Wayne Sleep's testicles? I went, I went out- Have you ever looked at Wayne Sleep's, uh, penis and testicles? I went out on a night out, right? And it was some, uh, it got to some point in the night where two women mm. and two fellas got on the stage. Right. Right? Uh, started stripping off. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah. what, members of the audience? No, no, I think they were, like, part of the act, right? Right. And, uh- What was this, Panto? They down the, you know, the fellas were, I'd like their undies on, and the, and the girls just had their knickers on. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, uh... Sounds pretty erotic at the moment. Go on. And, at the same time, they all whipped the pants off. Yes. Right? Yeah. It now, was Spuck's Fizz, wasn't it? The, the, <laughs> yeah. the adult show. Now I said to Steve, at that point... Sorry, I wasn't there. He said it to me later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah! I yeah. said, well, well, you have a, you have a quick glance at the fellas. And then the annoying thing was... You sort of, I thought, right, now I'll have a look at the women, and it was too late, they put the knickers on. <laughs> How long were you looking at the feathers? Not that long, but- But why were like, you looking at them first? Uh, it's human nature, isn't it? Why? I don't know, but I'm sure you would have done the same thing. You just, you why? just sort of think, well, how, uh, how are they shaping up? <laughs> so I it's, a, it's a comparative up test. So what was the, what was the, who had the biggest knob? Who had the, which one of the blokes had the biggest knob? No, they were, they, it's like, you know, normal. <laughs> but, I, I, that's, this that's is all. A, this is a whole new side of you. This is a whole other area. So you look at ball ballet dancers, you look at the gentlemen's No, I don't. Package. I just was, when he said this, it yeah. reminded me of this night when I was walking home thinking, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Didn't, didn't get a look. Because I was messing Where up. was this? What, what <laughs> event was this where people are stripping off? Carl, i tell you what. You are the most interesting man I have ever met. When it, where is this information? I wouldn't have known that. I might have gone around, you know, with, uh, you know, if it was hot weather, yeah. know, something to mop my brow, I wouldn't have known that. Like, what, can't the gay people kind of notify us? Can't we have some kind of website or something well, we can the, check Do you still out? go to that pub with all those sort of, like, butch blokes? Lovely with, um, guys. With the uh, moustaches and, yeah. yeah. the caps, great guys. A lot of them are firemen, a lot of them are, like, traffic cops. Great people. You know what I mean? You know, you know you're safe in there. Yeah, it also yeah, there's well. no whim into it. Oh, no, 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 it's like you're just having a great time with the lads and there's nothing. It's just playing pool, stripped to your waist. 
<laughs> yeah. I can talk. Oh, yeah. my back's still hurt. Okay, yeah, a little bit of hip-hop. It's nice to have, uh, occasional hip-hop tune, just keep it, you know, it's, it's some, yeah, uh, yeah, you'll yeah, be cruising yeah, around yeah, in your yeah. open-top shed. Now, Steve, I see there it's a track by Little Kim, but how are you pronouncing it? I'm pronouncing that correctly, Lil Kim. Oh, no T's involved. And it's the jump off featuring Mr. Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I find that funny, <laughs> but Mr. Cheeks is involved. <laughs> if you can spot him, good luck. <laughs> Uh, I believe that's Mr. Cheeks there. <laughs> just, uh, just bust it on the mic. And that's called the jump off. Talking of Cheeks, Carl, have we got another instalment of Cheeky Freak of the Week this week? Yeah. Have we? <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Look forward yeah. to that. Is there some monkey news? Goes without saying. Of course. Does it really? With that monkey news is safe, isn't it? It's not like, uh... You're always going home with monkey news. You know it's there. Yeah. It's like um, songs of praise on the Sunday. I sp uh, when I came back on holiday, I've been on holiday for a week, and, uh, I sort of sat in by the pool and stuff, and I sort of wrote about forty minutes stand up with a new, the, my new yeah. show, and I was going to the car. I said, "It's great when you get away. It's sort of like you are relaxing. You just you just think clearly." He went, he, "I know, I know, I know." He said, "I was away when I came up with Rockbusters." Yeah, indeed, <laughs> absolutely. I was buzzing about writing forty minutes of brand new stand up. Yeah, he equated that to coming up with Rockbusters. Should I be insulted, Steve? Or is Rockbusters as good as everyone's saying it is? <laughs> <laughs> is um, it is it the one good idea? Is it like EMC e equals MC squared? Was to Einstein is to you know Rockbusters is to Carl. What if I do this? Rick? What if we if I played you some adverts right now? Yeah, and then we, we came talk back about with it. some Rockbusters. Yeah, you could you could make the judgment oh, yourself. Maybe I'll do Rockbusters and show people how easy it is to do it wrong. <laughs> Adverts, then rock busters. And a cup of lovely coffee. Cup of coffee in the pot. Yeah, coffee, coffee. Coffee. I want a cup of coffee. <laughs> Placebo. This picture, XFM. What's Carl doing? What's he rooting I around don't know, there? But listen, while he's doing that, can I just say uh, happy birthday from all of oh, us to, uh, oh, yeah. to Shan. Her friend Terry said, uh, play some placebo for uh, Shan. So happy birthday well, to that's her. Done. That's, that's done. That's done. Cross that off the list. Yeah, that's another thing we've got through Ding today. Rock busters, please. Do you want to, um,. Look at the prizes. I'll have a look at the prizes, see what people, uh, can win. It's an email-only competition, please remember that. Alright, we've got the, uh, Later with Jules Holland, uh, Louder DVD. There's stuff on there from the Cardigans, Rollins is on there, Mercury Rev, Sonic Youth, the Datsuns, Queens of the Stone Age. Hold on, wait a minute, they're all great bands, but I think they need a boogie-woogie piano at the top of everything <laughs> they do. Well, it's... hopefully Jules Holland would have, uh, Okay, helped. good, good, yeah. good, good, because that, there was something missing there on most of those tunes. Yeah, current album from Goldfrapp, that's there as well. What have we got this on DVD, The Life of Mammals, the complete series of that. A couple of, uh, we've got the Inspiral Carpets. Again, a three CD set of the best of the Inspiral Carpets. I don't know how they've strung it over three CDs. <laughs> um, the best one hit wonders in the world ever. <laughs> And, um, let me see. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, a three yeah. CD set. A three CD the best set. Doing well, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. I'm assuming CD3 is just the Corals album. <laughs> Anyway, there's some, some good tweets there. You've sourced, oh sourced some dear. good stuff this week. Alright. Well, uh... Alright. Yeah. Here's, here's All your right. clues, Here's your rockbusters, yeah. All right. Uh, cryptic clue, a well. couple of initials, and, uh... And you sort that out. Right. <laughs> uh, first what one. What was Dr. Fox on about that we don't... We don't sound like proper presenters. It's, I don't, strange, I, isn't it? uh, it's mad. Go on, Carl. Right, the first one. Uh, a customer wanted some paint to darken up a room. Shop assistant knew what to do. Right? Customer wanted some paint to darken up a room. The shop assistant knew what to do. The initials there, C B. Right? C B. C B for the oh, first right. one there. Right. Uh second one, it'd be alright if uh if their heads weren't that big. Right? And again? It would be alright if their heads weren't that big. And that's uh S F. S F. Yeah. And the last one I know that. I know right. that one. Yeah, go on. And the last one, uh Chanel, I've got another perfume out. N O, right? Chanel, I've got another perfume out. N O. You email in Ricky dot Gervais x of dot co uk. That's that done. And those prizes can be yours. Yeah. More music, please. Bit of uh, Bob Marley. Are any of these going to annoy me? Oh, I've got to stir it up. Yeah. Brilliant. Are any of these clues going to annoy me this week? No, they're all good. Are they really? Yeah. Right. Right. So Rockbusters. Uh, Rockbusters number one was about a customer who wanted some paint. Wanted to darken up a room. The shop assistant knew what to do. What did she do? The initials were CB. Cellar Black. Right? S cellar Black. Cellar some you black. You see, paint. I thought Cellar Black, because it's CB, and I thought, well, it can't be, because it's not Cellar. It's not Sell Her Black. Cryptic, it's a cryptic, though, isn't it? No, no, cryptic doesn't mean it's wrong. Uh, they all <laughs> got it. They all got it anyway, so. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Uh, second one. It would be alright if the reds weren't that big, right? 
Right. The initials uh, are SF. Well, well uh, one of my favourite bands, yeah. Yeah. The, the smaller faces, isn't yeah. it? Small uh, faces. Well, no, that doesn't make sense. Okay, go on then. Uh, and the final one, uh, Chanel have got another perfume out. Right. I just say we've had an email from one of our uh, listeners who said if this turns out to be new order, he's never listening to XFM again. What's, what's, the, what's the, the clue again? Chanel, I've I've got another perfume out. N new odor. Right. Well, that's another listener gone. Right. Yeah. Well, we'll be a judge of that. Right. Ricky Doctor Vays at XFM dot co dot UK. Stir it up. Bob Marley on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Wait, did you get up today and just see the great weather and think, do you know what, I'd love to hear some stir it up from Bob Marley. Yeah, yeah, yeah? I did actually. Well, I was gonna play it last, uh, the week before last, before I went away, and we didn't, we didn't have time. So, uh... Well, we were crammed full of features, like this one. Have we got a cheeky freak of the week? Do you want one? Yeah. yeah. Let's, let, I think we should have a jingle for this. Okay, I've got, I've, uh, yeah, I've got a jingle. It's very similar to Chimpanzee. Ch Chimpanzee that. Yeah. Well, let's hear it, let's hear it. Okay. Oh, cheeky freak of the week. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, no, I think that's excellent. So, cheeky okay. freak of the week. You've spotted a this freak of the week. This is where, this is where somewhat, I think, offensively, you pick on someone who's, who's not like other people and say it's your favourite freak of that week. Yeah, I remember well, we had the woman whose uh, legs look like the hind legs of a dog. Um, we've had the little fella with the aging disease with the little head playing the piano. That's, that was your favourite. I think that's your probably freak of the year, isn't it? It's a pretty so, good one. So wh what, 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 what's this? Is it a man um, with a, a horrendous injury or is it a congenital um, birth defect or what? Yeah, but you put it like that and now it sounds like I'm being tight. Sounds like I'm being out of order. But I'm just giving them a mention. <laughs> Just giving him a big shout out. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's <laughs> quite a lot going on in the freak world. Um, <laughs> there always is. You've, what, you've been visiting hospitals the last week, have you, when we were away? No, there was a, there was a thing on the, on a website. This isn't even the one that I've picked, so. So this is just a bonus. This is a bonus freak. Yeah. yeah, go on yeah. then. Uh, this is a free freak. It's a fella called a lobster man. The lobster man, of course. <laughs> Again, good name, you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what are you gonna get? He's some got... some succulent <laughs> meat. I like the idea with... that, I like the idea that the vicar on the christening suggested that. <laughs> I know you wanna call him Mark. Can I make a suggestion? <laughs> yeah. Look at his hands. What's his name? <laughs> uh, Mark Michael uh, Webster. Right. Um right. Uh, yeah, have, have I thought about a nickname. Not really, no. Have you got no, have you his hands? Yeah, it, we, we don't want to talk about that because Do it's, you know they look it's, a little it's bit like lobsters. Well, yeah, but it's quite deformed. It's like, you know, we can't- Can I suggest lobster man? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible, Vicar. <laughs> that is terrible, Vicar. We're- Pitchy. We're <laughs> Go on, then. Yeah. We're gonna, gonna see. This is what the sort of feature you come up with, Carl. So, lobster man. There's probably people listening now with, you know, lobster feet. Right. Lobster hands. So, um- Squid boy. <laughs> so, lobster man, what does, uh, what does lobster man do? Does he uh, fight crime? Not that much. Okay. Apparently he got into a bit of trouble. He was in a restaurant and uh, this was years ago by the way. And someone picked him to eat him? No, so the, apparently <laughs> yeah. the waiter uh, said, oh you shouldn't be sat here, you should be in my, my pan or something. Oh dear. And it, uh, they had a fight, got out of hand. Yeah. Oh, got out of claw. And uh, yeah, yeah, so that, that was- What do you mean they had a fight? What, 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 I mean, what did he do? A waiter took the mickey out of someone yeah. with- no. No, no, can I just make clear? I'm assuming it's his hands look a bit like those of a lobster. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're, they're fused, so it's just like two big fingers. They're right. fused, I assume, probably in the womb, and they're just like, instead of like having yeah, five yeah, digits, yeah. they're fused and it. But it, well, he can pick stuff up, can't he? Yeah. What does he pick up? He mainly eats crabs and jellyfish, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was having a fight with the waiter, he, he snipped off his nose. <laughs> Right, so anyway, he's just he's just held on to the waiter's bib, yeah, and the exactly, waiter was yeah. screaming, "Go and get him off me!" Yeah. So yeah. anyway, does he eat other lobsters? Does he? <laughs> does he think he would eat lobster, <laughs> or is it kind of? <laughs> do, uh, would he feel bad about eating lobster? Right. The, the little cheek of the freak that we've gone for, anyway. <laughs> the what? The little uh, freak of the week, yeah. cheeky freak of the week. Mm. We've gone for um, this Siamese lad. Okay. Right. Happened back in. Uh, you can't have a Siamese lad, can you? All right. Yeah. This Siamese twins, uh, happened back in 1693. Oh, he's got a date, blindness, first time ever. Yeah. Um, 
and all it was, he was he was doing all right for himself. He, he used to go on the like those circus things he used to do. They're two people you're talking about, Carl. So we're going to him. All right then. All right. They 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 did this circus show, right? Yeah. And uh, everything's going well. They, they, you know, they're they selling out the tents and stuff. People coming to see them. Yeah. Um, he was doing all right for himself. Yeah. Right. Did, um, sorry, before I said that, did you think a Siamese twin was a man with two heads? Well, it can be, can't it? It depends. There there is, there's, there's, there's two people. They're conjoined. No, no, no. But it depends, doesn't it? The one that I showed you in that book that time was a fellow with two heads. No, it wasn't. That was that was a, a, a was a uh, a stupid picture in one of your stupid books that he had a growth that looked a little bit like it had a face on it. It wasn't a man with two heads. You're the same sort of people who send g potato chips to Esther Ranson and say, "Doesn't it look like Norman Cook?" Yeah. It's not two heads. <sighs> We'll bend this feature. No! Well, no, it's, it's just- They're two people. They're two people. Conjoined twins. Yeah. Right, so these- It's just that don't, they just happen to have a similar taste in clothes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so there's, yeah, they were doing all right and it all went wrong when he crossed the road, got run over. The lad with two heads got run over. That's it. <laughs> what?! How is that- how is that Jiggy Freak of the Week? Just beca- just because it got my interest and I kind of thought, why didn't he just look both ways? <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued to know why how you- Why wasn't he looking both ways? I'm oh. intrigued to know how you, uh, how you get run over him. What was it, 1629? Yeah. Well, it's horses and that, right? Yeah. Oh, why wasn't he looking both ways? <laughs> Carl, Carl Pilkington, you are a genius. <laughs> Because you're around forever then, aren't you? Once you're a ghost, that's it. So the idea of being blind when you're alive, you go, well, all right, then maybe in the afterlife I might be treated to a pair of eyes. But the fact of wandering about, dead for years, bumping into stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, it's amazing! So, oh, that's an amazing image! So I didn't tick that box. <laughs> but, but, but why, I don't understand, in your theory of the afterlife, why is it that you, you ghost, you, this ghostly car, why can he survive without a heart, but he can't survive without eyes? What, why, do you see what I mean? Surely if you're this ghostly apparition, you can just see everything and you can do everything. You don't need no, because, the, the body no, because, because you're a ghost. Think, yeah, I know, but I think it, when you're a ghost, say like how they've seen ghosts in, um... Right, could I just say now for any listeners, um, this is not the thoughts and beliefs of the management. There is no such thing as ghosts. I do not believe in ghosts. I do not believe in ESP or any mumbo jumbo. Carry on, Carl. So when there's a ghost, yeah. When, when, you know, when they see ghosts in, like, old castles and stuff. Mm. Yeah. They've had their head cut off because they've been up to no good, right, years ago. But they're carrying it around, Norman, under their arm. That's what I'm saying. It hasn't reattached itself. So if you tap the eyes out... But Carl, how is this ghostly creature able to function? It's, it doesn't have its head on anyway. It's carrying it under its arm. So the suspicion is it doesn't need its head. No, it, it does. It just happens it, to be carrying it around because it, no, it you know, wants to keep it with it. The ghost it, is always in the last condition that it was in when it was in... Oh, well, who I makes did. these rolls? The, the way you are in your last bit of life is how you are as a ghost forever. Even in the fashion. Like I say, the ghosts that you see you never wear modern clothes, so they, it's always the Victorian stuff. <laughs> Now, God. if they could change it, they would, but they can't because they stuck with it. So that's why did you see cavemen eyes. ghosts? When did ghosts start? They didn't kick in till about eighteen thirty, did they? What if you die when you're having a rectal examination? Are you always bent forward with your trousers around your ankles and someone's finger up your ass? But why would you die when you're having that done? That's why I'm not having it done. If that's you no, 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 no. But you, it, it might have both been suddenly um, killed in a in a terrible disaster. Yeah, a meteorite hit you. That's when you get the moaning ghosts, isn't it? That's the other ones who aren't happy. So you're going round, bent forward, going, you've got oh. a doctor's finger up your ass, yeah. and what are you doing? You're sort of going, oh. And that's when you have to get the vicar round. <laughs> what do you mean? Because <laughs> they, they have to put you to, to rest and what have you, don't they? And what does a vicar do when he's going, are you go so I, so I get the vicar round, it's years later, it's a hundred years later, you're, 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 you're around this doctor's surgery and there's people coming, and the doctor there, the new doctor there, and it's, it's 2073, and they, they go, Vicar. Vicar. They go, Vicar, there's a, there's a, a strange ghost here, it's, it looks like an old doctor, right, and he's got his fingers up this sort of like little, it's like a chimpanzee but with a shaved head. No, no, but the doctor wouldn't be, are you saying the doctor dies as yeah, well? They you both, yeah, you both no, they die, you die at the same time with his finger up your ass, and so you're forever, you're forever having a little rectal examination with your little trousers around your ankles. Well, that's when it'd be best not to have your eyes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Rick, I know this is something you always get excited about. It's Carl's Diary. Can we have a jingle? I don't believe it! He's got a really good! <laughs> Thank you very much. Woke up to the news about an elephant in India that had sore feet, so the locals have made it a big pair of slippers. Tried to look online for a picture, but I couldn't find anything. Sure they've made it two pairs of slippers. Uh, well, I'm only going by the facts in the diary, Rick, and I would have thought that they were absolutely bona fide and fact-checked. Completely <laughs> yeah. accurate. I'd be very yeah. surprised if there's any mistakes in here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure they've done this for an elephant before. Uh, I thought elephants have bad memories. No, well, they no have. But fair enough. I thought elephants have bad memories. If they have, I'm guessing it's gonna keep forgetting where it's left them. I mean, just to get the... if it's a myth, the myth completely wrong. Yeah. Elephants well, never forget. That's the saying. Not they always forget, so you can buy them slippers every year. Carl says, I haven't had a pair of slippers for years. He thinks they're dying out. No, I love slippers. I love a pair of slippers, I love mate. a pair of slippers, mate. Just wear socks. Oh, no. Slidey on a car. No. Slidey on a, on a piece of lino. I know. And what about if you, you know, maybe opening a, a, a brand new box of thumbtacks? <laughs> you drop them all over the floor, you're trying to pick them up. Rick, I've got to pop across the road to get some milk. But, but it's, it's right opposite. I'm sure you're not going to go in my socks, though. I? I don't want to put on the shoes, it's mad. No, no, no. Pop some slippers on. Oh, perfect, yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't go out in your slippers. Why not? Just across the street, mate, to get some milk. Because they're inside shoes. You don't go rowing about on tarmac in slippers. That's basic. But you don't have any slippers, so no, you're just tiptoeing across the street. You know, I put can... my shoes on. But you can, you can, you can, you can pop out and get the uh, the, the paper and you know the, the bottle of milk, can't you, in the slippers without without any harm done? No. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make it into the diary. Tried to have a shower, but there was no water. <laughs> I love it when he calls me and things go yeah. wrong with the flat. But I like the fact that he tried to have a, he tried to have a shower, but there's no water. How long did it take you before you realised <laughs> he was there for 20 minutes? Yeah, after 20 minutes, he said, Suzanne, should I be dry? Well, yeah, I'm freezing cold. Yeah, no, no, you should, you should be sort of wet and warm. <laughs> right, there's no water then. <laughs> Brilliant. I called the service charge people, but no one was about. Looked outside, but couldn't see any work going on. Great, in it. In India, they can sort out elephants with shoes. In London, we have no water. <laughs> <laughs> Hung about for a bit, but still no sign of any water. Brush my teeth just using the paste, and use the little bit that was in the kettle to have a wash. I was pretty chuffed that I thought of using that. Suzanne was a bit annoyed because she wanted a cup of tea. She said, go across the road and buy a big bottle of water. Not in your socks. Pop some slippers on. Go across the road and buy a big bottle of water, she said. I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You had a wash using the water in the, in the bottom the of the kettle. Yeah, well, that's clean, isn't it? But how much? There's only a little drop in there. No, it's a big kettle. So why did you just wash your face? Yeah. So you didn't, you didn't wash your body or anything? Your genitals well, you were... you couldn't, could you? You've got to look at what, what you can do with the water available. People in Africa and that shot of water aren't wasting it, so no. <laughs> The feet are a bit dirty. They drink it. What do you mean? Add a look online to see what's been going on. Scientists say that Everest, brackets, the mountain, just in case you've confused that with any other Everests. Maybe the, uh, double glazing people. Yeah. You say that, pe scientists say that Everest has grown a bit. The way they were talking about it, you'd have thought it's grown loads. It's only inches. No, isn't that... They found out that... It's actually a couple of inches taller than they first thought because their methods of measuring are more accurate than they were 20 years ago. So it's bigger than they thought it was. It hasn't grown. No, I just think what's happened is at the bottom, because of like people, keep, people are always climbing up it, aren't they? Right? Yeah. So they're sort of wearing away the Don't soil at the bottom. It's rubbish. So, so they also, also pushed it down. It's, it's also just measured pushed. against sea level. It's not measured about when you get, otherwise they'd just dig a big hole, wouldn't they, and go, right, it's down to here. If the, the no, peak is measured at, at against the the day, sea though, level. Does it matter at the end of the day? No, but it's just nice to know, isn't it? Yeah, but that's what, I, what I'm saying is we don't need to know that. It's not going to put anyone off. Like Brian Blessed, who's always climbing up there for fun, he's not going to go, oh, I could handle it last year, but oh, two more inches. Forget that. Going to be shattered. <laughs> so don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter how big it is. Something else, though, that's happened since, right? Um, they were climbing up there and someone got near the top and uh, they were sort of climbing up like that, holding the cliff edge and that. And they'd forgotten the flag, had to go back. No, the, their hand hit the bit of rock and it went like, ding. Like, what's that? Like, ding, ding. Put another hand up, ding, ding. Piano under there. They don't know how it's got there. Right, you're talking shit again. Someone's been tipping. 
Well, oh, right. Right. Up average. Okay. The council won't even take away your washing machine unless you pay them. They're I'm not, not going to sneak up Everest. No, this is the problem, isn't it? Because the council won't take anything. People are going, what can we do with this? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just, just, I'll tell you what. Yeah, yeah. Just sneak up Everest. It'll take you nine days. <laughs> and it may, you may die. But just pop it up on Everest. Well, I know for a fact that you've confused you've confused a few things there because I think the the piano being found was actually somewhere in Scotland, some kind of moor in Scotland, and they found a piano up there, yeah. and everyone said, "I don't understand how's the piano doing up here." And it turned out that some guy, one of these people who like tries to break world records, Hoax, had dragged oh, right. dragged a piano up there as some kind of feat of endurance. Yeah. But thought I'll be damned if I'm going to take it back again, and just left it up there. It wasn't you know bloody tipping or aliens or anything. Some scientists have come up with a cure for bird flu. It's somewhat to do with some stuff in horses. They gave the flu to a mouse and then injected it and it's well again. I think we should stop coming up with cures for things as the germs are just getting stronger and stronger. I reckon by 2020, germs will be so big that we will be able to see them in the air. They will no longer be little particles. You wouldn't swallow one. If you did, it won't be the germ that will kill you. You'll just choke to death. I think that's, that's how we'll die in the future. Choking on enormous giant on germs. germs. And then what, they'll be like rampaging around the cities, will they you, like... I'll tell you what though, right, no, I'm getting worried now because the stuff he believes and thinks of, uh, it, 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 I mean, it could be mental. Do you know what I mean though? Like a proper paranoid sort of, it, one of those people that assume are going to live in a loft covered in tin foil. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, uh, pages of the Bible all the way around the... You know, and yeah. Suzanne's <laughs> having to put on a, some sort of spacesuit to come in and give him his beans on toast. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to have to polish each bean. That's, what, that's yeah. what scientists do, isn't it? They just sort of think, of think ahead of everyone else. That's what I'm doing. And the weird thing is, right, Steve, um, sometime last week, um, there was a science piece which was close to what I'd already said. Yeah. That they've got some germs sure. that like eating sugar, right? They stick them in a the lunchbox with a chocolate bar. Within an hour, it was gone. Right? And they say, now these germs love chocolate and Did stuff. Did this scientist leave it near this fat scientist that works in the same laboratory? And he went, it's unbelievable. Uh, he said, Ted, he went, what? <laughs> right, I put the chocolate bar in here with the germ, I came and it's gone, that's amazing. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant, that. Do it again. What? Do it again. Leave another one, see if it happens again. So in the future, you're running around and germs are... Eating chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> That's not science, that's Pac-Man. <laughs> no, I got some... See the difference where I, I named the species, explained it slightly, told you an interesting fact, mm. as opposed to, there's this monkey, right? And, uh... Look at him looking at you. Yeah, it's he's not interested, Rick. <laughs> can I tell you now, can I try and describe for people the face that Carl has? I'll tell you what it's like, it's like if you draw, um, some eyes, a nose and a mouth, on a balloon, and then inflate it to about half full. <laughs> That's what Carl's face looks like. That's what his head looks like. It looks like a face you've drawn on a balloon. Very small, the rest of the head huge. It's, it's just that today I'm a, I'm a bit tired, right? Mm. That's one thing. Why are you a bit tired? I just haven't been sleeping, right? Why not? I don't know, I've got a lot going on in my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if this would be like The Simpsons, if we could actually look in there, there would be two monkeys grooming yeah. you. Uh, Plus, you've, you've been talking about, like, Stuff that I can't relate to and that, so I'm- What, um, writing poetry? Like what? Reading books. Yeah, what? doing poetry and stuff. I never did any of that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? At, well, at school they didn't- they didn't bother. They tried to get us to write more, <laughs> right? Right. By, uh Giving you a pen? Well, they, they used to give us these school diaries. Yeah. Little- little red book. <laughs> and it was a way that they kept an eye on what you were doing out of school hours. Right. right so some kids would write down, you know. <laughs> Stole a bike. Yeah, burnt a right. house down. Yeah. But when I was at school, around that sort of twelve age, I, had, I didn't get up to much. You have no money, there's no you can do. So every night it was the same thing. I'd get home and you, I'd have to- I'd have to go to the shop, right, and get some potatoes and some bread every mm -hmm. night, right? And I kept taking this into school. Sorry, what was it? Dublin in the 17th century? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean every day you went to the shops and got potatoes and bread? <laughs> That's- that's kind of what I had to get all the time. That's, <laughs> what, that's what why? What did you have? Chip sandwiches? <laughs> yeah. Right, and, so uh, you went to the- yeah, you went there. So I kept- With I kept your hoop and that, stick. I kept, <laughs> yeah, I kept, yeah! I kept putting that in the diary, you know, every night saying, <laughs> went, to, went to Euphase, that was the name of the shop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is it called? Euphase. What is it, you or you? 
Like H-U-G-H phase. H-U-G-H, yeah. Oh, that was his name? U phase, right. right. You used yeah. to go there, get the potatoes and bread, bread and that. I what, have to what? pat someone who's named a shop after themselves. <laughs> I'm not gonna say what we sell, it's named after me or nothing, or I'm not opening. <laughs> Mainly potatoes and bread. Uh, yeah. White sliced loaves, King Edwards. And the teacher used to always say, just write something different in there, make something up. Yeah. Cause like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, all the way through to Friday, every <laughs> night it was just, Went to you phase. Yeah. <laughs> Went to you phase. So you sort of, you, you think Are you sure, it's sure it wasn't an advert? Sure it wasn't paying you to say, uh, get my name in the book? <laughs> yeah. The only, t the only time that it changed and she said, oh, that's, that's made it a bit more interesting, was when it was my birthday and I had to buy a cake. Potatoes and a cake. And she said, oh, that's good. Yeah. That was my thirteenth birthday. My mum said, I got home from school, she said, oh, you're thirteen today. Teenager, big, big turnover. Go and get a cake. That's your experience of writing? No, what, well, no, that's of, your yes. experience of your thirteenth birthday. Oh, by the way, you're thirteen today, go and get a cake. Yeah. Brilliant. Big surprise? Was yeah. it a big surprise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is brilliant. So I love it. That's that the only sort of writing. Well, yeah. and they never asked you to write essays or stories? Did anything? you never write a story or a poem or a- The stories I did earlier on were, you know, you, you made them up but it was that thing that I'd, I'd always end them with <laughs> and an alarm went off and it was all a dream. Every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't, they didn't, I mean it was a bit of a- <laughs> I, I, bought, some, I bought some potatoes and some <laughs> yeah. bread, then I went down and it was all the dream. Know, <laughs> then I went to Johnson and bought some potatoes and yeah. bread. But did, did you ever do anything that write about an adventure when you were a spaceman or you were in, you know, you were uh, a cowboy or- No? Yeah, all the teachers like had scams going on so like- <laughs> In English, right, <laughs> you'd go in there and the teacher would say, right, what we're doing today is, got a load of brochures from Thompson, but they say like 1983 on the front, so I've got a load of stickers here that say 1984, let's see how many you can do in half an hour. You are joking. Did you go I'm to school with Oliver Twist? <laughs> Sorry, you are joking. I'm not, that's what they did. So the teacher must have been getting like a freebie or something for helping them out. You, is this- Honest, Honestly, yeah, that's what it's- That is fantastic. They were all after it, they all, all, <laughs> they were all and, Other than Mr. Fagan, you had- Yeah. <laughs> and then when they saw Karate Kid, they had the, every kid washing their car going, wax on, wax off, hurry yeah. up. Yeah. I'm teaching, I'm teaching you something, wax on, wax off, paint the fence. So I'm just saying, you know, that's, that's why I'm a bit quiet, cause you're talking about stuff I can't, can't relate to. And why, and why didn't you sleep last night? I'm just, I, I haven't slept well for, for since I was about twelve. <laughs> Do you sleep well, Steve? Oh, wait, 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 you can't let that go! I haven't slept well since I was twelve. What, what do, do you know, mean? Do you know, like, a proper... I used to love going to bed as, as like, a kid. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, oh, am I gonna sleep tonight? And, and I sort of wake up about four times. Right. Whereas when you're a kid, I remember really loving, like, going to bed. I'd, mm. I, what, there was one time where I actually laughed myself to sleep, because I couldn't believe me luck. Is <laughs> there something wrong with him? What do you mean you, <laughs> do you laugh not, yourself? Have you ever had it when you're, when you're really tired and you get in bed and the pillars feel Yeah, it's so cold, yeah. And, and it's like, I can't believe this. Yeah. And I, I, it happened twice, once when I just went to bed and I was really looking forward to it, and also when I, I helped my dad out once, like through the night, he worked at, like at this paper company, right? And uh, <laughs> I helped him out and I got in at about four in the morning with him, got in bed, and I just was like, I, had, I, I was laughing my head off. I had to put the pillow over my head, because I, I couldn't believe me luck. Like, I, I was like, oh, this is great, this. I'm going to sleep. I, I just have to say, life up north is so extraordinary. No, but you must be the easiest kid in the world to please. No wonder she knew she could just go get a cake. It's sort of like, uh, what, what was he expecting me to say? He was expecting an extra hour in bed, <laughs> yeah. but we got him cake as well. <laughs> go I to bed love that. without any supper. Brilliant. Brilliant, yeah. It, your just, own it, bed. How long was it before you got your own- what did you, just, you used to do before? Just some straw in the corner? No, it's just that- that thing of when you're really tired and- And do you ever do this with Suzanne though? Do you ever laugh yourself to sleep with her? <sighs> no, that's what I she mean. She can't sleep because you're chuckling away. I'm just- I don't know what's up with me. I've got a lot going on. <laughs> what, what- what do you mean you've got a lot I going on? I don't know, I was talking to the security bloke before saying, do you sleep? <laughs> Have you got much going on in your head and stuff and- I don't know. No, he wasn't insulted by that, I'm sure. Going up to someone and going, have you got a lot going on in your head? That uh, is brilliant. It I've worries me. It's interesting that um, your lack of sleep coincides with the diaries and the uh, the writing of the bread and potato story every day. I don't know if once you had that responsibility. Why don't you 
every night, go to Hugh Fay's, get some bread and potatoes, you don't have to eat them, then go to bed and I think you'll be chuckling yourself to sleep <laughs> in no time. <laughs> um, I'm stunned at Carl's rudeness, okay? That's badly drawn boy, by the way, all possibilities. There's a lovely chap just calls in, saying about, sounds, and Carl, because the record's ended, he doesn't say, oh, I've got to go, the record's ended, he went, yeah, and he, but, so- He's probably still there. Well, well, cut him off. He's well, just check if he's still there. He doesn't want to be on radio. I'm, he said I'm, he didn't want to be I'm on the radio, still, but I think he should apologise. I'm still here, hello? Hello. Alright. I'm still here. I did ask not to be put live on radio because I get very embarrassed. No, don't but worry. All we wanted to do is, is just wanted to apologise for Carl's curtness and his rudeness. No, all I want to say is the station is good because you, you couldn't have a worse slot on a Saturday afternoon, right? Because the youngsters are in the boozers, the older fellas are doing the punting, the racing, the football and whatever. The thing is, the state you play, if you want, if you want to get number one... This is XFM, not Radio 2. If you want to be, if you want to be the top, all you've got to do is start playing Natalia Umbraglia, and this, and that, and have your audience with one puke of hair between four legs, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Now, that's why I didn't want to go live on radio. But you are dead, uh, uh, when, when Christian got a little bit sick about being 13, then he got to go, whatever. Uh, you, you're the soundest station in the area, you cover, I don't like all the stuff you play, the, the station plays, but it, you're actually doing what's there. Thank and you, you very what, much. You keep going, you keep going, persevere. And, and you'll make, it's well worth listening to anyway, okay? Thank otherwise you, cheers. I uh, otherwise I wouldn't- Can you hear us? <laughs> Thank you, bye! Dead sir, mate, be careful, yeah? I mean, I can see why you cut him off. <laughs> Stop it. Man right. alive. We've had so many calls. Carl was getting annoyed. There were so many calls. And, uh, we've had suggestions from, uh, Ned saying talk about Jimmy Savile. Uh, John in North London. Um, I've just got John in North London. What does he want to talk about? Oh, I've forgotten. Becca from Liverpool <laughs> wants to talk about Tracy Emin and Damien Hurst. Art. Ah, um, Paul Andrews. Your mum called. Stop calling her. Turn her to listen to XFM. Yes, you, Paul Andrews, is about 38, at home with your wife and kids. Your mum just called in. Um, uh, I think uh, someone wanted Amazing Monkey Facts. I can't even do this right, can I? Uh, to be honest with you, last week we were slagging off Carl as being the weak link in this show. <laughs> I think it's clear <laughs> what the weak link is. Um, oh God, who's the bloke who wants to Hayley to go with him to X-Men? See, I shouldn't make notes. What's <laughs> wrong with you? <laughs> if you didn't spend so much time squeezing his head, and eating pies, <laughs> we might get something done. Out of time on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me is Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I really like that Blur track. I think it's the best thing they've ever done. Blimey. So... Strong words. They can quote me on that if they want. <laughs> yes. On their, <laughs> I'm sure on they'll their, rush to. On their, uh, you know, posters. one of their albums. Yeah. If they wanted. Well, listen. You're lucky I'm here, Steve. Okay. Right? I'm, okay, you can see, you know, you know something's happened. I've done my back in again. Right. right? I've, I've got a special chair in here. I'm in agony, yeah. and I'm on the strongest painkillers I can get. Okay. Right? I feel a bit, right? Carl, I had to call Carl up today and say, look, I don't know if I can make it in, can you come and get me? He came over to my house, we got in a cab and he got me here, right? Um, while he was round my house, uh, Jane showed him, um, sort of camcorder footage of how I actually did it. Of how you hurt your back. And, uh, I, I wanted Carl to tell you, because I was actually worried that if I didn't turn up, what you'd say to me. Yes. What, what, what was I doing, Carl? Right, so, I get round to his place, right? Says, right, hit play on the video, right? Uh, have you ever seen a gorilla having a fight? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like that. Him and his mate round at his place last night, decided right. to sort of have a bit of a wrestle. Yes. Um, it went on, I mean, how much footage- uh, Honestly, it was like a scene from Women in Love. Yeah. Um, we'd done about five fights. We had to stop at one point because his arm was bleeding. We You'd had about five fights? Yeah, well, we were wrestling. We were doing wrestling, right, in the- <laughs> for, for just behind in the, the lounge? Couch. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were on our knees and then sort of like to him and, you know, and I kept- I kept winning with an arm lock. Right? Yeah. And then the last time I, he sort of th threw me and I, and, my, and I went on the back and my back was done and I was, you know, it was Ian Morris. Yes. It was, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Isn't, now, isn't he a, the commissioning, um, editor, isn't he the commissioning of editor of comedy at Channel 4? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, the funny thing was that we, we'd had lots and lots of wine and we were- You surprised me. <laughs> yeah, right. And we were, uh, come on, come on, come on, I'll uh, take, film this. And the time we filmed, I said, film this, and Jeremy went, oh, right. And <laughs> I took my shirt off. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's right there. And it's, you can just hear slapping. Oh, Why? Oh. I, can I just ask though? I mean, it's a Friday night. You know, you yeah. had a couple of drinks. You yeah. know, some intellectual conversation. Yeah. How does it get round to? Do you fancy wrestling me? Well, I'm um, um, having it filmed. Well, I was. It was on the couch, but I kept sticking my socks in his face to annoy sure. him. Sure. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he he hit me on the shin, and I got sharp shins, and it hurt. And I was, I was going, I'm gonna smack your face, and he's yeah. done kickboxing. And it's that thing, like, you're sort of joking, they go, come on then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you start- have you ever seen the thing when Jack Osborne fights that skater dude? No, on the no Osborne? I, <laughs> I was very much the Jack Osborne figure. Right, yeah, the fat bloated guy <laughs> just came out of rehab. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll tell you what it was like, Steve. Have you ever seen, like, the David Attenborough stuff? <laughs> Where, like, a tiger will be ripping a deer's head off, and you think, why doesn't the camera crew stop it? Yeah, yeah. You sort of watch, you're thinking, why was James why just letting this happen? Why is she not stepping happen? in and intervening? Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, she said, right, you've seen enough, haven't you, and stopped it, so I don't know how much footage you got. <laughs> It's not much. It's not much. Because your lounge is not huge, and there's not much space between the the, the back of the sofa and the oh, table. It doesn't need no. It was just a, it was just a, a pin or a submission. So it was just, <laughs> it was all over with like one of us throwing the other one on the back. Arm and locked. how does it? I mean, how do you start with the wrestling match? Are you both stood up or you all? No, on, the, on your knees, and you sort of like go together like ratting steels. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh dear. Like a giant walrus. It's not gay. Play a record. Can we put that online? <laughs> Can we get that on the web? <laughs> that, that I would love to say. <laughs> <laughs> Better Roger Stewart? Yeah. yeah. Stewart May. <laughs> Indeed. You need to say no more. If people don't know what it is from that, yeah. that information, X, get them. Gervais Merchant Pilk. <laughs> exactly. All right? Exactly. Rick, I was uh, out last night, I was in the Crouch End area, and I passed yeah. out. I always, things upset me like this. It was a restaurant, it was a little French restaurant, yeah. but you barely noticed it. You walked past, it was like a row of houses, and a little French restaurant yeah. there, open, it was kind of summery. Bistro. No one in there, Rick. It was You're about joking. ten to ten. I'm thinking if no one's in there at uh, ten to ten on a Friday evening, it's doomed. And it really upset me. It genuinely upset me, because I always think about the little French guy in there. You know, he, he's put all his money into that. He's convinced Rene. his wife to do it. Yeah. You know, she's not convinced, but she's a great cook. Eve. Exactly. And it's already going down the pan. Do you know why? You don't want French food in a hot summer's night. You want Mexican food. <laughs> well, indeed, some kind of tapas. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, exactly. But then I was, because we were just discussing other things that upset us, and uh, my glimpse of War. It, well, true, obviously war. war. I mean, obviously I started with war, plague, famine, famine yeah, yeah, disease, yeah. SARS, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, then it came down the list to, um, worried about people who manufacture fax machines. Why? Because of technology? Well, moving on. They, I mean, if you were on the, say you're making fax machines, you're a little company, you make fax machines. A little what? A little company. Oh, right. You're making fax machines. Are you allowed to use email? What, like, if you work for Coke, you're not allowed to drink Pepsi exactly. publicly? It just seems like I'm s I'm assuming the, the fax machine is, sales have plummeting. Now, the thing is, right, is it? Now, I haven't got a fax machine, you're right, I've got email, but I much prefer a fax. Well, yeah, but Because you got... get it, it comes out the other, it comes out the other side. Yeah, but- Do you know what I mean? It is, it is, is what print... they've sent, that's what's great about a fax. But you can print off your email, can't you, and then you've got it in hard copy. Wow, and it's sort I of know, instant. But, you know, I don't look at the emails, a fax comes out, it's there, it goes, it's like someone putting a little post note in your face. Do you know what I mean? You go, oh yeah, I'll read that. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Email, you got email. Uh, you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? well, yeah, no. I, but what worries me is whether fax. I'm assuming fax machines are just. I mean, I don't know if there's anyone listening who works maybe for a fax machine. Oh, eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. If you're in the fax <laughs> industry, give us a call. Tell us, uh, you know, what sort of sort of figures. <laughs> yeah. You know. Exactly. Yeah. We want to go down seventeen percent, something like that. <laughs> something like that. Those kind in of the stats. in the southwest. <laughs> exactly. Those are yeah. the kind of stats. Uh, but um, you got? Uh, do, have you got fax machines yet in the north, Carl? Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, you're, you're loving it, aren't you? I like getting letters. <laughs> well, no one says that anymore, do I? Uh, you like getting a scroll from a man on a horse. Yeah. Saying your. When do you get letters? To me, mum still sends me the odd letter. Sure. Even though I call, she'll still she she likes sitting down at a table and. Yeah. You so know, what, you call and ask the questions, there's no reply, and then you get a letter <laughs> yeah, a day later going, later. question one, yes, I am well. <laughs> yeah. Question two, yes, your father's well. Yeah. Oh, it's nice though, isn't it? Yeah, a letter's yeah. nice. It, it's it? nice to receive a letter, yeah. It's always nice to receive a letter. Particularly if, like, you know, you're on a sort of expedition. <laughs> but, yeah. what <laughs> does annoy me though, you, you were looking at them the other day, you know, you were talking about the pictures on them, postcards. Yes. Don't like them. You don't like, you don't like postcards? No, they annoy me. <laughs> and just just because it's never anything of any interest, and the fact that even though it's been sent to you, you're the last one to read it. I used to, whenever I used to send my mum a postcard, I, I, every day, uh, every time I send it, I'd horrify her by putting on it, having a lovely time. Um, 
does that pig of a postman still read all your letters? <laughs> and she'd just be horrified, she'd be terrified nice. he'd looked at it all the time. This is what worries me, I've always assumed that people would read a postcard. If I was a postman, I would definitely read a po every single postcard. Yeah. So if you're on holiday, you know. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, would, you wouldn't have a lot of time left if you read every postcard. No, but after, as you were posting, as you were posting through the letterbox, you'd have a quick look, wouldn't you, to see what, was, what they were up to. Because that's why I never used to write anything of any interest on a postcard, because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want anyone to sort of know what I was up to. Let's say I was on a bawdy lad's holiday, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 I would yeah, just yeah. write sun, you know, nice sunny, you know, got myself yeah. a lovely pair of shorts. Yeah. Like that. You know, I'd keep the truth, Rick, yeah. for when I got home. Well, he's looking forward to going on holiday now, Carl, because he's got some prescription lens sunglasses. We'll be talking about that after the break. <laughs> Look forward to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. An amusing story about a man wearing glasses. <laughs> oh, the darkness growing on me. It certainly is. That's <laughs> FM 104.9. Love those boys. Keep the guitar riffs up, lads. <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Oh, it's good to see that your back pain has not impaired your DJing abilities. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, I'm a professional. I'm yeah, a professional. You've soldiered on. Yeah. Put the glasses on for Carl. Well, you know, because I wear glasses normally, I, um... I've always had problems with glasses. The, the thing about glasses is it stops you from doing so many things, and you point, may not realise if you're a non-glasses wearer, certain things that you can never do. If you're, like, for instance, I have never been able to Volleyball. go into the mosh pit at a gig <laughs> and, get, and get carried above everyone. You know, <laughs> they, they carry you above everyone on, on their hands. Because I, so I knew someone would just but grab my glasses. you don't need glasses. to, you can see from the back. That's the good thing about you at a no, concert. Indeed, you can actually stand at the back the and look over. being able to at least jump on the stage and do a stage dive and all the rest of it. So uh, that's one of the things I've missed out on. Missed out on, you know, sport really, because a lot of like, boxing, for instance, I could never do. I never do boxing, never do wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so our big championship showdown is not going to yeah. happen. Um, <laughs> We'd probably be the same weight category. Well, possibly. <laughs> think yeah. your reach. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, I remember when I first got glasses, I. I only had to wear them occasionally. I was, I think I was, uh, it meant I couldn't see things a long way away. <laughs> and obviously I got them, but I was at school and I was a bit self-conscious, didn't want to really tell anyone I had glasses. I just, oh. I didn't reveal to anyone I was wearing them. So, I used to go into a class, I remember being in science, and we always sat in the same spot, and it, I was sat right at the back, and I couldn't see what was on the blackboard. But I didn't want to start, I didn't want to put my glasses on, because I didn't want people to know I had glasses. So I, so I couldn't see what was being written on the board. You have to copy stuff down from the board, science equations, things like that. I had no idea. So I'd have to try and copy off someone next to me, but not, that wasn't always possible, because I had to do it surreptitiously. So what I took to doing was pe sharpening my pencil every <laughs> sort of 35 seconds. Going up to the... Going up, memorising what was on the board. <laughs> and I got a D in, in science. Oh, that's so awful, that's sort of, though. It's a big, it's a tough thing, glasses. So it really it is. Was, when you first start wearing, if you're see, young, it was education versus vanity. Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? And now he's think he thinks, well, hold on, he's sorted out his hair. You can see his stylish, stylish hair. Because when I met him, it was like, I mean, words were gummage. Yeah. He, he won't mind me saying that. Yeah, his glasses were, I mean, idiotic when I met him, and he's got some stylish glasses now. So he sorted that out. Yeah. Um, his, his clothes, he's quite a fashionable bloke, and when I first met him, uh, it looked <laughs> like a, a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, it's step by step, and with these are, I think you'll agree, pop them on, Steve. Well, you know, I and don't- Imagine him in the, on the beach. Close right? your eyes, Carl. Are they closed? I can't see, I've taken my glasses off. Oh. Yeah. See, that's a weird thing as well, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. What are you laughing at? Look, what are you laughing at, Carl? There's nothing funny about those. Stop smirking. I can see through them. You can see they're not real sunglasses, they're prescription lenses, so he can see you now. You see, I, I never knew you had to do that with, with sunglasses. I didn't think you had to have the- Right, yeah, when it's bright outside, people who wear glasses don't need to wear them. So they, they're, they're, they're looking cool, but they're bumping into yeah. stuff. No, but if your eyes aren't that good, then the sun shouldn't be bothering them. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon, that is, Carl Pilkington. All right. Questions for Carl, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Yeah. The uh, questionnaire that is often featured at the end of the TV programme Inside the Actor's Studio. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Is that how it works? Oh. oh no, what I'm do you mean? What's the question? Well, I don't know. Uh, do you hear so many other things that you have to go through other gates? I can't imagine him being on the door, is what I'm saying. <laughs> If he owns a place, what's he doing there? 
You could put well, anyone on it. It's St. Peter, isn't it, who's normally minding the gates, famously. <laughs> right, so it's him asking me. Okay, well, let's say it's St. No, Peter. No, 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 you go through the gate, Peter goes, oh, you're expected, um, he's got an appointment, we're going through the guard, go through a few doors, go up top floor, right, past the executive washroom, into his big office. Okay, that overlooks the universe. So what, what? So you've gone in to see God, it's an audience with God, you've died, you've gone to heaven, mm. and what would you like God to say to you at that point? Um, probably just, just say, oh, um, you've done well in that in your life. You never did anybody any harm. So, welcome to the, to heaven. Any problems, give us a shout. Um, you know, here's a little layout of, of like a, you know, like a little map. It's kind of like... I love this. This is a great answer. And my favourite one is you never did anyone any arm. That's, that's great. That's a brilliant thing for God to say. Yeah. So, hang on, he's giving you a little map. So, he's giving you a little map of the area. Map, it's and big. And sort of say, this is where you go for this, this is where you go for that. Um, I'd, I'd probably ask him about the ghost situation. I'd say, am I now a ghost then? Or is this just like another pl planet that I've come onto? Right. Uh, I don't know if he'd answer that. I don't know if he'd be sort of a bit... A bit cagey. Yeah. A little bit like, well, I don't want to panic you and stuff. Um, I'd say, right, is it right that I can see past family and that? Because to be honest, I'd probably prefer to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even want to! No, but oh, because the thing is, if you've done all, I've done all that in this life, so it's about moving on to another life and meeting different people, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Otherwise, what's the point? It's just yeah. like the same all over again, but everywhere's white. I, I mean, I don't know if it is like Do this. you think God would like this podcast? Um... Uh, well, I suppose it just kills half an hour, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but time's not a problem for him, is it? Yeah, it is, because he lives for ages, so he needs loads of filler. I bet he's, you know, doing stuff that he's just like, I'm not really into this, but it's something to do, isn't it? <laughs> Sudoku and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, I think there'll be just as many problems up there as there is here, because at least people are leaving here, whereas up there, that's the thing that I'd be worried about the most, actually, that it's really crowded. Because <laughs> it's years and years of dead people, isn't it? <laughs> London does me head in. Up there, it's going to be well busier than that. <laughs> what about teenagers? And um, do you feel that life was better in, say, the 1950s? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't around. So oh, but you understand what it was like in those days. Um, You've seen happy days. I don't know. People always say, don't they? Old people always say, oh, uh, you know, it's a better life in the 50s. And it's like, yeah, it was for them. Of course it was for them. They're old now. Being old isn't great, is it? So you're just happy with your lot. I suppose I was happiest starting about. 1984. <laughs> right. <laughs> what a specific year. Why? Why was that? It was just I was free and happy. How old, I mean? how old were you? I don't know. Uh, I to, uh, He's just counting on his fingers now. 12. Right, okay. And it was just good. So uh, the happiest days of your life were between the age of 12 and 13? Yeah, it was good. I had the world ahead of me. Mm. Um, Little did you know your hair was going to fall out and you were going to whinge every minute of the day. I had my bike, I like messing about my bike, you had your mates, I had a pet magpie. <laughs> so you were probably the teenager that you eventually hate? Probably. Were you a good lad, law-abiding? I wasn't bad. I just sort of, you know, just potted about. I mean, when people talk about what was on the telly back then, I, I don't have that much memory of it, because I was always out, I was always playing out. What were you doing when you were out? Just playing about, just like, on a bike or... Just riding in a circle, endlessly, through oh, yeah. blizzards, I loved it. rain, sleet, loved hail. It. I never seemed to be in, I was always... When, when everyone always goes, where were you when uh, Band Aid was happening? I was always out on my bike. And everything was oh, like... you and McGregor? A, a memory's always sort of like, coming in for some orange, and looking at the telly and seeing Princess Diana's getting married, and your mum says, have you seen this? And I'm going, oh, I'm going out on my bike. I was always doing that. The only time I was in the house... <laughs> This is why you don't know anything, because you never stopped. Yeah, but this is what being a kid's about. But all the mean, information free. you have, Carl, is as though you've gleaned as you raced by on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like, you know, every piece of information you have. Your hair, your <laughs> hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> your hair will blow out one day. Oh, don't talk stupid, ma'am. It was, was easy. So, yeah, 12 to 13 was good. But you see... And it was all downhill from then, was it? 13. Is your teenager then, aren't you? Life got tough. Yeah. How did it get tough? Just straight away when I was 13, my mum was like, you know, oh, it's your 13th birthday, you're a teenager now. Right. And she gave us a quid to go and get a cake to celebrate it. <laughs> Went to the supermarket, got a cake, and I just thought, I don't like the look of this. Don't like the look of the way the future is here. <laughs> <laughs> On his 13th birthday! <laughs> well, you were buying a cake, what, what did what you see at the supermarket? Just, that... it was kind of like, I don't know, I suddenly felt grown up. And I didn't like it. But I think you were always about 58. Really, with your outlook? Well, yeah, my mum always said I was old. She said I was an old baby.
She said I could frown before I could walk. <laughs> so they always had a bit of a worried look on my face. <laughs> Didn't say much, just always listened. My eyes moved about more than I did. Just sat there looking around, looking stressed. Uh, <laughs> my eyes moved about more than I did. <laughs> oh dear, I couldn't walk. Well, I can't walk, but I try and get a bit of movement in my face. Oh, it's yeah. a workout, a baby workout. Oh, hey, babies, well, if you can't walk, what about your face? Let your face do the walking. It sounds like uh, that horror film. It sounds like Pilkington's baby. <laughs> yeah. Just you lying there in your cot. I didn't like all the stuff that's set up for you. Like, me, me mum tried to send me to, um, like, a nursery. I said, no, I'm not having this. <laughs> Just like that. I said, I said Three, when, I'm when, I'm older, when I'm older and I've got to go, I'll go, but let's leave out this bit. And she said, all right. She was... <laughs> I love that he could reason with her. I love him. He's like, he's three years old with a pipe. She's going, you go to the nurse, she goes, I, I think not, Mum. <laughs> I mean, kids don't play out, do they? Kids, you know, parents are scared to let the kids play out, and that's why the streets are dangerous now. Because no one's playing out on the streets. Whereas when I was a kid, everyone was out on the streets, the streets were safer. Because there was more people knocking about. Right. Let the kids play out. It must be like a constant, like a Lowry painting, is front garden, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just loads of people just walking around. There was never around. any problems. I was sort of taken away by some fella. <laughs> what? Who, uh, I what? Whoa, 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 no, whoa. no, I was in, I was playing about in the garden. Yeah. But my dad's mate, Tony. Yeah. He did tiling with him. He drove past. And he saw me looking a bit fed up, so he just leant over, picked me up, took me to the pub. Now, the thing is, he wasn't panicked. People weren't going, oh, God, where's Carl gone? He's out. Just, just... How old were you? He's down the pub. <laughs> yeah, he's he's, four, he's <laughs> four years old, yeah. <laughs> he's down, but he's only having a... He's down the pub with Tony, probably, playing darts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about three or four. Sorry, so some bloke drives by who happens to be a friend of your dad's, thinks that baby looks grumpy. Yeah. I'm taking him down but the that's, pub. that's what it Tony, was like. Tony, you bringing a baby to the pub? <laughs> uh, yeah, I might do, yeah, we'll bring in ours. <laughs> All right, see you later, mate. Well, that's what I'm saying, whereas now they go, the baby's gone, there's a big full-on panic going yeah, on. Yeah, but I think it says more about your parents that they didn't do that. They looked out <laughs> in the back car and you were gone. Some bloke's driving off in a van. And they just go, yeah. oh, help. They rode down the pub. Oh. Doesn't Princess Diana look lovely? <laughs> <laughs> this is absurd. So what happened when you got down the pub? I just was there for a bit and then, uh, the For a bit? Just had a game of pool? Then my dad came in and he was like, oh, there you are. Yeah. Oh, there you are! I love that! Oh, where's my baby? Going to I'm just gonna have a quick pint now. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> Alright, mate. So, uh, yeah, I think things were better back then. Well, it's that time again. It's Carl's diary. Oh, what's he written today? I told Suzanne that I had read that we will have spoken to aliens by the year 2025. <laughs> Ricky once told me that if a lion could speak English, it still couldn't have a good chat with us because its life is different to ours. If that's true, we've got no chance with an alien. I'd be worried that an alien could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind-reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. That's amazing. So, so, firstly, how did you know she was a mind-reading woman? Everybody who came in having cassettes done, you'd find out about what the job is. So, you know, if it's a band or whatever, it might be a police station needing blank cassettes to interview people. Yeah. And she had them um, to sort of use during a thing where they do mind-reading and stuff. So right. you get a... A recording, a recording of the, of it. Uh, yep. And she was just there and she was staring at me, like that, just looking over. And a dog was sort of looking worried and they pick up vibes, don't they? No. They do. And why was- Were they looking- I'm not being funny, were they looking at the roundness of your head, do you no, think? No, they were just- uh, just looking at me and I was sort of panicking a bit and the more that I was thinking she's reading my mind, I was thinking she's, she knows that I know that she's reading my mind, so I just stopped thinking about her reading my mind, thought about the dog. What were you thinking about the dog? Running about on the beach. <laughs> No, just so she thought, oh, hang on a minute, it's not his mind, it's the dog's mind I'm picking up. <laughs> oh, so you thought she'd go, oh, no, I've got, I'm getting it all tangled up, I've got a cross line here. <laughs> I met up with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> no! No! What do you mean? Well, oh. he, had his, he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? 
Now then, would you walk? W how would you walk? Would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk? So you're basically walking forwards. I or, reckon I'd walk or, or sideways, so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! He solved it again. He's thought it through. Oh. I mean, see, Carl in the week was saying that he doesn't like sayings and phrases and metaphor and analogy and I was going, you know, and, and, and he thinks it's sort of like, you know, one step away from poetry. But he comes out with the most evocative phrases. Mm. That, that, that is a straightforward analogy. Lap dancing is like being given a meal that you can't eat. See, that's, that's, that's great. Mm. That's how you saw it, and that, that that that's so much better than saying it's it's mad you can't touch or it's a waste or do you see what I mean? I was I was trying we were trying to inflame his um, enthusiasm in the week, and uh, I said about um, different phrases, and he goes, well, why not just say the actual words? I was going, well, it's more poetic, and I told him the uh, Isaac Newton one. Um, uh, if I have seen further than any other man, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of the giants. And I said, well, that's because, you know, he's saying, um, uh, you know, I'm getting lauded for being this great scientist and all these discoveries and being a genius, but I'm saying, you know, if it wasn't for those scholars before me that had come up with what they come up with, you know, I wouldn't have got this far. Carl went, what did you say? I just said, well, I'd, I'd prefer him to give me a name check. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? If he stood there and he's saying how good everything is, don't just class me, don't, like, don't sort of put me in with a load of other people. Give me a mention. If you were one of the other scholars? Yeah. Yeah, I think there were probably people that died sort of years before him. I think he's saying more that he's thanking the body of work yeah. these scientists and these great men had, had handed down, you yeah. know, through either books, material, teachings. He's not that, giving yeah. a big shout out to the collective science posse. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know, thank you, actually I copied Nigel's. <laughs> yeah. He's not saying that. I, I was, I was like, earwigging. <laughs> I heard what Nigel said about it, about the third law. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I look into sayings and stuff Go a lot on. more and see if they work. Well, one, one that, um, happened a couple of weeks ago, right, you were talking about the, uh, you can't, you can't have your cake and eat it. Is yeah. That what you said? Well, I never understood that, cos I thought, well, what's the point of having your cake and not eating it, rather like your lap dancing analogy, but it actually means you can't have eaten your cake and still have it there, yes, obviously. Yes, exactly. Well, the, the time that I saw that same work, right, I was, I was in Asda, with Suzanne. Yeah. And do you know those big binders you get with nice cakes in them? Yeah. For birthdays and that. You can get one with like David Beckham on the front of it. Yeah. You can have one with, you know, Thomas the Tank Engine if you R want. Ricky Gervais. Yeah. yeah. You can have one of them. And I saw one of those comedy ones where it is like a big pair of breasts. Yeah. And that is when, you know, you can have your cake and eat tit. <laughs> Play records. No, but. You see play what I'm record, saying? Play record, play record, I want to talk to you about it. About puns. Placebo! This picture, with the androgynous vocal talents at the helm there of Brian Maloko <laughs> on XFM 104.9. I'm Informed Gervais. Informed yeah. broadcasting. Excellent. Did you see, I think, I'm sure, I don't know if Carl saw it, I know you watched it, Rick. The, uh, it was extraordinary, it was a Sky One TV show the other night. It was something like, uh, um, uh, reality TV. Oh, yeah, I don't know what it was called. Yeah, Excellent. and it was about basically what the fortunes I of various. I cannot get enough of it. The fortunes of various reality TV stars uh, since they've come out of the show. Christine Hamilton out, coming out of the jungle, and obviously once again, always a pleasure to find out what Fats Waller is up to. Rick Waller. I mean, oh, he's in a band now. He's got his own band. He was playing in some club in Rochester. There was about. It's sort of gospel, in the sort of gospel rock, that sort of soul gospel rock thing, like something you see in the in, in the commitments or something. And uh, and the when leather. it cut to the audience, it was like it was in Butlins. It was just a big dance floor, and there was just people like, watching indifferently. And you went, the people that were here <laughs> loved yeah. it. I mean, it's a bit and sad. I have to say, I know. the size of the man, his leather jacket, Carl, was extraordinary. I don't know how many animals had to die to make it. It was like. You know, it was it like if he'd have fallen off, it'd have been like the Hindenburg. Yeah, because it was like uh, a zeppelin. Oh, it the was, humanity! It was people. Was <laughs> it, I still think when I see him wearing a coat like that, it looks like he is stood on the shoulders of two other people. Um, it's yeah. just a joke. Just it's a, just like a circus act or something. <laughs> yeah, because his head doesn't make it doesn't make sense. It looks like it's one of those things that you steam yourself in. <laughs> yeah, you put your head out that. And he's, the, the, yeah. Is that a machine you're in? No, it's a or coat. one of those old-fashioned iron lungs. <laughs> 
Oh dear. Um, there were some magic moments. But there was a great- because once again, I mean, I missed a lot of, um, the, the first series of I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, but it Brilliant. showed once again, uh, the moment with Darren Day. Darren Day, lovely guy, but that moment where he went off and sat on a rock I'm, and mm. came back and he'd written a song- I know. Which he just- and I can't- it was also- it was also things like, I'm in a hotel room in another town. I know, don't- okay, don't- And do it, it was just- it was like something you'd write when you were fourteen. It was unbelievable. They showed it again. It's just stunning. I- I love- Songs you write when you're 14. It's like your first sort of like song where you could, you know, you know three chords. And it's always, <laughs> it's always stuff like, There's a man, he's a lonely man. Take a look at him, he looks a bit like me. <laughs> yeah. It is me. <laughs> it's that sort of thing like, we want to play it with someone and they, you want them to go, My God, you're deep. <laughs> yeah. My God, you're brilliant, aren't you? And that's about you, is it? No, oh, yeah, it is, yeah. I, I have to say, this is such a terrible confession. When I was doing a school play once, God. when I was about that age, 15, <sighs> right, there was a girl, uh, who was in the cast with me, yeah. right, and she sort of, you know, she was giving me the eye. I was thinking, yeah, well, she, I kind of thought she was, right? And there was, <laughs> it was glass. <laughs> but there was another guy, there was another guy there as well, I was sort of competing for affection. Oh, no. And uh, he was quite a witty guy. His name was Scott Hansen, he yeah. had long blonde hair. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I thought, well, the way to impress her, because I was fifteen or whatever, I thought I was pretty smart. I sat in one of the adjoining dressing rooms, reading a copy of the um, philosophical uh, book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which I didn't understand. But we were, so I sat there reading it in the hope that she would walk in and think, "My God." You're he, reading Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. You don't go with the crowd. You don't want to come next door where we're talking about nonsense and people yeah, are flirting. We're talking about the bangles. Yeah, and yeah. Curly -wurlies. You're in here saying, look, just if you want to come and talk to me, you're welcome. But I'm, the, I, I'm I, a you, thinker. I bet you thought you were Kwai Chang Kane, didn't I, you? I thought it you, was like she'd think, Jesus Christ, I know, I've never met anyone like him. That is genius. And she, she, I remember what, the one time she accidentally walked in, she went, oh, oh, sorry, wrong room, and left again. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> Sorry, at fifteen, so this is about the time you took to wearing a bow tie to I'm impress people. I'm slightly younger wearing a bow tie. I love yeah. that. No, I, I used to watch a lot of Harold Lloyd films. <laughs> And, uh, he always seemed to do very well. I love it, I love the idea of a 15, you going, Well, it's time I went to wooing. Right. <laughs> right, on yeah. with the bow tie, where's the zen? Um, <laughs> where's the pipe and my bow tie? <laughs> yeah, it's a time I got me a bow. Yeah, yeah. I love that. But uh, songs are great as well. The other, the other thing you do, sort of when you're up 15, 16, is start writing songs about, like, the world's trying to take a piece of me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you think I'm going down, I'm coming back, I'm against the ropes. Yeah. They try to drag me down. It's like, want to be cool Han Luke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They put me in this emotional prison. The no. man's on my back. <laughs> who? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who? who? They. <laughs> they try and take a piece of me. Who? Who? <laughs> you yeah. do. Wow. Well, You're you know, 14. Parents and that, don't they? You're so really comprehensive. The teachers. Yeah. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. I still remember a poem. I'd like to say his name. We're, we're about 14, 15. And, uh, this, we had to write a poem, and, uh, obviously everyone's was, um, pretty rubbish. But we m mercilessly took the piss out of this bloke, because I still remember the poem. And th th how he did it is he went through a dictionary and found things with that. And I, this is, this is a poem, right, okay, remember? I've remembered this for 25 years, right? The reason why, the reason why, the reason why I had to die. Did I bleed the blood of greed? What was my destiny? <laughs> <laughs> and when we hear this, we were laughing. I mean, for a, a year, we would go, uh, what was my destiny? <laughs> it, it was just great. Right, here we go. I enjoyed the that. reason why, the reason why, the reason why I had to die. Did I bleed the blood of greed? What was my destiny? <laughs> Oh, oh, that's uh, almost as catchy as monkey news. <laughs> oh God! Oh, I've got some monkey news for you. Let's play a record and come back, and I've got some great monkey news for you, Carl. That's from the REM album that people tend to forget about now because it was so kind of poppy and such a massive hit out of time. But there are some good tunes on it, and there's one of them, Near Wild Heaven. Excellent on XFM one hundred four point nine. Carl, go on. Watching a program yesterday, uh, and it was about these Japanese snow monkeys. And it was all about how animals learn things that aren't inst instinctive, particularly sort of primates, because they see other people doing it, and they start a culture. And they can pinpoint when these monkeys, when one monkey first went down and got in the hot water springs and stayed there because it was hot, and the others copied them, and now it's, a, it's part of a, almost a culture, you know, that, that won't be handed on because it's not instinctive, but has to be learnt each time. And, uh, you know, and uh, they, um, they groom as normal, like other monkeys, right, but they're, they're really intelligent. And, um, obviously, 
the reason they groom other people, other other monkeys, is because they eat the mites. But the, also, the monkeys have learned they like being groomed. Okay, so they showed this one monkey. It went to a deer. Okay, and it was grooming this deer to get its mite off it, right? But then it didn't eat it. It held it in its hand. It went over to a monkey, put the mite on itself to show the monkey it had a mite, and got a free grooming. That's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. That is extraordinary. Because it gave up the food, knowing that if you put one there, this monkey would look for mites on it, yeah. and it would get a free grooming, and it was like having a little massage. What do you think of that? It's not bad. I've got some better stuff coming up later. <laughs> On oh, monkey news, on yeah. the official. Yeah, monkey do, do you see that? Just see what, see what mine though. Mine's true. I mean, that's an interesting and extraordinary. It actually happens. It's social behaviour amongst primates. Actually, so I saw it. I saw it. It was, you know. Did it rob a bank, Rick? At any time? It didn't rob a bank, and it didn't open a hairdresser's. <laughs> so that's what you're letting you. That's what you're I letting am. It's down. not. It's not quite good enough, is it, my monkey news? Martina Topley Bird need one. All right, XFM 104.9. Well, it's that time. It's getting exciting. We've got Rockbusters results, but before that, a little bit of monkey news with, oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> Carl Pilkerton. Brilliant. Let's do. I haven't read that for a couple of weeks. Go on then. All right. So, uh, is that this little monkey? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, he lives in Morocco. Right. You, I'll just warn you now. You, you're on thin ice from last time. Okay. So make sure. Is this real? It's been Don't say anything stupid. Think about it. As you're saying it, think to yourself, oh, is that true? Do monkeys do that? Do they think like that? So, go on then. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so there's this ma magician in Morocco, right? Mm -hmm. Got a little monkey working, working with him, mm -hmm. right? Um, the way it used to work, uh, magician used to do his thing on stage, do mm -hmm. a little bit of magic, people loved it. Mm -hmm. Then the monkey came out, had a little cap, walked around the crowd and stuff, uh, got the money, had a good little team thing going on, right? Yeah. So anyway, the monkey's name was 86. Right. Because back then there were so mo many monkeys, it was like, oh, what names, do you know what I mean, what names yeah, do you use, what do you do? So yeah. they just like, named yeah, it, yeah. right? So this, this little monkey- What, well, he had, he had 86 mon- other monkeys? No, 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 it's just that because a lot of monkeys were sort of working back then, helping magicians out, you know, Doing bits and pieces, busking, what have you. Just well, Rick, you know how there's so but many. Why would there be a confusion with that? I, I, if he only had one monkey, where's the confusion? People would go, oh, I'm not going to go and see that. I want to see 86. He's the better monkey. Do you know what I mean? What does it matter? I don't what... know what you mean. Well, why do they need. Wh wh who, wh where was the confusion with people going to the circus and going, what monkey are you going to see tonight? I don't know. It's, uh, it wasn't a billing, was it, with a monkey? But, Rick, you, it's just the same with humans. You know, there's so many humans now that we can't give them names anymore. Yeah, they all exactly. Have to have numbers. Exactly. Yeah. There's so many humans. You know, with five billion people, they, we can't give them names. It's yeah. impossible. But you know, with a few monkeys anyway, working. Anyway, number twenty-two. Go on. So anyway, so uh, there he is. Eighty-six. Eighty-six. Uh -huh. With his hat. With his hat, walking around, getting the money. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the magician, sort of, uh, you know, thinking about moving on, because in Morocco he'd sort of done all the tourist traps. Sure. So he had a word with the monkey, he said, how about we, uh... <laughs> See? No, let him continue. Think. He let, let him continue. He didn't have a word with the monkey. Let him continue. So what do you think about going over to Spain? Yes. <laughs> sure. So, uh, the monkey was in agreement? So he said, all right, go on then. Right? So, uh, so they get in the car, <laughs> and, uh, like the magician knew he'd have a bit of a problem on his hands because you're not meant to take monkeys out of the country. Yeah. Right? So he thought, right, what I'll do, I'll, uh, I'll get a car, right? Right. Uh, stick the monkey in a boot, right? Uh, get on the boat and hopefully sort of, you know, stick it in, a, in some luggage and what have you. Yeah. We'll be over there, we'll be earning big money, sure. everything's gonna be great. So the monkey was like, brilliant. So, they, they get in the car, they're on the way to the, uh, to the boat, and, uh, pull over at a petrol station. Uh-huh. And, uh, just before filling it up, he opens up the boot and he goes, yeah, alright, and then it's like, yeah, yeah, it's round. <laughs> Uh, so he leaves, he, he leaves the boot open so he can breathe and get a bit of fresh air whilst uh. he's filling up. Goes in to pay the money. Yep. Pays the money, goes, uh, I'm just paying for the- Right, uh, it, this monkey is not gonna drive away in that car. <laughs> or we're never doing this feature again. <laughs> Carl, what happens? What's, um, what's number 86 up to? So, <laughs> 86. <laughs> so, uh- That's the ending, isn't it? That's the story. Come on, let- let Carl right, finish it the story. Be, it better brilliant, not be. Brilliant, brilliant. You're gonna love it. Right, so he's in the petrol station. And he's going, right, I'll pay for, uh, pump four. 
And the fellow says, what are you talking pump, about? Pump four, four, isn't that a monkey? No. <laughs> sometimes I use numbers for monkeys, sometimes <laughs> yeah. I use, no, I mean pump four. Sure. Yeah, so he says, on. what are you talking about? There's no car at pump four. Right. <laughs> Keep going. You Sticks his head out of the door. Yeah. The monkey's given it some. Uh, went over to Spain on its own. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, well, hang on, let's just, let's just get a couple of the facts right here. Well, what do you mean, couple of the facts? Right, there are no facts. So, it number 86. It, number, number 86, 86 drove, he drove to Spain. You are, t uh, honestly, Carl, I, you must know. It was an automatic. Right. Carl, how did he, how you did must he... know that is shit. There is no way a monkey mad, That's the thing with his feature, He gets stopped though. at customs. It's mental. How did he get through customs, Carl? Has he got a passport? passport? No, no, he was sneaking about because he didn't have a passport. So he parked and then snuck through. Do you want the facts? Let me see it. Right, I'll examine this, Rick, and we'll play a record. Play a record, and, uh, record because I think that's, 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 that's nearly as bad as the armed robbery. Right, go on. Yeah. Play a record. You mean better suede? Yeah. Stay yeah. together. My favourite. One of the 86's favourites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brilliant. My favourite suede track. No, stay together. XFM. Well, nearly time to go. But, uh, before we do, a little bit of rock buster results. Just checking some of the answers, Rick, and it seems that an awful lot of people have got it right. Go on then. Tell us them again then. Remind us of them before you give us the answers. Alright, rock busters number one was like this. It was a customary We're stopping monkey news, by the way. Until you start getting some credible ones. Cause it- because that's ridic- it's ridiculous. Mm. It's not true. No, it seems- seems mad. But no, it's but it's, it's really internet again, so anyone, anyone can go online, download that story. It's insubstantial, it, it, it's, get ones, get ones from journals or where the, the source is quoted, okay, mm. or, or yeah, we're not that's, interested, that's what I do. That's or what we're, we're not, we're not, well, you don't, mm. okay, so, that's same that's with, so, on thin ice. We've, we've pulled this once, we've pulled rock but we suspended it once, mm. and you came back, again, so it's, do you know what I mean? Mm. So, go on then. Right, so Rockbusters, uh, Rockbusters number one was about a customer who wanted some paint, wanted to darken up a room, the shop assistant knew what to do. What did she do? The initials were CB, Cella Black, right? S Cella Black, Cella some you Black You see, paint. I thought Cella Black, cos it's CB, and I thought, well it can't be, cos it's not Cella, it's not Sell Her Black. Cryptic, it's Cilla cryptic though, isn't it? No, no, cryptic doesn't mean it's wrong. Yeah. Uh, they all got it, they all got it anyway, so, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Uh, second one, it would be alright if the reds weren't that big, right? Right. The initials uh, are uh, SF. Well, well uh, one of my favourite bands, yeah, yeah. The, the smaller faces, isn't yeah. it? Small uh, faces. Well, no, that doesn't make sense. Okay, go on then. Uh, and the final one, uh, Chanel have got another perfume out. Right. I'll just say, we've had an email from one of our, uh, listeners who said, if this turns out to be new order, he's never listening to XFM again. Probably what's the, what's the clue again? Chanel, I've, I've got another perfume out. N new odour. Right, well that's another listener gone. What do you mean? There's not a group called New Odour. <laughs> no, it's, it's cryptic. It it's not, that doesn't mean cryptic! Wrong doesn't mean cryptic! It's like saying what animal I'm thinking of. Frog. It, that doesn't mean cryptic. Sell her black. What artist is that? Small faces works. Just about. If I say what animal I'm thinking of, what, what am I Monkey. thinking? Monkey. Well, there you go then. <laughs> so, so it does work. Play a record. Right? Play a record. So, who's a winner? Ah, yes. Now, I'm gonna give it to, um, uh, someone who emailed in with the correct answer. <laughs> and he, his name is Steve Martin. <laughs> really? And I'm giving it to you, I don't know if you've noticed over the last few weeks, I've been giving the prize to people with just a kooky element to them, you know, if they've well, got people a, to start an name. sending their name in, like, um, uh, Barry Bumpfroyd. Well, don't worry, cos I can spot if it's a, if it's a fake comedy name. Or what was that it, last one we laughed at for I no apparent reason? I think it was Gerald something. Yeah, it was, it was just like Gerald Smethurst no, or something. It, what's it, uh, Preston? Gerald, Gerald Preston. Preston. Why is that a funny name? Oh, Jerry Preston, a great guy. But Gerald reason, Preston, we laughed at that. He right. caught my attention. So this week, Steve Martin's caught my attention. <laughs> right. Yeah. When was the last time Steve Martin made you laugh? This Steve Martin. Or <laughs> 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 um, Dickers isn't uh, been. Yeah, we've had no correspondence from from Dickie Anderson for some time, which uh, saddens me. Little Dickmeister General. What is he doing yeah, out there? Has he got what? He's got like he's got something better to do. Mm. 
ridiculous. Yeah. Right, well, that's, so that's the end, eh? We've got the last song, so is there anything it's the end, It's say? the end of Rockbusters, and it's the end of Monkey News. Monkey News will give you one more go for it, and it's got to be credible, it's got to be real, it's got to be true. We need to see your sources, it needs to be yeah. corroborated. Okay. Rockbusters, they've got to be real band names. New Odor. <laughs> <laughs> New Odor. <laughs> New Odor. <laughs> just anything. Just <laughs> brilliant. Well, well done to Steve, you got them all. So. <laughs> so is that it then? Yeah. Brilliant. Well, uh, Cheers. I've enjoyed that. I hope your back's better, Rick. Yeah. And, uh, Carl, I hope you, um, buck up your ideas. <laughs> your brain's better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got something interesting about a brain, we'll can talk about it next no, week. No, tell it now. No, I'll-, I'll Quickly, what is it? No, I'll, I'll leave it. Oh, well, like, that's a hook. Like, people will be going for a week. Oh, I wonder what things are with Carl's brain. Was it a brain that drove a motorbike <laughs> across oh. to Switzerland? You've heard it. <laughs> um, remember we were talking a while back about the, uh, questionnaire that is often featured at the end of the TV programme Inside the Actors Studio? Oh, yeah. Where the host, James Lipton, always asks a ser the same questions to every guest. And it's just supposed to sort of, you know, get their creative, you know, juices flowing, their mind working. We we did ask Carl some of them. We we never completed the questionnaire. Oh, let's go fire a then. few more at him. And that'll also uh, introduce some um, people to the way his mind works mm. a little bit. Okay. What sound or noise do you love, Carl? Um, there isn't really one that that I love. Nice noises, yeah. like the ones you get. Like I like going in the park, right? And you go, oh, that's nice, isn't it? And you get, like, yeah. bird noises and stuff. But with those bird noises comes a bit of stress, right? Cos I was in there the other day, and, uh, like, like I say, little bird noises and that, and a little robin was there, and I thought, that's odd, that's out early, right? Cos it's, like, sort of summertime and that. Sure. And then I thought, oh, that's nice, and I was watching it. And then it got, like, a little worm, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, put it down, right? <laughs> I was like, Sorry, whoa! What do you mean? Because Why are you interfering? Have... Why were you interfering in nature with a with a robin taking a worm? Just because it it, it was a nice sunny day and that, and I thought, wor you see, worms normally come out when it's raining, don't they? And you go, well, I bet they're happy to die, in a way, because it's chucking it down. It's miserable. They come to the top of the soil then, don't they? Yeah. When it's miserable, but it was a sunny day. That's they don't drown, I assume. No, it's not that, is it? It's just that they they hear the water or something falling on the ground, and they go up to see what's happening. <laughs> No, no, wait, but why do they come up when they think it's raining? You're a worm, okay? It starts raining. Tell me your thought process. Well, you're just kind of, you're down there, you can't see anything, it's dark anyway. Yeah. So, the, the rain's coming down on the land, the worm goes, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the worm goes, what's going on? He wiggles up to the top. So, what does he do? So, it, so it, it goes up and it, it sort of sees it's raining and then it goes back down again, doesn't it? But that's, that's what I'm saying about the What do you mean? What do you, what is, sorry, what is this world where he goes, oh, it's just rain again? Oh, so that's, that's the 400th time I've been caught out this year. It's rain. I'll remember next time. I won't come up. I, 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 what do you think a, a worm is capable of in terms of cognitive thought? What do you mean? Well, a worm can basically uh, uh, tell certain chemicals and certain light patterns. That's, a, that's all it is, really. Yeah, and... and it's and not thinking. It's not choosing its favourite food. You don't know that, though. Is what I'm saying. You don't know what things are thinking. Everything thinks. Don't no, it, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, the thinking. There's something in this room that's not. All right. What about <laughs> this one then? What about um, what about flowers? Do you think they've got a a mind, a, a feeling? Because here's here's something that again. They they use phototropism. They go towards the sun. They 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 close and All right, open. Well, Liz, Can you stop grow. using long words, Rick? Like sun. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I was, do you know how I've been to my mum and dad's, right? I was yeah. talking to my mum about stuff. Oh, right. And she was saying how, um, this flower, uh, solved a crime. What yeah. happened was, there was a murder, yeah. right, in an office. So, they said it's obvious that someone who works in the office did this murder because that person's only a, sort of a typist. He has, you know, they've done nothing wrong. So, they said, that's narrowed it down, right? So this flower man came in. And he said, I can sort this out for you. Mm. So they said, what do you mean? He said, well, during the murder, the plant was knocked off the cabinet. Yeah. Right. right. Um, and he had some special wires that he can put on the, flower, yeah. on the flower. And it's sort of shaking and stuff. Because I even though you can't see it, flowers pick up bad vibes and what have you. If you shake a plant, it doesn't like it. <laughs> okay. Right? So what happened was, uh, he said, right, what we'll do, We'll put the plant back on the shelf. Yep. We'll water it. We'll calm it down. <laughs> then get. Give it a nice cup of tea. Then get every then, member of staff right, to right. come in the room yeah. and just 
go near the flower. Right. So don't tell them. So like a lineup for the flower. Kind yeah. of. Kind of like a yeah. lineup. Yeah. Sure. Don't tell them what we're doing. Just send them yeah. in and say stand by that cabinet where yeah. the murder happened and what have you. Yeah. Anyway, it was a long day. They were getting through a lot of stuff. It was a big office block. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they were going. This isn't working. You know, the flower's not budging. Mm. Suddenly, they get into like the last part of the day when they were almost giving up. They call in a sketch artist. The plant. The plant gives them a some some caretaker fella. Uh -huh. um, caretaker. Yeah. Said go over there. Was it, you know, was it an it, old man that, I mean, because Scooby-Doo didn't like him from the beginning. <laughs> no. They, they send the caretaker over to the plant, he's going, you know, he's thinking I've got away with this. Of course. Yeah. Plant starts shaking, what have you. They did him. Okay, <laughs> wait a minute then. So, was there any other evidence? <laughs> Uh, was that the only evidence they used in the trial? Well, no, it's one of them things, though. Imagine it, if you're that caretaker and you think, I've got away with this, then suddenly a plant grasses you up. You weren't expecting that. So suddenly you're <laughs> off guard. And you go, you go, OK, 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 can't get that chrysanthemum away from me, I did it. <laughs> you're talking absolute bollocks. That was one of the most nonsense pieces of shit I've ever heard but in anyway, my life. Listen, well, it happened, but... It didn't happen. Said it. But what I was saying is about the worm. This robin that I saw that was eating the worm, it had hold of it, and I thought it said sunny day and that give the worm a break sort of thing. So I went, oh, yeah, yeah, like that. And it sort of dropped it in shock. But then when it realised I wasn't that near it, it picked it up again and swallowed it. And I just thought, oh. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean, no. I just thought it's a sunny day and everything. Normally birds are nice noises that I like. And yet there it is going about wrecking lives. <laughs> It was a no, worm! It just, no, but it just swallowed it really quickly in that, and I thought, I just thought, there's the worm, it, it came out, it was happy, it didn't know what was going on, and the, it had an extra chance, the, the robin dropped it, and then it got it again and ate it, and I just, just made me a bit fed up. Well, do you know why, don't you? You couldn't outwit a robin. The worm was going, oh God, Carl Pilkington, so that's, that's who's been sent to save me, is it God? You've sent Carl Pilkington, oh, I'm dead, that's it, okay, eat me. But all I'm saying is our bird noises are normally quite relaxing, but not for the worm. Unbelievable. That was one question. What sound or noise do you hate? Um, as me or as a as a worm. I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? Why would, the, I, why would be asking a worm? I've never heard an actor say that to James Lipton. When he says, um, what noise do you hate? What, as me or a worm? No, wow. but all I'm saying is because of my last question, that's what I was saying. A bird noise is relaxing to me. Right. Well, it's not anymore because I think of all the deaths and stuff that, that go around that. <laughs> so now you hate the sound of birds. <laughs> I'm just saying it's changed my view on it. It's, so like, it's like anything, isn't it? Every every noise can mean a disaster. Can it? Why would the sound of laughter, people laughing, why would that suddenly cause? Why would that also signify disaster? If you wake up in the night by the sound of, like, a baby laughing. No, if I, had a ba if I had a baby, right, yeah. and Suzanne was out, she'd work nights or something, <laughs> yeah. and I'd nodded off, I'd put the baby to sleep, Yeah. and then it's three in the morning and I'm woken up by the sound of a baby laughing, that would terrify me. <laughs> How is this that? I just think the baby's sitting up in a chair like Chucky, going, <laughs> well, no, the... <laughs> <laughs> I think the baby's reading his diary, <laughs> thinking, oh Christ, this is my father. <laughs> I just hope I'm adopted. Oh, God! A baby laughing! What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? This is you as you, not as you as a worm. <sighs> but have I had the training? Oh, for f Oh! No, well, I've said before, haven't I, about maybe having a go at an operation. <laughs> It leaps from where it leaps from no ambition. Where if he could have a job, it would uh, his best job he's ever had is a paper round. And if he could have a job, he'd like go to the cobbler once a week and then walk a dog. To I'd like to have a go at thoracic surgery. No, I'm just saying. I bet it's uh, like we do this, and you know, some people like listening to it and what have you. And you go fair enough, but I never feel like I'm doing anything of any worth. No, you're absolutely right there. But if you're going into uh, uh, like an hospital, which are places that are pretty miserable anyway, as a, as an office space. Not only have you got to go in that building and work in it, but you've then got the pressure of changing a lung or whatever I've said before. Right? Changing a lung, yeah. But I'd like to have a go at it so I can say you've done it. I've done that. So uh, under what circumstances, in, in what world, do you think anyone's going to let you have a go at changing a lung and that? Um, Jim will fix it. No, I'm just saying the Comic way... Comic relief. But the way the world is, and the way that there's more and more people, more and more doctors are needed. I mean, it's already happening now that people are doing jobs that they're not really qualified for because they get, they get sort of, uh, 
what's the word? Sort of uppered. Too early. Uppered. <laughs> It's basic language. It's like, it, I, I, it's unbelievable. Uppered. Do you know you what I mean? They, promoted. They, yeah, promoted. Yeah. They get, they get promoted. I'd swear uppered. Uppered's great. So, Why so, was I not uppered? Unbelievable. So, do you know what I mean? I think because, because more and more people are knocking about, we need more and more doctors. Yeah. You get a job in a doctor's, you're gonna be promoted sooner now, I think. Yeah. Well, uh, what I'd do is I'd, I'd, I'd probably upper you and then um, what's the word? You go away them, you... I think it is, you go away them. You, you, you leave the door, you. You leave the door, you... Fire them. That's it, that's the word I'm looking for. So I'd, I'd up at you and go away the doctor, if anything. Uh, but I've been to, uh... You know how I don't like going to the doctors and stuff? Yeah. Because right? um, you're always scared that they might investigate below the bridge. Yeah, but I checked on that before. I signed up to it, and then they said, right, before we can take you on as a patient, um, you've got to have a health check. Right, which I thought was odd, because it's almost like saying, if you're ill, you can't be having you come in here, right? But I said, right, okay, fair enough, what, what is this health check? And they said, oh, you know, we'll just check your body out and make sure you're fit and healthy. And I thought, that isn't enough information. You know, I want to know if it's the old finger trick. <laughs> or, and, and I said, what, what do you mean, though, when you said health check, what do you do? And uh, she said, oh, it's just, I think she knew what I was getting at. And right. she said, oh, it's just the uh, blood pressure. Uh, your eye, your eye, your weight. That's about it. So I went, went and had it and stuff. But you had to, before you sort of said, right, I want this doctor, they give you loads of forms to fill out, right? And um, one of the things they did was, uh, if you die, <laughs> what do you want to give away? Right, like a donor. Mm. And what have you, and I thought, I, I was, I really thought about it for 40 minutes or so. I didn't just rush into it, I was sat there thinking, you know, if I'm dead, does it matter and stuff? But I was really concerned when it said about the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Why? What do you mean? What? Because can they have your eyes after you die? It was. It was. I think it was fourth on the list. Why do you care about uh, uh, giving your eyes away just, when you're just, dead? Just because of that thing of you know we don't know for sure yet. I know that you poo poo it, but the afterlife thing. So why in an afterlife do do would you want your eyes more than your liver and your kidneys and your lungs and your heart? Because. Ghosts don't eat, do they? So you don't need all your liver and your kidneys and stuff, because they're only there to sort your food out. But your eyes, if you're a ghost, I don't want to be a blind ghost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, what should we talk about, then? Um... Well, Tracy... play a record and we'll discuss this. Tracy Edmund, make your okay. bed. Make your bed. <laughs> Damien Ernst, stop cutting up sharks and things. Um, Picasso. All right? Right, Rockbusters, what have you got for us, Carl? <laughs> right. Um, there we go then. Three clues, Stick three cryptic clues, couple of initials, email in, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, win some stuff. Do you wanna go the through the stuff? Yeah, you get them. You're I'll definitely read. improving yourself as weeks go on. We've got, um, a, a, C a three CD set of the best of Inspiral Carpets. How they strangle it over three CDs, I've no idea. Yeah, I know. Extraordinary. Um, a number of other CDs, all of which are okay, plus, um, a t-shirt and a copy of Marion and Jeff Series 1 on DVD. Not bad at all in an XFM bag. Well, he's noticed X-Men 2 isn't there, cos it's not out yet, but it is at the cinema, so I think Hayley should go with, what's his name? Shut right? up! Okay. Right, go on, Carl. Right, the clues are, clue one. Um, that, uh... <laughs> oh, they're having problems, they haven't Oh, this is... Right, <laughs> brilliant, Rockbusters. This is, <laughs> like, this is what we're doing. I know. For. I'll tell you what, I, I think Foxy was really soft on us. I think he's- oh, go on. This is what we're tuning for, okay, so this- is Go on. again. So uh, go on. <laughs> this is brilliant, come on. This is like, who wants to be a millionaire? It's uh, Carl. Come on, Carl, uh, don't worry about him. He doesn't know- he doesn't understand radio, Carl. Uh, he- 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 I heard his show before we had us, he was doing it, it sounded just like Dr. Fox. Yeah. Right, go on. Uh, clue one, uh, they're- they're having problems, the, uh, <laughs> they haven't- they haven't got any rice. <laughs> say it again, and say it like it's written down. Right. Say it like it's like you're reading it as opposed to making it up as you go along. I know you are, but say it again, because all the ums and ahs, people to think are integral. They're, they're having problems. Le they're, uh, do it again. They're having problems, they haven't got any rice left. <laughs> it's different! <laughs> different! It clue every word, that's, that's the matter. Clue. I and love what's that. The, what's the initial? CC. CC, right. and the clue again. They're having a few problems in that. <laughs> Because they haven't got any rice left. <laughs> Different <laughs> every time! <laughs> ah! Got right. that number one. Uh, second one. The Geordie fella doesn't know what he's been charged for. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> okay, and what's right. the initials there? B W. Oh. The Geordie fella doesn't know what he's being charged for. Right. And the final one, um, if he had two bricks <laughs> and he had to throw them at two women, right? <laughs> Right, you've got to go do this without going. Right, oh, yeah, just do it again. Just say it again. Think what you're going to say, then say it. I had two bricks. Oh, it, no, it was if I had before. Well, I've got. To <laughs> Stop it, isn't it? Stop, because I'm going to burst. Right, Carl, work out what you're going to say and say it. Right. Okay, just what? calm okay, down. We just let everyone calm down. Okay, right. I had two bricks to throw at two women, yeah. and I didn't hit either of them. Okay. The initials M M. Right. Okay. So quickly again. Uh, the haven't got I've right. got that. I've got that, and it's brilliant. That is a brilliant one. Okay. Right. <sighs> they've they've run out of rice. They've got problems on their hands. C C. Right. The second one. Geordie fella doesn't know what he's being charged for. Right. B W. <laughs> and I had two bricks to throw at two women. Didn't it? It any of them. Right. <laughs> That's M M. Email in uh, Ricky Dot Gervais at XFM. Brilliant. Play record. Win some stuff. It's uh, uh, email uh, me Ricky Dot Gervais uh, at XFM. Uh, 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 yeah, Rob Busters, what were the clues? Uh, the clues were uh, the first one was uh, they're they're running out of rice, so they've got problems. That was C C. That was China crisis. Right. Okay. Yeah. If they ran out of rice in China, it would be a crisis. Fair enough. Second one. The uh, the Geordie fella doesn't know what he's being charged for, right? That was Bill Wyman. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And the, uh, the third one, I had two bricks to throw at two women, and <laughs> I didn't hit either of them. That was Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. <laughs> I let him up. Those were all right. White Stripes, Seven Nation Army on XFM 104.9. Carl, right? um, are you thinking of starting a family? Only if, like, an accident happens or something. Yeah. Do you, were you there, Rick, when uh, we were chatting about this the other day? Oh, yeah, no. Was, what did you say, Well, Carl? we were talking about his career and that, because he's on um, MTV and I was going, oh, you got to do this now. He's going, look, if it happens, it happens. I said, I've said to Zan, if it happens, it happens. He goes, well, what are your plans? Goes, I was uh, saying with a baby, she said, are we going to have kids or not? I go, look, if it happens, it happens. I go, well, how would it happen? He goes, if a condom splits. Amazing. I love the idea that that's the way you plan for a child. Imagine telling them that. When- where- where was I conceived? Can't remember. The condom split. Yeah. You were an accident. I love that. The Although romantic I, nature of that I is just I was told I was an accident, but, you know, it doesn't oh, matter, does it? Yeah, it doesn't matter. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but it doesn't well, matter. Do many people sit down and say, right, do you think we should? Yes. Well, as they lay down. <laughs> yeah. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't play- you can't sit down you haven't got time for that discussion. No, it doesn't mean the conception. I think it means bringing up a child till it's- Eighteen. But the thing is as well, it's one of them, innit? It's like, if you think about having one, you go, well, the, ne the, the sort of negatives, you know, outweigh the positives, yeah. I think. Right? Go on. But if you have one, you go, oh, it's not that bad, is it? <laughs> so what are the positives and what are the negatives? Uh, Like I say, the negatives outweigh it. I can't think of that many positives. They, they get in the way, don't they? Mm-hmm. Uh, Cost you a lot. Costs a lot of money. Same with marriage. Like Suzanne saying, we'll get married, so what for? Well, marriage doesn't cost anything. Well, it does. Well, no, now if you go to the registry office and then yeah, buy then, a house. But then what's the point? Well, tax breaks, you know, presents. I don't <laughs> think you get them anymore. Do you? I looked into that. <laughs> <laughs> you old romantic. <laughs> <laughs> what would you rather have a ring or a 3% saving? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't see the point anyway. I that, got down on one knee and presented with some inland revenue forms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to show the benefits. That, that is great. I mean, if you are planning it, I think you've got to involve me and Steve in the radio station because it'll be, I mean, you take quite a lot on, don't you? Mm. So if you've got a kid at home and you're not, and you're not asleep, you haven't slept since you were 12, you've got this, you've got MTV, you've got a kid, you know, it might be one step too far because I wouldn't want, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to push you over the edge. <laughs> Well, Maybe, see, go on, sorry. No, I just was going to say, I was talking to Suzanne last night about it and saying, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, uh, about earning money and that, and she said, well, you're already sort of earn a little bit more than me, mm -hmm. so, you know, if you get loads of money, she said, I'd be happy staying at home and doing nothing, maybe looking after a kid. I said, oh, so that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> right. I said, I could have a load of money now tucked away, I could have won, won some money and I wouldn't tell you. I still want sort of that check off her every month. 
because I get a check offer to sort of pay the bills. Yeah. And I think you need to keep that in a relationship. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Work as a team. Yeah. Yeah, that's not working as a team. Of course it is. Well, no, you share everything. Sharing everything is working as a team. Yeah. Whether you Look, you were stashing some thir thirty-five grand back. It's not like you think that, oh no, I've, uh, I won the pools but I give her arms, she'll get lazy. she just <laughs> sit around the house doing nout. Well, so she's still got to go to work in a job she hates. Yeah. I'll tell you though, she, she thinks that it'd be the worst thing that could happen if we got a load of money. Cause she'd want to go to Egypt, I'd say I'm not going. Why would she want to go to Egypt? I don't, that's what I said. No, why would she- <laughs> why does she want to go to Egypt if she wins a lot of money? She said it's, it's meant to be pretty good. <laughs> so, so the incredible- wonders of the pyramids uh, and the sphinx and so on, that's not of any interest to you? I've seen it though on the telly and that. I don't- I don't- yeah. I don't want to go all that way just to see it. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's probably- Do you yeah. experience other cultures, other lifestyles, travel broadens the mind? Mm, well, you don't. No, not really. You've seen enough different ones here, haven't you? Yeah. There's- there's, there's parts of, uh, Wyvern- oh, you haven't seen yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, so- so the, you're- you're- you don't want to make enough money you don't want to make a lot of money because you're worried that Suzanne might want to go to Egypt. And then that'll be- No. And that's going to tell I don't want to tell part. her that I'm making a lot of money. I can still tuck it away. Right. And what and will you do with it? When- when- But when are you going to spend it? When, when, when you, you turn up in a big, um, converted limo, goes da 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 come on, we're going to bingo. Where'd you get the car from? Never thee mind. Right? What- won't she be suspicious? Hmm. When you've got a pet chimp. You know what I mean? What are you- I mean, yeah, what would you spend it on? Is there nothing that you want for? No, I've never... No, there's- there's now at the moment, honestly, it's- it's, uh, I'm quite happy. Do you know what I mean? I don't ask for much. Don't but you're not much. happy, you're always whinging always and moaning. Always whinging, always whinging. <laughs> Clearly there's something wrong. What well, if someone gave you- what? Well, okay, right, let's- let's be serious, we're not talking about billions, right? But if someone gave you- uh, a cash injection, just a one-off cash payment of two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Okay, what would you do with it? I mean, that's too easy because that should obviously be a house. That should be the best house you can find uh, in I'd London. I probably want to go and see a tornado. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's on your list. Okay, uh, so it's so it, you it's, know. In many I ways, he's so sweet, but you, d I want to shake him. Can I just point out to you, Carl, I don't know if you know this, but if you get caught in a tornado, you do not whisk off into the la magical land of Oz. And land somewhere nice. Yeah, and crush your witch. St still in your rocking chair. Yeah, it doesn't happen, it's quite dangerous. But you go into a tornado, number one, fair yeah. enough. Number two? What- what- what brochure is that in? <laughs> that one? Um, it's Texas, isn't it? Okay. Oh. Number two? Uh. So he's got tornado well, number one. What brochure is that in? Number it's two. Texas, isn't it? It's Kansas, I think, mainly. 